Good evening, uh, good morning, and uh, great afternoon to those who are connecting us from uh, any country that you're connecting from. And uh, it's great being here tonight with you guys. And uh, my name is Ezra from South Africa. And as you know, guys, uh, it's one of those uh, uh, weekend special, weekend uh, recaps and stuff. And it's just a weekend. Uh, we're going to do it on a, 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 a lighter note. And uh, we'll be doing a recap of the trip to Ethiopia. Um, as you all know that Mika, His Excellency, is in uh, Ethiopia. Uh, we'll be covering uh, some of the uh, his trip, some of the videos that he, uh, um, he was uh, um, doing for us. And I would love to invite everyone to go to the videos. I know there's a lot of videos. But whenever you get a chance to uh, um, uh, play the videos or have time, go through the videos and just see the beautiful land of Ethiopia, the motherland uh, of Africa. And um, go through the videos, go watch them and um, be part of the movement. Be part of the movement and um, do not uh, 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 sideline yourself. But it's going to be a great night for tonight and you are more than welcome. And before you do anything, please subscribe uh, uh, to our channel. And um, please subscribe, like the, the press the, the, the like button, share, and not forgetting to click on the notification icon so that whenever we go live, you can join us and you can be part of this uh, uh, movement and you can be part of this growth uh, and uh, be part of this movement and be part of this growth. So family, before I do anything, um, there's just something that I wanted us to, to, uh, I wanted to share with everyone. Just uh, 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 the video that um, His Excellency did, I mean, or the speech uh, that he did tonight, uh, for those who, who might have connected with us, uh, 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 please, uh, family, watch the video and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think we, we had just had a technical glitch there. Um, I will uh, try to replay the video again. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. I um, think uh, some people are saying they could not hear the, the, the voice. There's no uh, volume on the on the video. But uh, I will try to replay the video again. Um, um, let's see, let's see, let's see, family. Uh, let me see. I think I will try to play this video again. I just need to uh, see here. But welcome, family, uh, wherever you're connecting from. Uh, I don't know if you've already subscribed. If you've not, please subscribe. If you have, you are a subscriber, please uh, uh, um, just uh, 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 subscribe. Or, I mean, just turn on uh, the notification icon if you've not and like and share the stream as well because that's how we grow and that's how we can get a lot of people involved and um yeah family welcome um and as i said we're just gonna have a um a, a week recap of whatever was happening during the week as you all know that uh, mika is in ethiopia for those who might not know those who only connect with us uh for the weekend shows so yeah he's finally made it to ethiopia and um, can't wait for him to uh, 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 um, uh, share more with us and uh, tell us about his trip there, um, you know, a Q&A type of thing. Uh, you'll be welcome to come and ask him about anything about his trip there in Ethiopia. How has it been like? Has he been settling? 
all that, you know. So feel free uh, to also ask. So, but tonight, join us. We're going to have a nice show, a light show for, for that matter. Um, nothing heavy. But if you want to go heavy, we'll see. We can measure and see if it's it's heavy enough for us as a uh, on a weekend. So, but yeah, family, just join us and um, yeah, be part of the movement. And uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, I'm just gonna try to uh, play that video again. Just something, uh, a video that really touched me uh, from my side, especially um, where I. Um, I had a, a um, I I really uh, was touched by Mika's speech tonight, and I would love to share with everyone um, this speech, because um, there are people who might want to know why does Mika love Ethiopia, and he answers that uh, in this video. I think we all have. So um, it'll really be uh, uh, something that uh, uh, I'll really appreciate, Present. and that, uh, that you listen to it. And uh, and really just, yeah, family, just hear him out. Uh, and I'll share the link as well for those who might have missed this. He just uploaded this video just uh, a few minutes, a few hours ago. Um, so you can maybe just uh, uh, go and watch it in your own time. But I will share the video just now. And um, yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, uh, just be patient with me. It's already midnight, you know. Sometimes uh, uh, <laughs> uh, technology can be something else. So uh, let's see. Okay. So this is the video here. Go live just now. Love to just share with everyone. And I hope um, everyone will be able to hear this now. Um, thank you so much, first of all. Um, it's such a privilege to be here in this historical place and amazing people. Um, it has always been my dream to, you know, come to Ethiopia. I've been dreaming for this moment for like two years. And one of the questions that people, they always ask me is, why do you love Ethiopia? And, and I'm gonna try to answer two questions that maybe even you guys, you have a question for me right now. Why do I love Ethiopia? Ethiopia is Africa. I don't need to know you. I don't need to understand you. I don't need to see you to love you. I simply love Ethiopia because Ethiopia is African. And I love Ethiopians because Ethiopians are Africans. So because of you, I exist. And because of me, you exist. The second question, why do I love Africa? I love Africa because I'm African. There is no one else to love Africa except me. There's no one else to protect Africa, to defend Africa, except me, because I'm African. It's my pride, it's my heritage, it's my nature, it's in my blood. I have African blood in me. We might be speaking different languages, we might be like wearing different clothes today, I look like adventure here. Uh, <laughs> we might be eating different food, but the fact that you are African and I'm African, I love you. <laughs> Ethiopians are people who are so proud with their culture, with their food, with their heritage, with their people. You know, when I came here, I was really amazed. I think every other African nation should learn from Ethiopia how much they love themselves. They love what they have. And the same spirit, the same spirit that you guys have for your country, you guys you have for your culture, the same spirit we should have for Africa. You know, when you go abroad, nobody call me Tanzanian. They call me African. <laughs> and whatever I do, they don't say, Mika did this. They say, African, that African guy has done this and that. 
So I represent Africa. You represent Africa. We represent Africa. That's the reason why we're here today. That's the reason why we should love one another. That's the reason why we should protect one another. That's the reason why we should stand for one another. Because if you fail, I fail. If you don't have peace, you don't have peace. If you die, I die. And if you survive, I survive. And that's what we need. We need people who would love Africa with everything they got. Because out there, nobody loves Africa. And it's my responsibility. It's our responsibility to love Africa, to defend Africa with everything we got. Thank you so much. Thank you. I would like to thank Art TV for inviting our brother from Tanzania. This is something yes. very, very special for us. Yes. Thank you very much for your wonderful message. Thanks. We love you, Mika. Thank you, family. And um, that was uh, 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 Mika's uh, first speech in Ethiopia. And uh, really uh, was a, 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 a nice speech that also touched me. And this speech, he just uh, uploaded this video. Please, family, go and watch the video. And uh, and um, and yeah, be go and, and watch the video. And um, yeah, and um, that's one of the reasons why he went to Ethiopia. It's been a long dream for him. It's not something that just woke up. That he just woke up and uh, decided to go to Ethiopia. But it was a, a something that has been in his heart. And uh, as an African who loves Africa, that's what drives him uh, to do whatever he's doing. And that's the reason why we are all here tonight and uh, pushing the movement and pushing uh, uh, the voices of Africa. But uh, before I do anything, um, uh, I would love to share the stream for those who want to come and talk about Ethiopia. And um, how has it been? Have you been following us? Have you been following the videos? And he's been working hard, guys. Uh, it's not easy uh, doing what he has to do, like shooting, going to meetings, meeting people in Ethiopia. It's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, I know some people have been asking, why have we not been going, doing the live streams and talking about a lot of African uh, issues? But uh, it's because uh, he's in Ethiopia. He's been covering, he's, he's like more of a field reporter, what Big was doing when he was in D.C., uh, what Charlie was doing in D.C., uh, in Atlanta, uh, Ezra in, in, in California. They were like field reporters. He's also on a mission to go and learn from the people of Ethiopia to build bridges, to build networks, and to get to know the people and uh, share with the people. It's not about going there only, but it's about learning from them and sharing with them and um, also getting imparted from their culture as well. That's how One Africa uh, is about. It's about Africans uh, sharing ideas, Africans sitting down and, and speaking about the future and building uh, for the future. But, uh, you know, I don't go alone. I've got uh, one of our midnight uh, 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 <laughs> midnight hosts, um, Wenda Tezi, my brother Wenda Tezi, is here. You know when we do this late night, um, Wenda Tezi is always here, and uh, and um, Wenda Tezi, brother. Yeah. Welcome. How are you, my brother? Hey man, all good, all happy. And uh, your side, uh, 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 Tezi, how's Kenya? How's things that side? You're just next door. You're just next to Mika, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost took a bus. I almost took a bus to Ethiopia. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You should take that bus, man. Just hook it. I mean, speak to him and say, "Hey, uh, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm Eddie. I'm coming." You know. Yeah, well, almost, almost. Make the way make uh, is really, you know, advertising Ethiopia. It looks like the place to be. Yeah, it is the place to be, man. Uh, 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 you need to touch base with Ethiopia. Um, we all have to. Um, uh, I'm, I'm still yet to do my trip to Ethiopia, but I will also lend uh, uh, to the motherland. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, your side, Mwenda uh, 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 Tezi, uh, have you been following the videos uh, that we've been um, uh, uploading and stuff? Yeah, Ooh, I'm telling you, I have to I have to warn you, my brother. You know, mm -hmm. I, have, uh, I have already slept for four hours, so you know, I'm already <laughs> here tactically. I've already tactically slept, so we might even go for wow. nine here. Right? <laughs> 
I know. Uh, uh, I, I, I think I also had a, my, my afternoon nap, my power nap, afternoon power nap. It should last uh, me um, until until my, the, 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 the ladies who, who are cooking mandazi are ready. We can go buy mandazi and eat and talk to the people, you know? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah, I see, I see. I see we were all here, you know? So the, the guys who are listening, you know, you're here tactically. I hope we have also put in your tactical hours in, you know. <laughs> but what I what I really liked about uh, Ethiopia is when uh, Mika was talking about uh, music. Actually, he hurt my feelings a little bit there, you know. The way he was, mm. you know, he was talking about uh, Ethiopian music. Then he started saying that African music is uh, about, uh, you know ladies or something like that. Then I was like, ah, are you talking about Mika? What are you talking about? Then I went and watched the, the give a shout out to the voice of Africa. It's a, it's a guy, I don't know, I forgot, let me check out the name. Man, that guy, that Ethiopian artist is a good artist. And then I realized, oh, so there's, huh? so there's this uh, Ethiopian artist. He's, he, I think he's, he's, his nickname is the voice of Africa, but I don't know his actual name. I just watched a couple of his songs. And I was like, okay, now I have a new favorite artist. Man. Hey, I think one of his songs is called Sendek. It's like, okay. Ethiopia, mm-hmm. Ethiopians also they have they have yeah. <laughs> they have some mm-hmm. some very beautiful artists over there. I didn't realize it. But so I think that that is one thing that I have now learned, you know, mm-hmm. from the new videos. Like, okay. So I don't know why when we were talking about Ethiopia the other day, nobody mentioned the music, you know. <laughs> What well, things you could learn from Ethiopia? Oh but yeah, that's true. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. You know, it's 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 really uh, been hectic. You know, uh, looking at uh, all this uh, uh, other things. I mean, that we talked about. I think more people focus on on like more the governmental stuff, and that's why I even said, guys, let's look at the airlines. Let's look at so many things that are just outside the mainstream. Maybe the political stuff. There's more to a country than just the politics of a country. So, and uh, as you say, music is, is one of the things that we can also talk about uh, since it's a Friday, guys. Uh, uh, for those who, who know uh, about more Ethiopian music, you know, Mika has been uh, doing a lot of reactions. So uh, I'm sure people have some of their favorite artists uh, uh, are there. And um, yeah, but we, we, we I think we, we will have a topic. Uh, I think it's a topic on its own um, with Atezi. Uh, uh, just music, uh, African music in general, how's the industry and um, all that, you know, especially about even uh, Ethiopian music, uh, since we are in Ethiopia now, and uh, we need more of that. I mean, we can even have some Ethiopian artists to come and, you know, share some of their music with the people. And um, yeah, let's let's cross the bridge. I mean, let's, let's uh, reach out to each other. Let's get to know each other. That's uh, all about that, you know. This is one African moment is also about that. As we had, unity is about knowing each other. It's not just about people just being together, but you're together for what purpose? Music is also one of those universal languages that everyone everywhere listens to music, you know, and it, it cuts uh, across all races, all people in the world. So, yeah, and uh, I can't wait to, to have a topic, a conversation around music. And maybe we'll, we'll even connect to His Excellency there. He can uh, tell us more about the, some of the guys he might have met that side who are musicians. It will be really yeah. interesting, um, you know? Yeah, yeah. The, na- the name of the musician is uh, and... Teddy Afro. Teddy Afro, yeah. But now I remember. Oh, okay. his name. You ever heard of him? Yeah, I, I think him. I remember the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not yeah. really but much. I think the, the only. Yeah, you should check out the songs, man. Check, just, just listen. Like, whoa, he, 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 he just surprises, just surprises. Like, I don't know why guys are not. Uh, I don't know what happens, man. I know it's all about the coffee, but man, this is, you know. Also, that uh, that music is not. not I don't know why they're hiding such a uh, <laughs> such talented uh, artist, man. And you know, I've seen uh, his concerts uh, in YouTube. They he feels you know if it's mm. like a stadium he feels them man. I don't know what I don't know why he has not even come to is it even come to Kenya or something? Uh, <laughs> mm. He should come. He should like wow, move. Out. 
to do a campaign in Africa just and then we when they we should really talk about that that African music stream yeah. talk about African artists you no know, some of us like I think like me today I've yesterday or so I've just learned about this new this guy and probably he's been in the game for a while so maybe we, in that stream we'll introduce each other guys to African artists that we never know of you know and they're very talented Yeah, I think uh, we will probably may maybe next week uh, or somewhere during the week, um, when that is, we'll, we will have a, a conversation around that. Um, just now, obviously, we've been getting a, a, getting a, a lot of content from our field reporter, His Excellency, there in Ethiopia. So, and we would love to. A, a lot of people have uh, been asking to to for him to like uh, load more content, you know. And hence, some people are crying. Oh, we can't catch up. There's just so much about Ethiopia, you know. But others are happy. They like keep on bring them on, bring them on. You know we need to. So yeah, and uh, that that's really nice. Uh, 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 seeing that, and I see we already have some people. Uh, Mundatezi with us here. Yeah? Uh, I think we've got Deborah, and we've got uh, Teacher Josie. Uh, also here. Uh, I know Teacher Josie is right inside, inside, inside Ethiopia. He's not. You know, it's uh, it's somebody yeah, you can yeah. even talk to. You know. It's, inside the country. Yeah. Teacher Josie, yeah. how are you? Yeah. I'm very well. I'm very well. How are you, Israel? Miss you very early. I miss you so much. Yeah, man. Also no, miss you guys. We all missed yeah. you. But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I, I, I've been I'm watching. Sure, uh, Teacher Josie, uh, yeah. Teacher Josie, I'm sorry to cut you, but um I'm sure you've been uh, watching the some of the videos uh, that um, uh, uh, His Excellency has been loading. Um, yeah. I don't know if uh, you've got any favorite video that maybe you want us to to look at or something to highlight uh, 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 around uh, uh, the trip in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he uh, shared. Uh, I'm keeping in touch from early beginning, uh, even though not live. Yes, when he uploads. I watch uh, from the very beginning, where from his arrival to Ethiopia, and up to uh, this this night, this night I can say, and so uh, really, particularly what you shared right now, I've already commented on it. Uh, it is heart touching, you know, because uh, it is good to have such feeling as African, not because he come and said so in Ethiopia, but as African, it is a blessing to have such mind, such mind setting, you know? And uh, it means a lot. He said, you live, survive, be in peace, enjoy. He mentioned a lot. And he, that means we are just parts of an organ or parts of a body. And so when I get sick, hands doesn't feel comfort. The same is true with legs. And so, and when leg gets something goes go wrong with your leg or with your arm this other parts of the body do not feel comfort you know that is how i understood his message so when he says we when when you survive i survive he said that means we survive together we die together we live together we we become in peace together that is what it means to me, just as a part of a body, when a part, when something goes wrong with a part of a body, just the other will never feel comfort, no matter how facilitated they are, how well they are, other parts of the body kind of feel. That, that, that is what I feel uh, with respect to a speech he made. And this should be, this should overwhelm the whole Africa, you know. 
And so uh, uh, that is what I felt. And he said, I'm very lucky to come here, he said. But I do say it is a blessing for a country, for Africa, to have children like that, to have such voices. You know, when I mean voice, someone who, who speaks for uh, Africa, that means. And so it's a blessing even for Africa, not only for Ethiopia. And we Ethiopians are lucky <coughs> to, to, to demonstrate uh, this uh, continental-minded person to the world, not only to Africa or Ethiopia. And we Ethiopians are also lucky to have him. That is my message to uh, Mika. God bless all of you. That is what I want to say. Uh, amen, amen, uh, 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 Josie. And since you are here, I see our sister yeah. here, um, Deborah, is also here. And yeah. uh, Deborah, um, how are you? And um, how have you been? Have you been following uh, uh, um, His Excellency in, in, in Ethiopia? The videos have been liking, have you been uh, sharing and stuff? And which one is your favorite among the, the videos that have been uploaded so far? Okay. Thank you. How are you? How are you, oh. everybody? Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Uh, Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> the floor is yours, uh, okay. uh, uh, Deborah. You can uh, speak uh, uh, yeah. Oromia or, or Americ, whatever. I think Josie's here. I think Josie n understands Oromia yeah. as well, right? So you can speak yeah, your, can your, speak. your original language. No. We're going to get enough for you. Okay, thank you. We're going to get enough for you. Okay. Uh, and then why? Is there a Mika in Ethiopia? Mika and Wantan mm -hmm. in the post to go to Kesa. You heard of Tete. Wantan in the post to go to Kesa. Wantan in the post Okin wine no fatty sati want this to tell you mal to jira. Yeah, they are the other chemistry with the fatty sati buying gum a day. Well, it is in Africa, you don't do one or gum much. Or do cut it to one or the two of nature. Can it all be Africa or a rough of forgetty? And it into all a rough of forgetty to regret. And I tell us to do a little thing by a can of solar. Now, Mikan and Motu was at the buying of Made African, the Umpole one Kenya, African, and me at Horace and Amana. It took a man a sanity African canoe to make me see. Now, I didn't post you with the case, I get one. Ani can if he get us and be chatter, he get any posting gone as regular, why if he get away a laba, Africa, Cavatari figures and buy it of a titular, buy it of country government. Taratara said, You want to share cover the commandment? Never cover changer, no very changer. Okay. I'm writing nah. here, don't worry. Okay. Nah. Yes. Africa ada bari de kabdi kaben ye bay kabdi wali gel te do kawani kaben kenya dunya an dunya dafta na fi o betala imu ani af ada ta ada afrika bay na tola bay gamada afrika ta ukotis bay gamada na wa kayo what are you African? I be so much I be so to come to the general and all that. Ethiopian is African, African is Ethiopian, Kenyan is 
Abrikara Kerene Abrikara Abrika Ethiopia and Abrika and the Jerashin and the two Abrika and Ethiopia and the Jerashin and the two Tanzania and Abrika and the Jerashin and the two Tanzania and Abrika and the Jerashin and the two but I better yell at a wallet to the senior. Now you're off with it. Okay. Uh, you, you can translate, okay. uh, uh, teacher okay. Joseph. Let me, so that yeah. guys can also understand. Okay. Uh, actually, she raised some four points. And then first, she said, uh, she told me that she feel pleased for Mika. Mika's coming to Ethiopia. And that was great, she said. And this should be uh, sustainably continue. Uh, we should stand together, she says. And that is how, uh, how we attract other parts of the world, how we flourish. That is what she, she said. I mean, the unity should continue. It should not be occasional. And it should, it should continue uh, with other parts. Ethiopia, Ethiopia is not uh, Allen country to to Mika or Israel. It is just common or home for all of us. The same is true with Tanzania. The same is true with Kenya. So the same is true Egypt and other parts of Africa. She says so. We should feel like that and stand together for to 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 show to display our unity. And what she said as far as the post uh, made by Mika is, uh, all the posts are good and interesting, but uh, he didn't post what I expected, she said. I expected uh, the great run in which African flags flourished in, she said. The great run was flourished by the whole African flag, she said, and this should have been posted and that was what I expected but you didn't she says so you should you should think of it you should give uh, uh, either apology or response and and that is that is all her idea and we should have love unity and this should continue and become overwhelmed throughout the uh, the, the, the continent that is here idea in short and now music uh mina mina and i give it and i want to give a new music i want to know the new why music i'm big kind of a zoom that it now get please do africa people africa i love you so much africa okay uh, she says uh except spiritual ones other music go against my grain, she says. I don't like, I'm not fond of uh, <laughs> uh, secular music. So I don't follow the music he posts, she says. Maybe um, this is individual difference and uh, that is something to be tolerated and apologize. No, no problem, Deborah. And you can, you can, you can share other aspects. <coughs> Particularly that uh, that is related to our unity, one Africa, an independent Africa. Uh, thank you for sharing the idea, Deborah. Galatomi, Galatomi means thank you in English. Isra, wow. wow. I said Galatomi. Thank you. Galatomi. Yeah, Galatomi. 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 <laughs> yeah. Galatomi. Galatomi. Galatoma. Yeah. For a single Galatomi. person, Galatomi. For many or for due respect, you say Galatoma. 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 Yeah. Galatoma uh, to everyone who's connecting uh, tonight. And uh, Galato uh, Galatomi to uh, 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 Deborah for um, <laughs> uh, raising those questions and uh, other things like the great run and stuff. Uh, but uh, I think uh, um, His Excellency Ezra, Prof. Ezra, is uh, saying that uh, because Mika arrived after the great run, hence he could not cover that. And uh, just for the people who, there's a lot that he still needs to do, guys, and um, just be patient. That's why there's been a lot of videos because he's trying to cover so much uh, uh, in Ethiopia. 
So, and imagine if we had a lot of, a, a big team in Ethiopia, it was going to be easy for him to cover a lot of things that um, a lot of people are asking that we must cover this and that. So he can only be, he can't split himself into two. He can only be one and do one thing at a time. So, but more content is still coming. So stay tuned and uh, 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 give us some time. A, a lot of content will be coming and a lot of places will be covered as well. So yeah, uh, Deborah, you will see more content and uh, uh, stay tuned. And I know about music. It's also a, 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 um, a preference, different people, a different um, music uh, taste. But um, you must come and share your spiritual uh, music, which is your gospel and stuff, I will assume. Uh, but I just want to welcome uh, uh, Moleken Gebra. Moleken, welcome. Where are you connecting from? Uh, how are you? How are you? Good, good. Uh, Moleken, uh, good. Yeah, uh, I'm living in South Africa. My originality is Ethiopia. Oh. Yeah, just uh, wow. we are one Africa. Yeah. Yeah, Mika is now in my home. I appreciate mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, I'm very happy to to be there. And uh, so, what is since beginning? What is doing is very nice and uh, is very grateful. And I want to be. I want to say we must be continue with this, and then we can be one continent and one united africa and we can make it great africa and i will be happy for that and uh, what i upload that videos uh, i see and then i was happy and uh, it's great and uh, to see that and i will i want to see more more videos and uh, just yeah, I want to see more videos. I appreciate what it what is doing for Africa, what is doing for Ethiopia. We are with him and with you, with all of Africa. We can unite it and we can be great one day. I believe that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Moluken. Uh, where where in South Africa are you are you connecting from? Uh, uh, from Pumalanga. I'm living Pumalanga. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Wow. wow. Yeah, I, I have, uh, I, I have my own channel, Moluken Gabriel Media, and uh, I was doing some, yeah, uh, conversation with like, uh something like uh, politically or something uh conversation with our brothers yeah we cannot talk sometimes yeah i have my own channel on youtube yeah wow so, um hmm. i'm a member of Swai i'm a member of the swahili nation wow uh well, thank you very much, uh, Moluken, uh, for, for being a thank subscriber, you. for being a supporter as well. And uh, for those who don't know, uh, you can join our membership, uh, uh, our YouTube membership program or our patron. And uh, Moluken is one example. He's, uh, he's also one of the, the uh, uh, members. He's not just a subscriber, but uh, another level of uh, once you become, you know, more than a subscriber, you become a member. Uh, I've just shared the link. You can just click on the link and join uh, uh, the, the membership, the YouTube membership for the Swahili Nation channel. And in that, uh, um, once you click on the links, you will see that you will have different categories and you can select the category that uh, best suits you and uh, join and become a, a, a member of the channel. And uh, what is the name of the channel again? It's, it's Molukan what? Molukan Gabriel Media. Media, oh, okay, yeah. Gebra Media. Okay, guys, also yeah. support our brother here. He's also from yeah. Ethiopia. And uh, support uh, his channel as well, Muluken uh, Gebra uh, Media. Um, support him. Uh, as you know that we as a family, we are a family. 
and he's part of the family. He's not just a, 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 an outsider or somebody who's passing, but he's a family. Go support uh, Muluken Gebra uh, Media. Uh, you can even share it there on, 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 on the comment section. And uh, people can go and subscribe to his channel as well and support our brother who, uh, who's from Ethiopia, living here in South Africa. And um, another thing that I, uh, there's a video that I just wanted to share quickly, guys, uh, that His Excellency had uh, uh, um, shared uh, when he was there. Um, since we are talking about music, uh, um, Amanda Tezi, uh, there's a video that I want to quickly share. And uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if some people have seen this uh, live uh, performance. I'm just going to share that and then um, the guys can see it. And. Um, <laughs> just uh, another video that uh, his excellency um one of the um, live uh, uh shows he went to uh since some people have been asking about uh what has mika been doing but he's been doing a lot for those who've missed i've also shared the link go and and, and watch the video go and and uh, um, uh like the video share the video with other people that might have missed it so this just one another video that he um uh, also uploaded for us when he went to the uh, show and um yeah family so that's the music part you know we, we we very dynamic as you know he does a lot of reactions as well so it's it's only fair that he also include music on his trip cannot leave music out of uh, the trip and um when the tezzy <laughs> yeah yeah um Muloken has left man i wanted to ask him uh, to expose us to some more world of his maybe favorite Ethiopian tunes, you know, but uh, but we have here our sister and brother who can also, you know, but I don't know if this is the music stream, you know, uh, if we cover everything here, then, you know, what will we cover in the music stream? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think uh, maybe that we can just touch a bass and then um, leave it for, you know, the, the other uh, uh, um, upcoming show. Where we can really go deeper into um, the context, the genres that are there, because also when we talk music now, we have to go into genres and categories and all that stuff. And each country has different genres, different uh, categories. And um, so, yeah, I think next time we'll go deeper and, and even look at the trending music as well, in, in just across Africa in general, uh, uh, you know starting from Ethiopia, going outside, I mean, touching on all these other countries um, that have been producing music worldwide. 
or that have been trending um, as well. I know that uh, even here in my, my country, there's uh, been another music that's been trending. Uh, I'm not sure if you, you know about it. And when it says it, it's called Ama Piano. Yeah, yeah. Who doesn't know about Ama Piano? <laughs> Stop being humble. Stop. <laughs> 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 I, I, I wonder if, if Josie knows knows I'm a piano. Do, do you know I'm a piano music, uh, Josie? Yes. You know it. Wow. What? <laughs> no. Do you know there's there's a genre of music called I'm a piano. I'm a piano. Mm. Uh, no. P I know piano. Mm. But what is I'm a piano? I'm a piano. It's a, it's, a, um, <laughs> it's a music genre. It's a music genre. Okay. It's, okay. it's been it's music been genre. very trending okay. oh, across the I continent see. and uh, overseas as well. Um, we've seen some celeb even uh, dancing to some of that music. Uh, it also originates from here in Africa, um, South Africa to be specific. Um, yeah, it's a, it's just another genre you need to also look into, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, and have a look at it and and, and hear it out how it, how it goes i know it's mostly for a lot of you young people are into that kind of music maybe it might be just after your generation maybe you might be listening to another genre of music what kind of genre do you listen to uh teacher josie uh, just basically i'm not this much fond of uh, uh secular music but i do listen sometimes mm -hmm. and uh, I'm fond of uh, that aspect, uh, cultural, most cultural, and from uh, uh, other language, uh, I die for Bomali's music, mm. and that is what I like, um, because sometimes even uh, I feel it's a spiritual song, if you take One Love, uh, Things like what well, love, uh, what is the other? Uh, could you be love? It, this, this, this seemed to me something spiritual because they taste spiritual, you know. Last time, if you remember, when Mika was speaking, mm -hmm. when you point your finger to others, he said, This is what I listened from. Uh, could you be love of Bomale? You know, uh, I like that. Because he he sang for freedom, he was uh, talking. And as far as in, in general, music music is a language, a language that everyone, even that a dumb person, communicates. Mm. Communicate with. And so, since it is such a great language, and is very relevant, too much relevant. To share uh, each culture, you know, as it reflects culture, the ingenious music should be shared within Africa, you know, not only that of Ethiopia, it's Ethiopia should share that of South Africa, Kenya, Egypt, and so forth. we should share culture. Now, after, after all, there is no boundary and we have no choice than sharing each other's language, music. Uh, literature, culture, uh, and everything, everything, and to live together, to exercise uh, unity together, this is a basic thing for me. So not only music, we should share literature, because that also reflects history, lifestyle, culture of uh, a country. And so uh, it's my pleasure if we even translate to each other's language, at least uh, in, la in a single language. And that's how we can share uh, the way we live, the way we act. And then it is easy in this way to keep in touch with each other, as to me. So Mika has started sharing music and he has shared some countries in uh, culture through the different music. And this is very nice. And this should continue with different dramas or in artistic and literature generous. And that is what I want to comment and 
uh, he made a point really. Mika made a point in doing so. And that was what I want to say. Yes, okay. my brother. Thank, if, I, thank my, you. if I if I could ask, <laughs> okay. If I could ask my brother, can uh, you now I'm, I'm now interested in this uh, spiritual music. If you could maybe give us an artist, the name of an okay. artist, maybe your favorite artist in in the Ethiopian spiritual music, so that we can also enjoy with you. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm I'm not meaning spiritual meaning. Music. Even secular music that reflects indigenous culture, that is not spoiled with Allen culture, Allen outlook, like rap or whatever, whatever. Okay, the I understand. Music, yeah, that is what I'm. Okay, continue. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to find out your favorite artist. Okay, uh, my favorite. Do you want to find yeah. out my favorite? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm Christian. And uh, I really like to listen to spiritual songs. And that is what I want. And I can, I can share you if you want uh, uh, a recent Afan Oromo uh, song by a singer, a spiritual singer, Magarsabakale, and he said, Tasahim uh, Banu, that means we'll never get lost at all. We'll never get dismissed at all. We'll never get this extinct at all. He, he, he does mean based on the, the I think uh, it is even related with our current issue. Yeah, that is it. Yeah, his name is? I didn't catch the name. Magar Sabakale. Okay. And I can write you here. You can you can you can get you can get like this. Uh, and even I can translate it to you. The whole the whole uh song. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. I think I'm going you I think maybe we should uh, have a I think we are having a stream about music, uh, Pastor Ezra. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm listening. <laughs> yeah. I'm listening. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you have already been exposed to this new artist. I don't know. I don't think he's a new artist. If you may, I don't know. I don't know how to spell him. You know, Ethiopia okay, is a okay. very interesting language. Yeah, I wrote the title of the song and it is by Tasa Hibanu. Tasa Hibanu is the title of the song. So, okay. And Magarsa Bekele. Magarsa is the name of the singer. A spiritual, mm. is, it is a spiritual song. Wow. Ah, it's interesting, really. He's a famous mm. singer, famous spiritual singer, singer of uh, Afan Oromo, and he lives in Addis. Um, so mm, you'll enjoy it, yeah. It's good. Wow. Well, okay. Uh, yeah. um, we'll, 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 check, we'll check on him. I, th I think... Uh, 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 um, uh, Prof. Ezra has even shared the the the, the artist here yeah, as well. Um, mm. Yeah, I think uh, it's just now I, I won't try to play his music because I don't know the the copyrights and all that stuff. Because next thing we get you know striked and stuff. So for now I'll I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of avoid this. But I I, I think uh, Prof. Ezra has just shared the the name of that is Megesa uh, Bekele, and yeah. I'd love to welcome. Uh, uh, we've got a brother here. Uh, Mo, welcome. Where are you connecting from? Hey, my brother, you forgot me, honorable host. Oh, I know you. That's uh, welcome. Uh, thank you, thank you. Mm. How are you, everybody? We are all good. We are all happy we to, are fine, to connect with you. 
And um, my question for you, have you have you been connecting with us? Have you been watching uh, uh, the videos in Ethiopia with uh, His Excellency Mika? Uh, I just, I just, uh, I just watch his uh, one speech on uh, Art TV uh, program. I don't see some music, but I see some uh, from now. Uh, you, but uh, I don't, I don't. I don't see that much, but uh, I have seen it from your screen today. Oh, okay. The, the, the one that you saw today, um, it, it's it's a video that he uploaded. It, he was um, we had a live uh, um, uh, uh, content. Um, we had uh, when he was at the um, uh, um, the theater there. He was called to make a speech. And uh, that's the speech that I played. That, this is today. It wasn't something that I played yesterday or something. It was today's speech. Uh, so I had to just play it because it also touched me uh, what he said, we said about Africa, why he loves Ethiopia and why he loves Africa. So, yeah, it's just another video that you can watch. They uploaded like maybe two, three hours ago. And, uh, the whole performance is, uh, um, he was also live in that time. And there's other, other videos. Uh, about Ethiopian food, I think we'll go into Ethiopian food as well uh, because he had a video that he uploaded about Ethiopian food. First time eating Ethiopian food in Ethiopia. It's not first time eating Ethiopian food, but it was first time in Ethiopia eating the food in Ethiopia. It is nice so, to see him there. Uh, welcome, Makia. Maybe if uh, I don't know whatever he can see this video. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm so glad I, I saw him there. But it's nice. It's nice. Everybody, you should go. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. Very true. And uh, uh, what's your take for tonight? What do you want to talk about? We're talking about music, we're talking about food, we're talking about so many things uh, related to Ethiopia so far that we've seen. Um, even Addis Ababa, um, he had a video about Addis Ababa. I will also play some of the uh, video when he was uh, just shooting on the road, on the street, driving uh, from the airport, uh, going to his hotel and stuff. So, yeah, family, go and watch those videos. We had like almost 15 or more videos. So tomorrow, tonight, when we say Shalom, go and, and, and watch those videos and just uh, do a recap as well. And um, yeah. I will, I will, it is nice, uh, I will. And so just, uh, I have a off night. When I see you, I just dream to have fun. I don't have that much big uh, topic today, but yeah, just to discuss, I think it is not stress, it is about music and stuff, it is, I like it. Just to have fun, that's uh, what I came today. And and what kind of music uh, do you listen to? And uh, what genre of music do you also listen to? Uh, I, I, am not, uh, I, am, uh, I am not picky, I just uh, listen to any music, uh, but I am not good to... Uh, uh, saying back. I, I mean, I'm not keeping on my brain, but only the classical thing is any music can uh, uh, make happy me. But mostly I like uh, the music that's not uh, famous, which is uh, uh, not not a lot of people know. I, I searching uh, on YouTube like unusual thing. I like watching unusual thing, like uh, which is uh, not famous tribe music, something has a fun. Not, for example, in Ethiopia, Amharic, Oromo, Tigre, Gurage music is very popular. So I don't, I don't really enjoy with that. I like watch more with sounds that uh, people don't watch it. And also I see Sahara Africa, uh, that uh, Bambino, if you know, I like, I'm his fan. I don't know even what he said, but his sound is very, make me happy. He's a, uh, uh, I forgot the country, but it is no Sahara Africa or North Africa. He's a guitarist. Oh. And also I see the, I, I like which the Sudan is that they jumping with uh, sorrow. It's also in uh, Eritrea, I think, because they have similar thing. It's like, uh, I like which, like, unusual thing, mostly. <laughs> mm. Like that people don't watch it. But I'm happy with any music. Uh, for example, I know a little, but uh, I, I want to sing for uh, my sister, uh, what is called, Deborah. Akam Jirta, Deborah. Is Deborah here? 
Yeah, maybe she's busy with something. Uh, oh, okay. Just put her phone, maybe. On I was trying to say. I was trying to say, Bertukani miti da da, Bertukani miti da da, Angela la miti marachada. That's how I'm going to say. So, so oh, you can yeah, sing. True. You can sing, eh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, my brother. The, the midnight stream began with singing, and that is the heart and spirit of this type of the midnight stream, my brother. We have to. In fact, now it now it must have become a culture. That mm. somebody has to sing in the midnight stream. I, my brother, uh, by chance, did you used to call yourself African farmer? Yes, sir. Mm, it's African. Ah, farmer. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am a yeah, farmer, by the way. I'm I'm a real farmer, to be honest. I was farmer back home. Also, after now I'm in the US. Also in the US, I use the farming. Uh, for if, when I have money, also I will back to farming my country. So this is my dream. Yeah, you know, you know, my brother. The other day, I was telling guys that uh, how my favorite hobby is uh, chickens. You know, what do you think about uh, chickens, my brother? Do you, do you have an chicken. opinion on chickens? <laughs> oh, chicken is a very, very wise business. Very, the people if they know how handle it, a chicken is very good business, and. Uh, you can start. Uh, you don't have to start the, with a big money. Uh, if you have, I mean, until you get in the right spot, if you have another income, of course, you, all what you have you can't spend for first time. But just side by side, if you started the chicken is. I like a chicken business. It is nice. Oh. Um. Uh, that's a very, that's a that's a very interesting uh, you know hobby of mine also. So oh, yeah. Ezra, my, Pastor Ezra, I don't know you know I have a lot of things to say, but I don't know you. I, I want to keep into topic. So mm. what 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 is, are we talking about? You know I don't know what are we talking about today. Okay. No, we're just doing a recap. Remember uh, uh, of all the videos that I've been playing. Uh, and also just uh, uh, for the guys to to come and talk about anything, uh, comment on the videos if there's something and things that they feel that uh, they want us to do. Uh, Deborah already gave us a suggestion. She wanted us to cover the great run, but I think uh, um, Prof. Ezra already answered uh, her that um, Mikael came after that. So, and there's been a lot of um, people asking different things, uh, but... Uh, just on the comment section, but yeah, if they want to come and, and talk about those things or things that maybe we are uh, showing them and they think it's not covered correctly, they can come and correct. So it's just a recap and um, just to be, just to remind people that we are in Ethiopia and uh, currently, and uh, if there's anything they want us to cover there, they can come in and, and, and let's talk about any, any of those topics that uh, we've been already covering or something to add because we haven't really had a, any live stream whereby we there's a, it's more interactive. If you've seen uh, all the live stream that Mika has been doing, he's been just mostly alone. Uh, it hasn't been like a group the way we are, like the norm. So tonight I'm just opening up for that so that we can take some recommend recommendations and suggestions. And also if there's something to add uh, that we can learn, uh, I'm open for that as well. Uh, but I just want to welcome. Uh, oh, uh, before before I welcome uh, uh, Prof Ezra, the brain. Uh, somebody says, uh, uh, "African farmer, please, uh, uh, can you sing again?" <laughs> <laughs> can you sing for the people, please? They they need they, they like your voice. Okay. No, no. To be honest, I don't go that long. I just uh, try and uh, connect with the Deborah. That's why I, I, I know only that uh, uh, <laughs> sentence. Yeah. I, I can't go far. Do, do it. I'll connect. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again, please. <laughs> when you ask me, I, <laughs> you, you only uh, sing. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me try create an extra to even it is not formal. Bertukani miti ada ada, bertukani miti ada ada, angel ala miti maracada. Esem esem, alak esem, esem esem, alak esem, thole thole, kasalale. Mr. Vance, I'm a good father. 
He can sing. No, no, he's a real farmer. He knows his, his, he knows his, his neighbors. He knows his community. He knows his where. Oh my God, African farmer. Nashet can you call? Lazani can call. I will not do that. Just you know, seriously, I, I like. I was just gonna sit, sit down, sit by the side and listen. Uh, to you I wish I wish you find out more, but I I don't know I don't know that much. That's 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 more than enough. That's a lot of that's a lot that's a lot more than a lot of us here. So <laughs> <laughs> only Deborah and Josie jo 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 will get it. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's good, really. Uh, it is ingenious cultural music. I know it from childhood since childhood we, we we used to sing it and yeah it is good really dear farmer thank you for sharing us and for reminding us uh, of our uh, childhood songs <laughs> it, is, it is modernized nowadays it's very modernized and uh, being promoted still yeah thank you thank you yeah Yo, yeah, I, mean, I, you know, guys, you know, I got tickled into coming into this session. I was just gonna listen. Uh, the the, Af wait, the African farmer. I mean, should, his name should always be African farmer because he's like he's he's a true farmer. He knows how to plant a seed. He knows how to grow seeds into into fruits, into result, into harvest. And you know, the harvest is that you know uh, is people connect with each other when they with it, when they sing it to each other when they see each other when they recognize each other when they acknowledge each other so that to me is uh is incredible thank you uh african farmer mm. uh, 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 welcome uh, 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 uh the brain uh, sorry thank i had you. to catch you there earlier but That's welcome okay. it's always great seeing you and uh, thank you for helping us answer some of the questions that the bread asked yes. and uh and just to add to, to what you said about African farmer, he's not just an African farmer. Uh, he can always have a career change. If he wants, he can become African singer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. He got the voice for it. He got the voice for it. Yeah. If someone, if someone is right for me, uh, and I will, I will sing. Yeah. It is, it is. Yeah, yeah. Devora is the right, Devora is the right yeah, person to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah is the right person to sing to, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so to me, like you know, uh, talking about topic, I think yeah. like the other a couple of days ago, Nika talked about yeah. one Africa and our generation vision, mm. and I like the way he explained it. It is it's not a it's not an Africa of institution to institutions like you know the East Africa Regional union federation or the ECOWAS or the african union but you know circumventing all of those efforts you know how disappointing those things are because it's not necessarily people don't want them to succeed those those efforts those uh, organizational you know government level efforts it's just that they, by their nature they are very slow uh, because it takes a lot of effort and method to make them come to fruition but people-to-people -people connections require just little effort. It could be a, a song, a beautiful song that, that was just sung by our brother. Or it could just be a story. It could be a poem. It could be a prayer. It could be a, a, a nice anecdotes or an experience. Simple things that do connect. Look at Mika connecting with people on the ground. Yes, we see the video that once in a while he posts but for the most part he's with the people he's sitting there having discussions and dialogue and debate and argument and and, and agreements and all of that is up like you know to, to me the i share that vision that he has that bringing africa together will require bringing the people of africa together and and at sometimes it's not just african people to africa people but within nations within countries within countries itself we need to re rekindle that, those experiences that bring us together, that connects us together, you know, between the Hausa, Fulani, and Yoruba, and Ibu, between the Ashantis and Fantis and Ga, between the, the Bantu people and the Nilot people and the Kush people and the Se Semais people, the Arabs and the, and the so-called Black Africans, 
I mean, be, among us, within countries itself, there's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And sometimes the assignment, the work that needs to be done, it's not just the politics of it, it's just simple, joyful experiences that we share with each other, getting to know each other. Like, let me give you an idea of something for people to know about gospel music and non-gospel music in Ethiopia. A lot of the time, people who listen to gospel music uh, find it slightly abhorrent to not to listen to something that's not gospel because it's, it's, it's some I don't know it's something cultural. But if you go outside Ethiopia, uh, sometimes people uh, trans uh, like try to move from secular to gospel so easily, move from one end to another end. I mean, when I, I remember growing up in Ghana, uh, gospel music is so central to to Ghanaians, but traditional and secular music are also easily intertwined. They were not, there was no barrier between one side to another. But in Ethiopia, it's different. People who listen to gospel music, a lot of the time, tend to not really be a fan of listening to non-gospel music. And it's for a really well-justified thing. But knowing that, knowing that makes it me, so it makes me like, I, because I, if I know somebody just want to listen to gospel music, then I become respectful to them. I become thoughtful about what I do. If I'm not in the same kind of uh, uh, orbits when it comes to the kind of music or the kind of tunes I listen to. So, so and you know, the African music is so diverse, it's so vast and, and uh, uh, traverses between spirituality and cultural and secular and all of the above and, and all together put together. So um, it's, 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 it's a nice way of connecting with each other. It's, a, it's an incredible way of getting to know other people. And uh, I just wanted to point that out that it's the assignment of one Africa in our generation is that simple. Simple, simple instruments, simple tools and simple opportunities that can be used to bridge connections. Wow, uh, thank you. Uh, the brain, can you hear us? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought, yeah. I, thought I lost you there for a moment. No, no, you know, no. Like, no, 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 I just said, you know, oh, let me stop here and let somebody else speak there. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Uh, a very great point. I think, um, I'll, I'll play the, the, the video. I think you, um, where you talk, where, where you're talking about uh, the topic was Africa is one big family with 54 yes. siblings. Is, yes. it, is it the run, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm going to play. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just going to start it from somewhere in the middle. Uh, let me just share the video for, for those who might not, uh, who might have missed. Um, I don't know where, where I'm going to start it because I think I had played it half today as well. Uh, okay, let me go there. guy you are responsible for him you actually gave a birth to that guy so if he brings f it's because of you some part of your brain used to bring f back in the days and today you cannot blame this one little kid who brings f on the table you can't bring this you can't blame this kid who has like behavior that you don't understand this kid he didn't get from nowhere no he got it from you he got it from daddy and mommy you look yourself and you blame yourself that oh Okay, back in the days, I used yeah, I used to do this and this and and this is what happened. Mika is on fire. Mika is one big family, and these fifty-four different countries are different kids with different behaviors, different. I'm sorry, I'll use this word: different IQs, different determinations, different actions. Different way of thinking. We can't think the same. Somebody think that, you know what? I'm the best kid in this house. We have that in the house. Somebody think, you know what? I deserve more love. Someone think, you know what? I am the best than anyone here. Someone think I'm handsome. Oh, I'm beautiful than anybody here. Even in your family, you have like three kids, four kids. Some of you think like that. 
But do you hate, do, do you say that, you know what, because I'm better than me, you are not my family no longer? Do you say that? You don't. Because you're one family. This is not a metaphor. This is the reality of Africa. A one big family. You hate Egypt? You're hating your sibling. And guess what? This is the trick part. You hate that person. They hate you back. They hate you back. And that's what divides family. Hatred. Hate. That's what divides family. Hatred. That's what separates family. Hatred, that's what says, you know what? I'm no longer a member of this family. I'm going to live on my own. You run away from your country. You, you move to another country. I don't even want to see my family. You need counseling. I, I, I don't care what family has done to you, but family is family. You don't walk away from the family. Some, I was talking to somebody when I was coming here. And then I told him, I was advising that guy. Say, hey, man, I want to advise you this. If, you, if you're doing business, do business with your family. Invest. Work with your family. Because at the end of the day, even if they steal money from you, even if they take away from you things, they're still family. So are you willing to lose your money, everything, to somebody else out there than your own family? I would rather lose everything I have in my family. I don't have that person in my family, but if I do a business with my family and then my brother or my sister walk away with everything I have, it doesn't matter to me. They are family. So whatever they walk away with, what is mine, whatever they walk away with, is going to help them and they're my family. And I'll find another way to help myself family but that experience you walk away from your, you don't walk away from your family it's the curse no matter what they've done to you you don't walk away from them you don't walk away from your family i don't know who i'm talking to here but you don't walk away from your family no matter what they have done you can say whatever you want to say you can bring whatever you want to say and whatever reasons you have Yes, they are solid reason, and yes, you have a point, and yes, I am in no position of saying this word, yes, because it's your family matter, yes, but you don't walk away from your family. Just the fact that you walk away from your family, it's wrong. It's wrong in human eyes, it's wrong in God's eyes. Remember the story of prodigal son, the guy who ran away from his family, took everything there it is. Mika was on fire right there, right, <laughs> guys? Yeah, Mika was on fire. No, to me, like, to me, like, a lot of the problems in Africa are family issues. And uh, as a family, you have to confront them. But they are not comfortable. These are not comfortable issues. These are not easy issues. These are not, you know, simple things that you overcome in a day or in a, one sitting in one conversation. These have these two require choices. These require decisions, and these require conversations uh, that are open and candid and and uh, brutally honest. And uh, that was uh, that was Mika doing his thing, and I like I really appreciate that. I'm sorry, the brain. May I say say something? Yes, sure, sure. You know, uh, I've attended the whole conversation. And even for me, this conversation, this program, not only for me, for most people will be a turning point, you know. You know, in Ethiopia, regardless of the fact that we have unity on our nation, there is still problems. Tigray do not like Amara, Amara do not like Tigray, others many ethnic groups there is a zone a zone in which 
16 different ethnicities cities uh, exercise or live. You know? So there are such problems. And I'm sorry to raise his name. One of our uh, colleagues said that one of uh, African support. I remember. Said, yeah. yeah, you remember. Yeah, Sam. Sam. Yeah, 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 Sam. I'm, so, I'm sorry to raise his name, but no, since we are raise. siblings, listen, no listen, problem. Listen. Yeah, you know, I have such problem, you know, I had before that. Not based on humanity problem or others, others, but particularly with respect to Egypt. I'm not clear. Even I couldn't, I couldn't be honest to myself to love Egypt because of uh, some circumstances, current circumstances. You know? And so, Israel, uh, Mika's discussion, Mika's arguments became a turning point. Not only for me, for me too, but not only for me, for many, for many Ethiopians. No, because we make a mess. We confuse religion and faith. We confuse politics and nation. Politics may last, but nation never lasts. And that is what we confuse, you know. And still, still what I want to say here is there are some basis of conflicts in our country, in, in, in Africa, in Ethiopia, or throughout the world. Those conflicts based religion, particularly religion. So a point should be made here. We need to distinguish religion from faith. What does God want? Does God want or focus on religion or our, our society should know this, you know? Yeah. This is, the, the, assuming, as I see, we have such shortage. And that is why we kill each other when religious names are mentioned badly. And then we just take uh, our guns and start shooting each other. Yeah, Jos mm. Josie, yeah, we, like yeah. you know, Josie, I think mm. like we also do save each other because of yeah, faith and religion. Yeah. Because yeah. we stop wars because of faith and religion as well. So you know, even though because we because the bad things are the things that come that pop in the top because this is, is you know is basic fundamental human construct for survival is the thing that determines the narrative of the day. The thing that is talked about because people are like inherently inherently basic in their basic dna formats uh, are so designed for for survival that they're looking at what is out there to attack me what is out there to kill me what is out there to destroy me what is out there to end my 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 genetic uh, land lineage so that that instinct that basic fundamental basic human instinct tend to guide most of our understanding of our world. But if you realize deeply, if you realize deeply for every time somebody gets killed, there are 10, 20, 30 other people who are saved. We using the same reason. The reason that was used to kill can also be used for the reason to save. And that happens all the time. The savings, the, the thrivings, and the peace, and the love, and the compassion people have billions of people on this planet have, we don't hear about it. It doesn't make a news. But the destructions and the wars and the pain that we see on some corners, as painful as they are, as bad as they are, that's what we hear about. But and then because there's that, they they what they call a crowd out. They become the noise that crowd out the other, you know, subtle but very powerful noise that are vibrating underneath all of that. And I think to me, Sometimes the task sounds very heavy, but it's not that heavy. It's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. It's just a small, as a one degree kind of shift in the way we think, in the way we act, in the way we do make judgments. That will make a difference between saving and death, between destruction 
and creation, between hate and love. That's one degree. It's not a, a 180 degree change, change that sometimes it's required. It's this small, small ta tangent, tangential kind of change. Uh, and that can make, like, look at you, what did you say? You heard that speech when for you and for many people, it's a turning point. That conversation yeah. that, that was a turning point. You see how small that, that, that small conversation in just one or two hours. I mean, how many hours has passed since then? But that 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 two hours is so significant that the other hours that came after it, or the other hours that was before it, are not as significant. So that's what it means to like. That's why it's so, it's like people are burdened by the, the like by the nature of our challenge, but the solutions are not as burdensome sometimes. Hmm. And it's as simple as shifting the way we. So it's just realizing that religions can be different, but our faith. Can be can tie us together. That's just realize that small realization can change the way things are. Or you can speak different language, but we can sing to the same tunes. We can dance to the same tunes. That small realization can shift the, the what would be different differences become a, a uniting element to it. And, and I really appreciate the way you you put it. And I wanted to stress that point as well. Of course, yeah, you know. Uh, uh, do you think how he felt? Even uh, eventually, he got tired. He got tired <laughs> and was goodness. calling, calling. Where is Israel? Or is there anyone? Israel, he said. Yes, I couldn't. I couldn't. I had yeah. to go to work. Yeah, of I had course, to go to work. Course. But uh, but I was yeah. pointing. I was making points early on, and I was actually in the yeah. chat room, uh, okay. saying a lot of things about. You know, hate doesn't create. Mm -hmm. I, I, anybody can go out there and want to go, like you know, like you know, uh, our farmer, uh, our African farmer, and who wants who who loves farming, and if he has to go out there and plant seedling, hate mm -hmm. will not be the one that will get him some seedlings. Hate will not be the one that will raise the seedlings that he planted on the ground. Those things. So yeah. I'm not point. I'm I'm not saying he's in, in the middle yeah. of hate. I'm just giving you as an example. Yeah. And yeah. the same thing for us, for me here. If I had full of hate, I would I would not be able to create new ideas. Human beings, when they create history, let's say when they, human beings figured out and discovered fire, they didn't find it through hate. Hate yeah. is not a source of creation and innovations and change, transformations and building and you know construction of something or hate cannot be the basis of an architecture of something good. Yeah. Hate is just an excuse to not do something about my lack of knowledge, my ignorance. Hate is an excuse for me to not do something about it. So yes, he was, I know he was, uh, he was, <laughs> thank you for listening to him all the way through, but I know he, he was on fire that day, actually. Yeah, yeah, he was on fire, you know. Uh, let me let me raise one question is there anyone who regrets for giving love you can mention many who regretted who con who contemplated for hating but trust me you can't get anyone who regrets who contemplates for giving love at all yes. for giving love for worshiping God, you will never and ever regret. No. That is the point, I think. Exactly. I mean, I think I remember Sam at some point was saying in the chat room that he yeah. was not necessarily, he was he was coming from a sense of desperation. He was desperate, so desperate yeah. that how come the yeah. Tigrayans don't see what we what the rest of us don't see? And yeah. And that was no. I'm not, I'm I'm paraphrasing his point, probably yeah. making it sound better, but it's not. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, got but, him. I understand but, Sam's but, idea, by the way. But 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 the thing about like, but yeah. the thing you have to understand is that, like, that's the limit of your understanding. That's yeah. what, that means you've reached the limit of what you understand. Then instead of jumping to the conclusion, which is hate, you have to take yeah. a step, a little yes. bit back, yes. and then really 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 analyze. What do I need to understand here that I don't understand? What is it that the things that Tigrayans are seeing that I don't see? Yeah. So sometimes I say, 
oh, let's eliminate TP lift, let's eliminate TP lift. But, but the notions and the ideas of TP lift, yeah, you might try to eliminate, but there are people who find security and safety in it out of ignorance. Yeah. Out of ignorance, out of lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like out of, you know, the blind spots of humanity, because we are always, we all have blind spots. That we, the things yeah. that we don't see, that we don't even see. Mm -hmm. You don't see that you don't see that you, that, that you yeah. don't see that. That's how bad it is. So if you are in that vortex, that Bermuda triangle of vortex, yeah. where yeah. you don't see an escape out of it, all you see yeah. is with the things you are in the middle of. Yeah. All you see is that, and like if I if I ask you all of you to put your hand all the way close to your eyes and tell yeah. me what you see. You're going to describe to me what you see, which is that the hand that is preventing the light that is coming to your eyes. And sometimes yeah, it makes pessimistic. It is, yeah. yeah, it makes you think yeah. that that's all the world is. That's all you see. And that's all the world is. Sometimes it's hard to see beyond what you see. Sometimes it's not when you're in the middle of fear, when you're in the middle of hunger. And another thing that people forget is that when in a country like Ethiopia, in a country like, in a continent like Africa, where the poverty rate is very high. When I say poverty, I'm talking about not just material poverty. I'm talking about intellectual poverty, spiritual poverty, emotional poverty that, that have not been given a due course to develop and grow. Poverty sometimes is, is the absence of growth, the absence of yeah. something growing. So material poverty is the absence of your material wealth from growing. Social capital not, too. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes when you are in that space, you are yeah. saddled with so much stuff. I mean, they are part of Ethiopia right now. If yeah. your ma if a mother gets sick, a mother is supposed to give birth, and then it is no it's not an easy birth, and they have to find uh, the nearest health center. There are parts of Ethiopia that they will have to track days to get there get that you know basic not even high level basic kind of service they are part of Ethiopia where light the power power even when you are getting power in your home it's a luxury you, you, you don't just turn it on because chances are most of the time it's off okay. when you are saddled with the kind of most Ethiopians are very culturally spiritually you know uh, very advanced but the, over the past few hundred years we've now worked in, in in creating an environment where those things have transform trans translated into material well-beings yeah. and to intellectual well-beings and to uh, you know, spiritual well-beings we haven't ha worked on that we've been working on who should run the country which tribe is better which tribe is worse? We're moving from one angle to another angle, from one uh, problem to the next problem without really tackling the fundamental issues. And then we are saddled with all of those things. And it's hard for a lot of people to think. And so when I tell you uh, 1.4 million people in Tigray still depend on food aid, if I tell you that number, 1.4, you just going to, most people are going to think, oh, the numbers. But what you have to think about it, turn that into a unit, a unique, a unit of family, a unit of family that depends. And what that would look like and put yourself in that position. What would it look like for you if we were to depend on somebody else because the land is not giving you enough food, because this politics is not giving you enough power and, and liberty to go out there and, and, and not only survive, but also thrive. You have all sort of bottlenecks around you. And all, and you depend on handouts, and all you see is that handout is the only way out for you to survive that day. Imagine daily, daily living like that as a human being, and how that prevents that human being from aspiring, aspirational stuff are uh, luxuries. So when survival issues are serious, aspirational stuff luxury like meaning and purpose and culture and values those things become almost too far out of the reach and it, because they don't seem like food they don't seem material mm. so yeah, sometimes we fail is. to understand we fail to understand the complexity of challenge individual africans ethiopians and africans face on a daily basis 
And because we are elite, we are, because we are educated, because we are well-read, because we are far removed from the experience, the daily struggle of average Africans, we try to impose, oh, this is a better way, this is a better way. We, we tend to really ignore those who are living in it. Mm. Not we, we understand their material problems, but we mm. forget who is living in that material problem. Yeah. We understand what is lacking in those places, but we don't understand the people who are experiencing those lack, those shortages. And how they think, how they process, how they relate, how they try to work together to figure out a way to resolve those things. So sometimes, some, so that's why I say, like, sometimes we don't understand. It's better to say we don't understand mm -hmm. and then seek a way to understand. You know, like, so a lot of problems across Africa happens, but we don't understand. We don't understand not the material mm -hmm. problems, but we don't understand the experiences of the people who are going through those problems. And then the only thing we should do is to, to, to provide a way, a roadmap for transforming that, for changing that. Then African unity, African togetherness, African brotherhood, African family coming together and focusing on the real thing. The troubles and the pain of your family member becomes more important than what is missing in their life. So the, I, just, I just wanted to say that. Okay, thank you, really. That is... More than uh, enough for me. Teacher, okay. teacher Josie, uh, I, yeah. I'm just going to catch you there for now. Um, okay. uh, we, we can always go back and uh, uh, ask. Um, so I just want to give another person a chance. Um, they've been holding for a long. Uh, the only welcome. Uh, the only. Welcome. The only, the only Hello. what? Can you hear me? Yeah, we, we can, can hear, hear you. you. Oh, all right. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. To be Hi. honest, I don't know what to. Say. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know what to say about um, T. Gray situation because I'm actually learning when I'm listening to all of you who are from Ethiopia. Because for me, I don't know the complicity of your of problems in in Ethiopia. So I'll just sit back a little bit and learn and you know what's going on. So, but another thing also I needed to also find out is does anyone know what's going on in the Tigray section? Because if people can't go in, then how do you know what's going on in there? You see, it's like you know, it's like trying to understand the black hole, you know, on the on the mm. on the black hole. The only way you know black hole is that it it is what it does to the surrounding it. Like you know, the like black hole, uh, like no light can escape black hole. So when light mm. disappears, that's so that's how you know, right? So the only way that we know, we can extrapolate the fact that the fact that Tigray is is in the in such a state where in such a war and no peace state, you can imagine what it would be like for average Tigrans. You know, yeah. just just imagine it and see how that like you know, going to out to buy something to eat, going out to seek uh, help help um, and the help like you know, somebody sick, you know, going out like you know, people want to go to school. Uh, people want to travel. People want to uh, trade. People want to create business. People want to, you know, th the the things that most human beings get to do. How easy it is for people in Tigray, and I can uh, you can almost guess, and your guess will mo most likely be correct. And that to me is the the sad state of things, that you know the people of Tigray will be hostage to that, and sometimes. Sometimes, um, what the Ethiopian, most Ethiopians out at least uh, beyond Tigray see no is that, uh, so beyond Tigray see, this is what they think, like, you know, we, like, you know, I, I can tell you this, TPLF wants the state. Not all TPLF, but TPLF that is determined to cling to power, to the power they've lost. Mm. And TPLF mm. that is determined to, they see it as a tactic as a method and as a tool mm. instrument because 
then you can use it to say to drum up international support and you can use it to to make the the case that this is uh, the people of Ethiopia you know singling out the people of Tigray and starving them and wow. but there are so many indications to show that that's not the case but at the same time i, I i'm not of the view that the people of the rest of Ethiopia and the, and the government of Ethiopia have done everything in their power and then including Africans, everything in their power to find a way to extricate the people of Tigray from such menace. Such menace, mm. the menace that is there, that is using them as a fodder and as a tool, an instrument of their political agenda. And, and to me, uh, to me is that, so we are stuck in there. So Ethiopia is stuck, right? Like, you know, you can't act and go into Tigray and take military actions completely because military action is not the problem. Military, like sometimes it's like, it's not every problem is, you know, if you had the, say, the saying, not every problem is a nail. Like, you know, this, the saying goes like, you know, not every problem needs a hammer because not yes, every yeah. problem is a nail. And so nail you want to hammer down so that, because some problems are much more sophisticated much more nuanced so how do you find a way to extricate the, these things and what we need is african countries to come together and say look there's more things if there's more things that we could do to make sure that the grand people are not starved that the grand people are not you know are not subject to the, the political tool they become and they're, they're like if there's any political differences, is there any issue of political challenges that they should not be at the crosshair of it. They should not be at the crosshair, whether they, they, they've been, uh, you, you know, the propaganda has been used, that your life, your these things is like your, like your existence is, uh, is in peril. And that's why, and that's one of the ways of, you know, kind of make, turning a place into a bunker a banker mindset, mm -mm. but if, whether that was done or not, I don't care. I don't care if, if uh, the grants have been told the wrong information. I don't care if they believe it or not. If, if they believe the wrong information or the right information. But it doesn't matter what they believe. What I care about, what Ethiopians should care about, is how do we find a way to find that peace that we need for people of Tigray, that's yeah. the salvation that we need for people of the gripe without having to sacrifice any more life. Mm. Without having to use like so to me, like it's so and it's such an it's such a complex, it's such a difficult assignment. And it cannot be done by the government of Ethiopia. It cannot be done by, and then to add to that, those people on the outside hating on Tigrans because they don't understand their problem. Or Tigrans don't understand the problem, mm. so they should be hated. Mm. No, mm. no. That's not that's that, that's why uh, that was Mika's point that we cannot hate cannot resolve the crisis. Mm -hmm. Hate cannot mm -hmm. be turned into food. Hate cannot even if the Tigrayans were wrong in their in believing TPLF. It's it's not for us to use that to to hate on them. We we have to understand from their perspective, from their angle, what they see, what they experience determines who they believe who they think is telling the truth, who they think is telling the lie. And so we have to really recognize from that. So there's that complexity going on. So Ethiopia needs the rest of Africa to come to its aid right now. Because the Westerners wants to use it as, oh, for Westerners, the great crisis is a leverage. It's a leverage for them is to get something they want. Let's say they want to get rid of China from Horn of Africa. Well, that's what they want to do. They want to get China's military base closed in Djibouti. And they think Ethiopia is the only country that can get it done. And then if Ethiopia, like, you know, they, we, let's, they, 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 they will have this dichotomy called carrot and stick approach, the carrot and stick. And they will say the carrot is will give you aid. And the stick, you know, what, what are the sticks that we could use? Trump was thinking you're using the dam. And then, and then a lot of Americans realize, oh, the dam is too much of a unifying force. So it's not a weakness in Ethiopia. It's not a weak, it's not the weak belly of Ethiopia. So wow. so they abandoned the dam. They decided Tigray, the crisis in Tigray, is the weak belly of Ethiopia right now. 
So let's get, get in there and try to instigate a little bit of kind of like, you know, let's put in a little bit of yeast in here, a little bit of catalyst in there, a little bit of this in there, and create a situation, a scenario whereby we force the government of Ethiopia to submit to our regional geopolitical policy we want to implement. That is, that's, so, but, so the way to extricate the Ethiopian government from that is by, one, for Ethiopian government and Ethiopian people to lean on Africa more, to rely on their brothers and sisters across Africa for, for more support, not to support them to do their own policy, but to support them to, to, to come unite, to, to unify the efforts in resolving the problem without further bloodshed, without further debt and mayhem. And, and by, by Africa, so that's what happened over the past couple of months, African countries and African people coming in support of Ethiopia has really prevented the Westerners, has pushed back the Westerners efforts. And that's what you see, you see them retreat a little bit because it, 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 they kind of like, they, they beat more than they can chew kind of situation right now. Mm -hmm. So they stepped up a little bit. It doesn't mean they change their policy. It's just, they say that this tactic, this tactic is costing us more than it's paying off. So they had to retreat a little bit and come back with a different method now. And we, so for me, I don't care what method they use. What I care about is the African people coming together and saying to Ethiopia, you have to resolve your crisis with Tigray. Yeah. You have I to agree. resolve your crisis I with agree. Tigray. But, but I supporting agree. them, not from the perspective of Americans and Europeans, but from mm -hmm. the perspective of brotherhood and family. Yes. yes. And, not, and as a family, you have to be honest. That means if there's something the Ethiopian government is doing to with the situation in Tigray or any part of Ethiopia, that is I'm becoming of a family, they should have a frank mm. discussion, but does, it shouldn't be used for publicly. It doesn't have to be a public kind of a display of, or, you know, carrot and stick like the way the Europeans do it, but kind of have a very frank discussion. Like, this is how we can do it. This is how we can do it. This is how we can help you. We can do this. We can do that. And that, to me, uh, mm -hmm. the details of we can do this, we can do that has to be between the government and the people who are, we put in charge. But generally, overall, I can put it that way. And then, you know, here in this channel, you as Africans is not to come and say, oh, you Ethiopians are only like you are a beacon of our hope. You are just a mother, the mother of Africa. Yes, you are the mother of Africa, but the mother can be talked to. You can talk to your mother. You can you can have a conversation with your mother. Mother, this is a better way of doing it. And that conversation is what we need to do so that mm. we take the right path in resolving the crisis. It pains me. I have a lot of people from Tigray that are family that are related to me because of I grew up in an orphanage. That orphanage also is located in Tigray as well. And I have, you know, yeah. we grew up in brotherhood and sisterhood, very close friend of mine. And, you know, and I like it pains me a lot. And what they're going through, I hear a lot of things about it. I'm from Addis, but I, I, I know through, through them, I know a lot of stuff that is going on. But how do we find this, how do we come out of this complex stuff, this rock and hard place? I just want to play a, a, a video um, for the only. Um, we had a, a conversation with a brother from uh, uh, Tigray. And yeah. um, I'm just uh, starting somewhere, uh, but I've also shared the link for those who, who want to watch the interview. And we'll have some more people from uh, the Tigray region who can also come and we can hear more because I've seen some of the people uh, asking why they want to hear more about uh, people who live in Tigray because uh, they want to separate themselves from there's a TPLF and there's people who just live in the region who don't who don't want to participate in any uh, wars and stuff so but uh, there's an interview that we did I'm just going to play a small one minute or two minutes of that there interview. are people in your side that they, they they think that no we are not Ethiopian and we want to have our own country right so do you yeah. think that is the only solution to solve this crisis uh, that okay we just need to separate this thing to ease it down or you think there's still hope and all these people who are saying that you know Ethiopia is not Tigran they don't really represent all Tigran like what is your thought on that yeah um before I answer that I, I just want to acknowledge that this question is a very important question a very well crafted question is that an echo somewhere and, mm -hmm. and I in my opinion it raises above all the other questions so yeah. before I answer yeah. that let's talk about Eritrean independence right that's it. Eritrea decided to become independent. That. that is very mm -hmm. good. 
But mm -hmm. what you have to understand is Eritrea is stuck in the 1980s now. Mm -hmm. Millions of Eritreans, I think around 700,000 or 1 million, which is like mm -hmm. a quarter of their po population, mm -hmm. left the country. They mm -hmm. fled to Tigray region mm -hmm. because the conditions there are, are, are unspeakable. And there are many Eritrean immigrants across the world because you cannot live and prosper in Eritrea at the current mm. at the moment because of mm. a government that is almost the same as the TPLF. Mm. And to give you a little bit of a background history, the mm. EPLF, the Eritrean People mm. Liberation Front, and the TPLF were mm. a very small insurgent group in the northern mm. part of Ethiopia. So mm. if you want to go back a little bit, you have to mm. understand the Soviet Union. Okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the Soviet Union was expanding for global domination, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And during yes. that time, mm -hmm. the last emperor of Ethiopia, mm -hmm. Emperor Haile Selassie, I saw him on your Twitter cover, if I'm not mistaken, yes. right? Yeah. So Emperor yeah, Haile Selassie yeah. and JFK met mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Fast forward a few months later, both mm -hmm. men were killed mm -hmm. by their own lead, um, no, no, by their own um, citizen oh, yeah, that's cool. of the Soviet Union. Uh -huh. So both leaders were dead because the Soviet Union used their own citizens against them. Mm -hmm. There you go. This is a mm -hmm. very powerful image. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, America understood that, you know, this global push, global dominance of the Soviet Union could not be tolerated. So mm -hmm. America and other countries decided to respond. Mm -hmm. And long story short, the Soviet collapsed. Yeah. But before that, the Soviet mm. Union tried to create a communist regime mm. in Ethiopia and they succeeded. Mm. So the, the government before the TPLF was known as the Dirk and it was a communist regime. Mm. And that communist regime was friends with Russia and you know North Korea. Mm. And America was Ethiopia's ally. And I still believe America is Ethiopia's ally. Mm. And at that moment, America came to Ethiopia's rescue secretly. Mm -hmm. How did they do it? They helped the EPLF and the TPLF mm -hmm. um, gain power. So long before they gained mm -hmm. power, there was this important figure in this story named as Mele Zenawi, who mm -hmm. was in London mm -hmm. already writing a constitution long mm -hmm. before they were you know, in, in, in Addis. Mm -hmm. So long story short, they seized mm. power, new constitution, democracy, mm. blah, blah, blah. Mm. And for 27 years, they yes. led the country with an iron grip. Uh, I don't want to dwell on that, but uh, you guys can, can go and watch that video as well. And um, mm. yeah, but there will be more, uh, obviously, uh, uh, people that will come and uh, from that region. And we can also hear more of their voices because some people have been requesting that. Um, uh, but for tonight, um, I think it will kind of derail us a bit. Uh, I will mm. really uh, prefer that we, we stick to more of the, the trip to Ethiopia. And I also want to play another video. Uh, <laughs> another video um, uh, uh, of uh, uh, His Excellency meeting uh, uh, Jeff Pease, Pease, Pease or Pierce. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. But um, yeah, uh, I'm just going to also share that one. Uh, for those who didn't see that, um, remember even Jeff Pierce once came to our uh, show. I went, we once had a, a conversation with him. So um, finally, Mika, Mika uh, met uh, Jeff Pierce uh, face to face uh, at Arts TV. So yeah, family, I'm just going to also share that video. For those who didn't see, I'm just going to play another uh, short clip. And then um, in your own time, we can uh, 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 watch the video. Hi. Hello. Yeah, yeah, two of them. Yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, no, no. It's fantastic. 
It's really good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Once you yeah. 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 And then we will have lunch together. Um, I'm only here for this week. So, inshallah, we'll see that tomorrow or Friday. Thursday is more like a small range day. I mean, Friday is Friday. Friday. Or evening. When we have evening. What are you guys doing later on this evening? I have some this evening. Um, yeah, he'll have uh, yeah, he will attend an event. Yeah, I'm sorry, you guys are completely uh, <laughs>
America mm. was supporting the ruling, you know, the, labor, the rebel forces who later on in 1991, when the Cold War ended, okay, uh, mm. uh, they became the, the, the strongest force to, uh, in the country and in ruled Ethiopia since 1991 to, to 2018. And so these, that, were, these were TPLF? Basically. Not TPLF alone. TPLF don't oh. rule. You can't, you can't rule Ethiopia alone. It's such a big country. But TPLF yeah. were the leading forces. They were the ones who, the makers and the breakers of power. Oh. So the power brokers, you know. And of course, they had one leader from them leading the the primarily like role of government of Ethiopia, which is uh, Mela Zenawi. But, uh, and then and then Eritrea is the leader of Eritrea and TPLF were together in overthrowing the previous regime. But they, oh. they ran into conflict with each other in the late oh 90s and early 2000s. And it was a deadly war that happened between Eritrea and Ethiopia that cost wow. over 100,000 people uh, like a, a first world war kind of style of war, like really tanks and and all of these things that you can like the last time the humanity has seen such war probably be in Kashmir and between Pakistan and in India kind of thing. So mm, mm, mm. so so when in 2018 Abi comes in and the first thing he resolves is the crisis with with Eritrea. Yes. Yes. And, and then a lot of the TPLF people saw this, okay, this is now being, now this is, we are now on the road to eliminating us. Okay, they became TPLF, big insecure. Yes, and that insecurity began to build up and all sort of tensions was, take, you know, was, you know, boiling behind the scene. And so, yeah, but uh, I think Ezra doesn't want us to go in depth into it, but oh, yes, yes. we can go to it. Very we excellent. can go into it in depth sometimes, you know, I will come in even more prepared. Right now, I'm just giving it you off, off the top of my head and I can come in also yeah. more prepared and give you, you know, without necessarily trying to influence your perspective, but give you as much, as much of the fact as possible so that you can yeah. make your own kind of analysis and uh, mm -hmm. this but is it, but but one thing I can tell you is complex. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it sounds very complex. And like all African conf conflict is complex. No mm -hmm. African conflict is simple. You look at Nigeria, the conflict between northern south, east and west is not simple. You look at the Congo, the conflict is not simple. It's complex. Yeah. You look at because a lot it, of it reminds me. It does remind me a bit of the Congo one, to be honest, when you said TPLF and, uh, and Eritrea, that time yes. they were getting along, it's, it's more similar to Kabila's story in, in Congo, isn't yes. it? Where yes. it was okay, but then now Museveni, Kagame and uh, the other Kabila didn't get along at the end, even though they helped each other to overthrow Mobutu and all that kind yes. of stuff. So, mm, yes. yeah. Yeah, so like and it was, yeah, exactly. But, but even even that, if I go deeper into the problem and the, in the alliance and all of that, it's still a lot of complexity to it. But somebody who's an insider will understand it. A family will mm. understand it, right? Mm. So, so what Ethiopia really needs now is an understanding that is dealing with a very complex problem. Mm. Okay, mm. and in the mm. process of dealing with this complex problem, we don't want to, we don't want any more suffering that they, they should be among yeah. the people. Yeah. Because most most Ethiopians already are struggling under the weight of the economic challenges that they face. Mm. Uh, so a lot of time, a lot of places, a huge part of Tigray has been food insecured for decades. Huge. Mm. It's not a small number. Close to a million, a million plus Tigrians in, in Tigray were always dependent on some kind of food handout because of all sort of complexities in, 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 the, in the society and the economy. So mm. those are already vulnerable people. And then when war is added, it, it only adds to the number of people who are vulnerable. And then the same thing in Amhara, the same thing in Afar, the same thing mm. in Somalia, the same thing in Tigra and Oromia, same thing, I can go on every part of Ethiopia and there's a lot of vulnerabilities there. 
because of a lot of you know work that need to be done have not been done for many 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 years because of wars because of neglect because of misgovernance now there's the time to figure out how do we create a governance system that liberates people's uh, li liberate them from all sort of the all sort of bottlenecks that stands in their way of success and the stand in the way of their welfare and their well-being and how do so we the time in africa right now is not to be care about the time in africa now is like how do we find a way to help the most vulnerable part of our family resolve the crisis so ethiopia is more like a microcosm of the africa i can go to kenya and i can find those vulnerable communities i can go to uganda yeah. the same thing i can yeah. go to yeah. uh, mozambique i can go to rwanda i can go to nigeria nigeria every african country faces the same problems another in addition to that africa is dealing with a very uh, like you know what is called a, a mushrooming demographic challenge a mushrooming demographic challenge people underestimate that, that problem it's a very easy thing to underestimate because it's just numbers to us you know if you're an elite and you're educated and then you and sometimes you're not empathetically connected to the problem you are connected mm. intellectually connected to it but you don't have an emotional connection to it mm. it becomes very difficult to understand when somebody tells yeah. you 70 percent of people africans or 60 percent of africans are are on the age of 30. 60 percent mm. of it mm. under the mm. age of 30. and that's mm. what out of 1.4 billion people how much how many is that that's 700 to 800 million people Gosh. and then you ask yourself hmm, does africa have enough economic power to generate six to eight hundred million you know safe jobs jobs that are like that give people some kind of meaning some kind of security does africa generate does africa have an economy the size that's suitable for that kind of demand population mm, mm, mm. that large Young does population. africa have the size of education quality of education not just schools and like educational quality that serves yeah. that vast number because you know a lot of people will say imagine a 21 year old uh, girl let's say in mozambique somewhere mm -hmm. in mozambique mm -hmm. she's just 21 she's finished she's about to finish school and she's thinking about no, okay, I have, no, I, I, no, I'm one of the few who happens to have a privilege of going to university, but can she envision like a job out there for her easily? Is that an easy thing for her? And I can go like, yeah. you know, we don't connect the problem to that so because we don't connect to that level. Mm. We, we, dis, we, we just very dismissive and we say, oh, the government are corrupt, but it's not just corruption. That's a problem. The size, it doesn't matter. Like, let me, I can give you a context. The size of Ethiopia's government budget is smaller than the defense budget of the Netherlands. The oh. entire budget, Ethiopian government that is supposed to do defense, education, infrastructure, healthcare, and all of this is billion, eh? less than, it's less than $12 billion. Nigeria is $24 billion. Mm. $24 billion. And so in the Sweden has $9 billion just for education alone. Sweden. So even if the African government are not corrupt, if they are like really decent and you know hardworking and committed, they have to work with the resources they have. They can mobilize now. Not mm. the one that they uh, like dream about. And you'll sleep mm. the one that you have even when you're not corrupt it's still still not an easy task to tackle so and so then you come to the realization that then then the, the the notion of african unity so that kenya leans on ethiopia ethiopia leans on sudan sudan leans on niger niger leans on central african republic and so we're leaning on each other you know, mm, you know, like mm, I don't mm. have an idea that could resolve a problem, but somebody in Kenya probably have figured something out. So, but if we lean on each other, we know each other, we know about this. Oh, let's source that idea here. So it seems to be working in Kenya. Why not? Why don't? Why don't you try aspect of it here? 
you know, so because the Kenyan person who resolves something like that will probably is dealing with the same economic context as social context, almost similar context as the one in Ethiopia are dealing with. Hence, this, so the chances are the innovation there is much more attuned to my the innovation I need than the innovation that Sweden has figured out. Mm, mm, mm. So, we, so that is a challenge that is really truly burdening Africa, truly burdening Africa. So that we don't really see each other, connect to each other, understand each other, appreciate each other enough to really see that there is a solution next door to me. There is a way out of some of my problems next to me. And I actually, you, I can offer something to others too. Yes. Do you think uh, pol politicians in Africa they actually think in that level? Or do you think... I think nowadays they're yeah, thinking like that. I think nowadays they're yeah. thinking like that. It's just because the burden is like, it's just like, it's like what they're realizing right now. See, what the Western powers have done, and they say 50 years ago, a technique, they develop a technique, a method. Okay? How do we keep uh, Africans, you know, subservient and and submit to us? And they, they even used to joke about it and say, uh, dangling some country, even dangling is enough to get an African general to submit to you. Dangling, not dangling the idea of giving you aid, not actual aid, is more than enough to get an African general to do a coup d'etat for you. That's a joke they used to joke inside CIAs and all these intelligence organizations, you know, it's public wow. knowledge. So, so that's the method they used. And then they've kind of perfected it and created what's called a humanitarian entrepreneurship and humanitarian empires. So they think that they, by giving Ethiopia one or two billion dollars, like they used to do 10 years ago, be enough to quiet down the noises coming from the ground. To, so um, African government, what they don't realize is that African politicians want to stay in power. And in the old days, they can go to the Br Brussels and Washington DC and get a few hundreds and they can buy power. They can pay the chiefs, the power centers and the communities all over the place and buy their way around power. And circumvents uh, the need to build water, you know, meet the water, Hey, water issue, the water system they should build in, or the electricity they should build in, the jobs they should create, or the schools they should be. In the old days, they used to be able to circumvent those things using those money, those tiny amount of money. But what what African countries right now, because of the demographic change that's underneath the surface, the boiling, that boiling thing that's, what they're standing on is boiling already. Mm. It's much hotter than the, the heat coming from Washington, D.C. So Abi has more heat coming from inside than he's getting heat from outside. Mm. That's what that's overthrew true. TPLF. That's true. That's true. What overthrew TPLF is the demographic change on the ground. The reality on the ground has changed. So a billion TPLF gets about somewhere between one to five billion dollars a year in eight. That's about like five percent at top. Like at the top, five percent of the GDP. It really doesn't go far. It's breadcrumbs. It doesn't leave the corridors of power. Not just the corridors of power in Addis. It doesn't leave the corridors of power of DC and Brussels. Okay, mm -hmm. Brussels says, oh, European Union is increasing its aid to Ethiopia by 20% from, let's say, a billion to 1.2 billion euros. And by the time it gets to Addis, 80% of it has been eaten up by pension, European Union regulations for paying pensions and things like that for who are employed, aid workers and NGO, European employees, European, you know, employees of these organizations. So most of the money has been eaten up. It's not corruption alone. It's just, just the way, it's just the nature of the money itself. Mm, 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 mm. And then by the time it gets to Ethiopia, it's probably 20, 30% of it. And that 20%, the, the the powers that be a crumb on it and then they, they're distributed among themselves. Now they don't have enough to distribute among themselves. Because they don't have enough to distribute among themselves, the, the, the chaos are created on the ground on you. That the person who says, Oh, I agree to support you, your 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 political power, and then turns around and creates chaos for you, support the rebel force here for you, 
and all sort of these tensions create oh, on the ground. Yeah. Hmm. So, so the price of aid has gone up. If, Afri if European powers and Americans have to quiet down Af Africa the way they've done 50 years ago, they probably have to triple or quadruple the amount of money they give. If they're giving Ethiopia five, they probably have to give 20, 30 billion dollars to, to just keep it quiet. Hmm. It's not it's a, it's just it's, even that 20, 30 is, none, is nothing. Because the the, the the demand is so 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 what what, what the African governments is more or less don't have a choice anymore. They can't rely on Europeans to keep to save them because they don't give them enough money to save them. Hmm. So what do you have to do? They have to figure out a way of governing. They have to govern. So over the past ten to twenty years, there's been a shift, a little bit of a shift across Africa to govern better. To do better but mm, the resources mm. they have at their disposal is very limited they, they're not good at mobilizing they're not good at good at thinking not just outside the box they're not good at thinking in the absence of a box mm. they like they, they're like oh they're like oh let's think outside the box if the best they can do is like think let's think outside the box so the box still exists among in their mindset but what they don't realize is the box doesn't exist anymore so they, like that kind of new fresh thinking like that kind of like okay this is the future we're going 20 50 years from now this is the future that we have what can we do today to invest into that future okay we have a lot of accumulated uh, deficit investment investment that we haven't made over the past 50 years that has accumulated as well how do we kind of like uh, extricate ourselves out of that and this the solution is very simple it's the people the people of africa are the one who are going to save africa but how do you turn that mm -hmm. is you have to begin to liberate Africans. You have to give, and how do you liberate them? If I, so one of the way to think of it, like if I cannot provide you water, then I'm not going to stand in the way of you, in the way of you figuring out how to get water. Yes. That's the thing. That's yes. one of the things mm -hmm. African government have to learn mm -hmm. to do. Like they, we don't have the resources to bring water to you. We don't have the resources to bring electricity to you. If you have to wait for us, is you're going to have to wait 50, 100 years, but we're not going to stand in the way of you. Yeah. So how do we? How do they learn to do that? So that's that's what I'm talking about. The box doesn't even exist anymore. Like it's, so, thinking outside the box is not enough. You have to think about the absence of the box. The, like, forget about the box, and then think completely brand new, afresh. Think so. So the, the fresh thinking for me is like people. Yeah, right. think, that's, why that's why the African supporter, uh, one Africa support, is is about that, where. You know, we are we, we, here on this platform, we have to have that conversations, those ideas, those breakthroughs in the way, because we don't, we are not burdened by institutions that our government are burdened, or like regional government or regional institutions are burdened. We don't, we are not burdened by those things. I'm not burdened by any, some regulations and laws and some kind of, uh, anyways. So I just wanted to say that to you a little bit. And that's the challenge at the, that's, that, at least that's what I see. That's what I, 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 at least from my very narrow perspective, that's what I notice. Yeah. Okay, I think just, maybe, just, just uh, hold, hold the third day, uh, uh, the only. Um, I just want to play another video uh, um, uh, uh, of uh, his first meal in Ethiopia when he just arrived, in fact. Uh, uh, he, he was uh, invited. Uh, uh, so I'm just going to play the video for those who didn't watch. Uh... I honestly just want to thank God for this opportunity and for this blessing. It's a huge blessing, God. It's a huge blessing. I want to thank you. Good to be here and i cannot wait i'm going to meet a lot of people i'll be here for a month 
from the motherland of Ethiopia. As I said, we are all Ethiopian. As long as you're not we're Ethiopian. Hey, thank you so much. What's up? I'm home now. No, so, so can I hang you now? Just come on. Right here. This is good. Hey. So guys, I'm right here in Ethiopia already. And next to me, there's Jenny here. Jenny, she has been working really hard yeah, to I'm make sure that I get here. here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I appreciate her. Um, I don't know if, if I make you mad sometimes, <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's not easy to A work with times. me. <laughs> I'm really, no I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I know. I know why you were. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it's good to see you. man, it's good to be here. Just yesterday, I didn't know that I'm gonna be here today. Yeah. You know. And that's why I, I cancelled my plan for you. Oh, <laughs> she cancelled her plan, guys. She had another plan. And so when I was telling her that I'm coming today, she was like, "You know what? I'm not gonna be there." But then later on, she was like, "I'm gonna be there. I cancelled my plan." Come on, man. For you. That's Ethiopian love right there. I must say not long. <laughs> oh, man. I was meant to be here. Like I was meant to be in Ethiopia. I was meant to be Ethiopia. The weather is amazing. It's like, look at this weather. <laughs> Man, it's good to be back home. Yeah. Now we are, we are leaving. All right. I appreciate it. I'm also going to
meal in India. I order chips, chips and what? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, it's chips. a very famous food. My very first meal in Ethiopia, guys. <laughs> Ethiopia. <laughs> You know why I love this? I love these tips because they didn't add anything. It doesn't have tomato. Just tips. It's spicy. They have some veggies here. I, I just want to pause the video right here. And uh, <laughs> uh, if you can see that uh, His Excellency likes saying, I I'm the one who likes food. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'm saying too. I'm saying it too. Sorry. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good afternoon. <laughs> uh, that's the segment. <laughs> I said, Ezra is going to pay attention to the sport. And you posed it. Munda <laughs> Tezi, <laughs> you talk about South Africa and you talk about food. Israel's going to stop it. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> Diggy, uh, 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 look at the, the, the food, right? He's uh, mm -hmm. like likes saying, I, I, I'm the one who likes food, but... Uh, uh, now we've got a, a real footage. You've got something that really proves that he really eats a lot as well. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, I think when it comes to food, I think it's all African affair. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> it's an African affair. The way we do our cuisine is unique. You know, the, uh, the, the, take it from east, west, south, north in Africa. We all have speciality. And it's mm -hmm. awesome. And we need to, uh, we, like we discussed, we should have a, a food session, <laughs> you know. We're food, not stingy, what? by the way. No, exactly. We're not stingy. It has to be like a big proportion. It has to be abundant, right? It has to be a lot. It has to be Absolutely. everything. Absolutely. You have to put everything on the, on the line. If you, like yep. I can tell you, West Africa, if you're making fufu, it has to be everything. Like, you know, that, like, you know, like, you know, like if, it's, if you're making jollof rice, it has to be, you know, above and beyond. I'm yep. sure the same thing in Southern Africa. It's just, it's just you know, we, food, we, uh, we care yeah. about food. Yeah. And, and uh, one beautiful thing about uh, being African and food is that we don't like to eat alone. We, we, went, we invite, you know, we, get, we always say, come on, eat, let's eat. You know, you, you, this is the approach when it comes to uh, food uh, in Africa. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, even if you go to a restaurant, people, uh, an unknown person and he sits down next to you, you always say, hey, Anula, you know what I mean? You always yeah. extend, let's eat, you know, even though he's going to order his own. But Gusha. at the same time, uh, we, we got Gusha. Gusha. Oh, yeah, we yeah, got right. Gusha. We if share. somebody's waiting for their food. You have to like, hey, come on, let me take a one and and kusha and cha and cha one. Exactly. So, and then they take they take one and like you know you know and that and then you know. Right. <laughs> it has it, to be a second uh, one there. Yeah, and I think uh, that's a beautiful culture that we have. We share our food. I don't care which part of Africa you're gonna go. We share food. That's do you know, the like, beauty. Do you know like it's like you know it's an ancient Ethiopian rule, like when. You know, when an elderly person comes, you get up, right? You stand yep. up, right? Yep. The only, you know, the only time you don't get to stand up? 
is when you is eat. When you, <laughs> when you eat. <laughs> like, you know, the story is that the, fu- the food is, ki- is, is a greater king than any mm-hmm. king. Mm-hmm. It's a bigger emperor than any emperor. <laughs> yeah. And they tell you, even the emperor comes. Uh, I just last year went to visit, uh, uh, it's, it's, I think, uh, St. Mary or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, he came in right on lunchtime while they were sitting. And uh, someone would tend to stand up and Hylas Lassie said, no, nope, you're eating and the angels are watching. So don't stand up for me. And he <laughs> said it clearly. <laughs> so people chow down while the emperor is around. So um, you're right. You know, it's an old culture and uh, respect for food. So that's why African, we love food. Tell you honestly, it's, it's, it's everybody. I think uh, there's nobody in Africa that doesn't like food. <laughs> Ezra, you don't have a monopoly on that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think the camera is exposing people now. I'm, I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the truth is coming out, huh? The truth. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't wait for, for you all going to be eating together the, the, the biggest oh meal for, for everyone. Uh, I, 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 I'll be taking videos, guys. I'm going to expose some people. <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, uh, you'll be absolutely. left hungry if you're taking video. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You know, while you take video, the, the, by the time you, you, you turn around, there's nothing on the plates. Honorable host. Honorable host. Yeah. Yeah, yes, uh, African farmer. You Do you found Kill Pauli sister's address, please? Who? Kill Paul, Kill Paul sister, I told you last time. The Maasai girl. The Maasai girl. Maasai girl. Hey man, Kill Paul, Kill Paul. Oh, yeah. The Maasai couple. Is it, is it, is it oh, the Maasai couple. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, man. I, 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 I really forgot. I really forgot about that, you know. That is unacceptable. It was a big that. issue. Exactly. <laughs> hey, what was the issue, by the way? Sorry. Can, you, can somebody recap? I'm, like, lost here. African farmer. Yo. Uh, uh, they, they say, can you, can you inform them? Uh, uh, pro, uh, the brain wants to find out. Uh, can you update him on that? You say, can you update that uh, the girl? Uh, I am just uh, see she's dancing Ethiopian dance, also Indian dance. I really, my heart is melted for her, you know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you better get some lemon. It, it looks like you better get some more lemon. <laughs> hey, hey, Biggie, you, you, you lost out, eh? African farmer can sing. He's an African singer as well. <laughs> <laughs> he was singing, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my lord <laughs> it's, uh, it's Tanzania it's Tanzania you have to wait until she turn 18 or how how's culture work there yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not sure, yeah? I'm not sure but I, I think 18 is, is, is more uh, a feral well. age but I think over 18 probably 20 that's the, the right time if you want to court her yeah. or something uh, do you well, to get married? Hey. Yeah. Do you have to send the shemagle, which is uh, <laughs> oh. for, how 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 you how you get uh, the fancy? How you make a fancy? Hey, I think uh, I think uh, I can say something can about that because uh, and explain uh, because um, I think. Um, uh, if I if I see it, if you really want to get married, and um, you like the daughter, uh, in Ethiopia you send elderly on your behalf that you are interested in their daughter, and they'll go to the daughter's house and parents, and they'll say how nice of a guy you are. They 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 give you, uh, you know, just give you a little bio. To the family, and they ask uh, the daughter in marriage uh, to hand over the in marriage 
So that's the uh, calling of uh, Shemagale. And I think this this practice uh, is in most African country, if I'm not uh, mistaken. You have to send uh, someone out of yeah, respect. Same with us. Uh, yeah. yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Same Put together in this. Yeah, I think it's, it's the same, except there's a part uh, in Ethiopia <laughs> where she, I, I'm not sure if it is Gambella or something somewhere southern uh, Ethiopia, it's the girl that chooses her man. And she will drop a stick if, uh, uh, right at the doorstep of the house that she's interested in marrying oh. their son. <laughs> and he cannot refuse. It's Whoa. like, uh, yeah, it's the woman like that. that throw a stick and the family knows what that stick means, that she's interested in their son. Oh, my God. This, that yeah, it's me. somewhere, yeah, it's south. Uh, actually, they, they made a movie and everything else about it, explaining how this thing works. But, uh, you know, a uh, woman got uh, high power in that part when it comes to marriage, she select her husband. It's not the way around where the man is selecting his, uh, his wife to be. <laughs> That's a, wow. a, one that I know in, in Ethiopia. And I don't know uh, if it goes on the same way, some part of other African countries. Yeah, I Very think interesting. We have a lady here. Maybe she can tell us. Uh, uh, the only <laughs> you go for yourself, you choose your man and say, I want that one. You are mine. He throw no. a stick in, no, in, we, their we, we <laughs> in their house. No, we don't do that. Uh, we passed that stage ages ago in South Africa. Um, we can't even recognize ourselves anymore. Um, we just do as uh, meet somebody, uh, they like you, you like them, and you date. They're interested, then they will go to your family and ask for your hand in marriage. That's how it is. But before, I don't think it was like that. We changed a lot. Yeah. There, there, there is another one, um, which was a bit, uh, for now, especially in this modern day, uh, a lot of people will not approve of, um, was, um, for example, uh, if you want a lady, you don't really sometimes have to be um, making on her or trying to impress her just to um, marry her. But... Um, Let's say a lady will go to, I, I think uh, uh, the, the only you might know this or, or, or you might have heard of this culture where um, when a lady Which is one? going to maybe uh, 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 fetch water um, and then a guy is family, if you want a woman and there's a specific girl that you want, you go and literally grab her, you take her to your home. Kidnapping. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. it's like oh, kidnapping. Yeah. That's we call it talafa. We call it talafa in Ethiopia. Yeah. We have that. Uh, uh, we had that also in Ethiopia. Talafa. So basically, yeah. you snatch the girl from whatever, and you keep mm -hmm. her, and uh, you marry her. That that's when you are, you have uh, an understanding that the family is not going to marry let you marry their daughter. So basically, they they kidnap the woman. You know, and actually that. That now is becoming like uh, it's illegal, okay, and uh, you can get yeah. prosecuted for that yeah, because you're literally kidnapping yeah. somebody. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, but you didn't have a choice then, you know, as a woman. Uh, um, uh -huh. And I think this also biblically uh, in the Bible it also happened um, with the Benjamin uh, tribe. Uh, mm. if, if you know, if you remember the story of the uh, the uh, the Benjamin tribe, um, mm. the, the Benjaminites or the, the Benjamin tribe, in fact, they 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 are the they form part of the twelve tribes of uh, Israel. So mm. the at some point, all the tribes fought with the uh, the the tribe of Benjamin, by the way, um, and mm. they had destroyed most of the 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 land and the people uh, in um, uh, in the tribe. And there were just few men that remained after the war between the, the other tribes, the other 11 tribes fighting with the Benjamin. So, and um, be, and the country, I mean, the other tribes felt pity for their uh, uh, a brother or the tribe, the other tribe, which was the Benjamin, that they had destroyed their kids, their, their women, and even their land. 
and they give him an order to go and uh, grab some women who were from another tribe, you know? So it's something that's, that also happened in the Bible. So, but yeah, <laughs> just something of, uh, just, just came in, into my mind now when we think talking about this thing that it's now illegal, that you cannot go and <laughs> force yourself. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But um, things have changed now. Thank God. Imagine <laughs> getting kidnapped, and you don't like the guy. You're like, oh, you're forced now. You are you are going to marry this person now. But but Life imagine, but imagine the only right. Besides uh, uh, that, that one is another part. Now, what uh, what, what do you think of uh, the arranged marriages that were there? Because Sometimes not also about a guy coming and grabbing you, taking to his house. It was a matter of your parents saying, you shall marry into that family. Mm, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're maybe yeah. in a monarchy, you're a princess. You can, uh, for them, it's like you have to go and marry into another monarchy or another kingdom. So, yeah. I think, during my grand today, hmm? I think during my grandfather's time, it was like that. There was a lot of arranged marriages. Because I think my grandmother also went through the same way. It was uh, more like an arranged uh, marriage type of thing. I think they were a bit strict with the whole boys and girls meeting and all that kind of stuff. So obviously they have to um, talk as family. Someone who knows somebody from that family who has a child, same age, who may marry your son, all that kind of stuff, you know? So, yeah, so it was like that those days. <laughs> Well, is it like is it easy for Africans to really abundance, you know, at least some of our tradition? Is it that easy? Because like you look at India, yes, India doesn't seem to have given up on many of these things that are still yes. still at the core of the way India operates. Uh, but a lot of the times, you know, we had a lot of similarities. I mean, I remember. I mean, I'm not that old, but I remember when I was young, people were like you know the older you know, p people sitting around talking about how to arrange marriage for somebody. Oh, she might like him or she might like that. And let's, like, let's set them up together and let's talk yes. to the family. I mean, I think yes. like this is not, I mean, this is in the 1990s I'm talking about. So in mm -hmm. Ethiopia. So, uh, but it doesn't exist. I don't think that exists anymore in Ethiopia. That has almost quickly dissipated from any kind of like any sense that the, uh, yeah, but is that easy? Is it easy for us? Yes, it is. Uh, now people have really embraced the liberal type of life. Uh, so I would say a bit, I would say more westernized in certain areas where it, they're quick to throw in certain parts of their culture. I mean, I know some parts of South Africa, I mean, in South Africa, a lot of guys are complaining. They don't want to pay any more bride price. So it's one of those cultures also the guys they don't even want to do anymore isn't it agra don't you want to yeah. pay bright price anymore uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I'll, I, I'll i'll pay uh, I, i'm not <laughs> still old school like that. <laughs> no. uh, i know some, some guys um i know there's there's, there's this uh, organization called uh, stingy men association <laughs> <laughs> they just want to <laughs> you know they they want to control everything the finances which means as a woman when you say um i need um i need something to eat they'll buy you and bring it to you they'll not say let's go to a restaurant choose what you want to eat so it's a guy that says whatever you want what do you want you want food i'll bring you the food um you want to take the school the kids to school give me the account i'll pay for their school so it's those guys who they call them the uh, men association that a woman mm. shall not touch their finances. And if they find you, if you, you are in that organization, you're in trouble. <laughs> but it's a, it's a joke, man. It's just... Not it's right. said, but there's those some, guys jokes, that, some jokes have some truths, man. Yeah, so a lot yeah. of those guys nowadays, they, they, they don't really... Um, some, some of them, they don't understand the concept of marriage and dowry, paying dowry. What was the significance of it? But when you know the meaning behind it, you you really understand why you need to go and 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 do that. Go pay your dowry and, uh, you know, and and do the process of, uh, whatever you want to do. You know, so I think you've got guys that are, are um trying to adopt certain cultures because we are now living in urban places, and certain things are no longer easy. As you ask as a, 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 a the brain that 
why, uh, uh, is it easy for us as Africans to, to leave our cultures? Sometimes it's because the laws of our countries are not favoring some of the customs that we used to practice. So those are the things. But, and even some guys... But India say, is urbanized. India is heavily yeah, but, urbanized, but still kept it. Yeah, but I think, you know, as I said, our, our maybe their constitution, their laws, they still also acknowledge those things. Yeah. But in yeah. our countries, we, we just absorb some of the Western laws when we put them in place. Like in my yeah. country, for example, uh, um, the only can also... Cont- uh, uh, can add to this that uh for example we we now they now also recognize what we call customary marriage because you used to have guys who used to have will have a wife at home in the villages and then they went to work in the mines in the big cities and they'll have another wife there and the wife in the city will be legally married in terms of uh, they will go to the okay. uh, home affairs register their marriage and stuff mm-hmm. but then when the guy passes away and when money has to come and pay uh, the payouts, the package and stuff, you find that the one who's um, uh, legally married in terms of the, the paper, she'll get everything. But you find that this guy left another family in the vill- in the rural areas and there's kids, there's everything that they cannot get anything from the parent. But now it's there's, there's, like, this customary marriage where if I pay dowry for you, it's also uh, recognized as a marriage. I would just need to go and... and, and and, to and, me, and, I think we have to reevaluate Africa, like some of the marriage stuff, like really go back to the basics of uh, maybe sometimes maybe some of the some of the good things about traditional way, the traditional way of doing it. I mean, not just go back, but really understand why they did those things and, mm-hmm. and try to revive some of that in our modern in our modern world. I mean, there's some value to it. Like you know, some of the because there were a lot of rules assigned to those things. If you were to like, they were not just oh, like you know, you just uh, like you know, you are like arrange marriage, but, but there were some rules to arrange marriage. There were some things that need to be followed. Like you know, like you know, we, we today we only have like the skeletons of those things. We don't have the true depth of those things that we. Where we, to really understand why uh, what's wrong with the with our families construct because family level issues affect our economy our society a lot and and in the disjointed ways it's currently happening you know some in pseudo western it's not even true western a lot of the time it's pseudo western you know and it's not even truly western so you are not yeah, never in any that is a place you know I, you're not western you're not african you, you don't have any like you know like anchor there's no anchor to it not, so i think like we might have to go uh, by the way you know dr abi for example he's he's a child of a fourth wife i think uh, biggie might correct me on that one yeah something he's like chi- that yeah he's a child of a wow. fourth wife uh, and I think, like, I think if you are a Muslim in Ethiopia, you are allowed to marry more than once. I think you have to, yeah, I don't know, I, somebody, somebody, you know, like, I'm not, I'm not telling you fact here. I'm telling what I heard. Mm-hmm. Okay. So somebody can correct me and I'm very happy to be corrected. If somebody knows the fact, and I heard how the law works. I heard, yeah. I heard the truth. Yeah. You heard that too, right? So, <laughs> so, so I know. But you gotta love them equally. You gotta love them all equally. That's what yeah. the mama says. Because but there are laws, right? I'm saying Muslims yeah. have law laws. Yeah. I know, and then it came because as a result of their really like the history of you know mismanagement of marriage and all of that, Islam came in and ordered it, created order. Like, yeah, if you have two wives, you have to give them equal amount of money and equal amount of love, which is kind of hard, right, to accomplish. Like, if you are seven wives, you have to be in seven of them in seven days. You can't be more than. So you have seven days in a week. <laughs> you have to be in each one of them equally. You cannot if you buy clothes for one, you have to buy clothes for all of them. If you yep. if you buy a ship for one, you have to buy a ship for every one of them. There's no the one the wife same. as yeah. Huh? Housing the same. Housing, housing the same. Everything. It's the same. I, <laughs> I don't know what about sex and all of us, but <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it's just uh, they they make arrangement uh, actually within the. The oldest wife, you know, and then the second wife, the third wife, the fourth wife, they yes. have a ranking. Most of the time, the oldest one will favor the youngest one to be with the husband more. You know, it's like they favor the youngest one to support her 
in her journey. You know what I mean? And yeah, uh, they that, always yeah. favor favor and that then, to support. And then un unlike Western Western uh, engage, uh, relationships, and I think the true traditional African and an, and an Eastern kind of relationship are more than they are they are more asexual. They're not sexual instrument. They are asexual. That means like. Uh, sex is more like an instrument, not of pleasure, but an instrument of like, you know, rec in, in procreation, right? Reproduction. Yeah. Reproduction. Uh, it's not yeah. procreation, it's, it's reproduction. Yeah. And so there's an element of pleasure to it, but that element of pleasure to it is also managed. It's not just, it's not, you know, willy nilly kind of thing. Like, it has a very well managed, it's not in the movies kind of style. Like, you have to be very decent about it. You know, you can't just... So there's all sort of things that we've lost over the course of the centuries. And, but partly is us Africans, you know, abandoning them. Uh, but partly is also like the institutions uh, that were left to us by the colonialists. Just, you know, we we're too westernized for them to recognize, you know, you know. The uh, old, um, yeah. Yeah, the value, uh, like for example, when uh, when I talked about the uh, Shemagalis that you sent out, yes. representing you that you want to have uh, their their daughter elders, right? yeah. uh, 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 to the parents. Yeah, the elders goes to the parents of the of the girl and uh, represents you basically. Hey, you know, our, our son is like this, right? like that. Huh. So what happened is, what happened is, they don't give them answer immediately. No, they don't say come back next week and we'll give you the answer so basically what they're doing is doing what you call in the modern day background check <laughs> literally they're doing is a background a, check is it, they go to the lineage of the family if there's any relationship you know because they gotta count like seven generation that they're not family somewhere you know what i mean and uh there's a lot of things uh, that goes on within these uh, time that they gave them to do their background check. So uh, the, the even men modern, and the uh, women, uh, they know each other. Even in modern, in modern where they're actually dating, like the man and woman is anyone, are dating. Is anyone know Bunukala? Bunukala? No, no, no. I don't know. What's that? Bunukala is uh, one of the Oromo culture, uh, which is you send the Shemagale. Mm -hmm. And then if they say okay, they will cook for you bunukala. If they say no, they will not give you bunukala. Oh, 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 I've heard of that. I've heard of the the food they serve you is a uh, with is, uh, coffee yeah. and the fresh uh, butter. Butter, yes, yes, right. That's that's how you know. I know I've heard oh, yeah. of it. Without Actually, opening their mouth, you know, without refusing, you see, without saying anything. This is what I said. Absolutely. Everybody, you know. Please do not say something in vain. Reframe that because it's like that. Whatever that you said is out there in the world to to grab. There's a lot of other signs that behind it. So already the Oromo knew that you don't have to say a word. They just serve him a coffee with butter. That is okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or they don't serve you anything. Yeah, that's uh, uh, I think maybe. usually known around the Jima. I don't know if everywhere uh, and uh, every everywhere. I think I don't there's, probably a version of it. there's a version of it somewhere and every yeah. there's probably a version of it um, I think uh, you know when it, when it comes uh, a man and woman uh, when they're planning marriage I think they got to understand the value what marriage is you know a lot of times uh, the way I look at it in the mo modern society is like having a boyfriend it's just you got a contract you understand <laughs> it's like any time you can divorce you know what I mean um boyfriend boyfriend girlfriend situation why you enter into marriage if it's going to be something that is not mutual and respectful and uh looking at, at each other's uh health and well-being support each other you know uh the key thing to that is love so what what the west teach us is more like oh you can divorce anytime but in Africa on, from the beginning unless you're in the middle of the cities and you are really city uh, living person in the rural end, they have that respect uh, because when they ask the marriage uh, for their daughter, 
with all the dowry you receive and all that is part of the culture that you're going to respect this for the rest of your life. And uh, when it comes to divorce in the, uh, in the countryside, you got to go through a lot of questioning. You just don't divorce her. Biggie, you already have four or five Biggie, kids. When you marry in Africa, you marry into the family too. Exactly. So, so is he, when you divorce, I mean, actually, <laughs> when you're divorcing, when you're divorcing, you're divorcing in laws, you know, mm. all sort of relationships. It's a too complicated divorce. A divorce is too complicated. Right. And then, and everybody's mm. in your business. Everybody's in your business. I, I see, you know, like, you know, like when I was in Ethiopia working, even in Addis, I mean, like, you know, what I hear a lot of times is like, oh, I have to go and Last I have to go here yeah. and talk to. It's just people are constantly busy, you know, <laughs> resolving each other's crisis, and right. because you're marrying it, like even with true friendship, not even like cousin or blood relative. If you have friendship, uh, like your friend to the the guy side, once the marriage happens, and you're part of the 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 relationship too, so you can't just be, you know, ignored. Like you have to be part of the the resolution, if there's any problem, yeah, you're, you're part of it. You're not outside of it. Uh, One I, thing I, I will tell I, you, uh, uh, in addition, is <laughs> when you get married, you ever notice? You have <laughs> bridesmaids and ushers, right? That are around you. These people are supposed to be support to that, to that groom and bride for the rest of their life. So if you got seven... And seven, okay, it has to go through all seven, even to uh, on any crisis, if one to help restore the, the marriage. Yeah. But people forget that, you know, they think, oh, it's, it's just another party, you got a wedding, you know, you got the uh, seven, 12, you know, name it. If you have 12 people, that's going to be, uh, that's, uh, that's 24 people. So that means you got to go through all 24 before you finalize your separation or any crisis that comes. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be participating in the, the rest of their life. By That's the, one thing way, that people by forgot. The, by the way, it's, it's 4 a.m. Uh, I think it's oh, 3 a.m. 4 a.m. for Mundetesa and 3 a.m. for the only mm -hmm. and uh, Ezra on your end, right? So I don't know, like... Like, you know, for me, you want it's, to uh, for me yeah. it's uh, 10 to 1 in the morning. Let me see. It's, yeah, it's, it's more like 5 to 1 in the morning. Okay, okay. So, so you are like, so you are all I mean, like late, 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 late. I know, I know Mondathezi can stay up all night because he's just like, cruising right now. He's prepared. He's prepared. He said he, he, he also had a tactical sleep. He slept four hours uh, before we came. It's just now we've, we've been um, shouting and talking all over him. Uh, I want to hear Mendatez in terms of marriage. I know Mendatez has has uh, three wives: one in Kisumu, one in Nairobi, one in Mombasa. <laughs> Where's the fourth one? He, he needs he needs yeah. a Maasai wife now. He, he wanted to come to 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 uh, Ethiopia with a bus to to get another one. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> you be quiet, no? <laughs> when that Tezzy sleeps on the phone, you know. Oh, no, 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 we said you must have a, a, a glass of water or juice or whatever you're drinking, whatever is hot or cold for you. I'm having a uh, grape juice, and I also have my yeah, glass of I don't know what you guys are having. Minatiz is having coffee. <laughs> uh, the, the brain, I don't know what you're having there. Coffee or no? I had my coffee in the a, morning. A Jack Daniel or something. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink unless it's a special occasion. And I drink my coffee in the first. The first thing I do is coffee, not anything else. I don't need anything else. And then sometimes even breakfast might not be uh, an option, as long as I get my coffee. You give me my coffee, especially if it's a Ethiopian coffee. That's something else. 
It's effect is not like Jack Daniel whiskey or any kind of wine that you drink. Its effect is completely different. It excites you. It motivates you. It wants you. It makes yeah. you want. Like, unless you you go yeah. above you. the, the <laughs> sweet part of it, the honey part of it, brings the honey out of you. It's, 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 it's an incredible thing. You know, if you, as if a, you talk a, while you drink it, you not fear anything. You not uh, fear anything. Just. Feel free, you know, you can speak whatever you want. <laughs> I remember, you notice, I can speak. Like I remember, Tajibet, Tajibet, he never had a fight. Oh. You never uh, had a fight. Tajibet, yeah. you never had a fight. Uh, I, at, at home, I never go to Tajibet, by the way, at home. No, no, meaning where they serve you Taj only, and if it is a good Taj, okay? Not the one that they, they do so many one. tricks to it, sugar and everything else. But the real Tajibet, you have, uh, it's a sitting like church, you know, it's like a flat bench. It's about uh, maybe it's seven people, fun. eight people. They oh, sit yeah. and the other one sits in there and everything, they talk about everything. And then you always find a little buddy that can understand and relate to you. And it was made for a gathering and enjoyment, um, like a really... The happy hour that you call here, but the happy you know, hour is I, a little I, bit different. You know, like, you know, Red Bull, I'm sure a lot of you know Red Bull here, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the, yeah. the tagline for Red Bull, I don't know if you know. Does anybody know the tagline for Red Bull? Uh, I don't you know. fly something, something like, you can fly or something. Yeah, something like Red Bull gives you wing. Wings, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. That is <laughs> actually a lie. Because the only thing that gives you wing, the, the, no, no, I mean, it's not obviously like, like, you know, that's more like they are aspiring to give you the thing, you, like, Edge will give you actually wing. Edge, you fly. Really? Yes. <laughs> I'm yes. just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh but, I will make, but it will actually literally make you feel like you got, you got like something. I remember drinking for the first time Edge, it was in Lalibela. It's very famous for the Edge oh, as well. And mm. When this uh, kind of like localized ancient nightclubs, Ethiopian style nightclubs, oh, uh, <laughs> and right. my God, I have never danced like that. I felt like I was <laughs> it was my wings I was dancing, <laughs> all this and that kind of things. My God, Were you drunk? I didn't know I was that good. No, I didn't get drunk. Oh, I didn't so get drunk. Think, oh. No, no, so it I didn't even happy. have to drink. I didn't need to drink it until I was drunk. I was just enough. And the light edge, like like truth edge, is yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a real experience for alcohol. If you are somebody who drinks alcohol as an alcohol connoisseur, they like you drink edge, you put a you say and you say that's a new category. Like yeah, and also of- and also they limit you the way you gulp down because it's not an open cup. Okay, they don't serve you on open cup. It looks like a, it. A, a, it has a neck, so you kind of sip it. You see what I mean? Some people have it, it, it's a it doesn't run amount. down on you, like it's not like exactly. Or, yeah. uh, it's not open glass, so basically you grab from the neck and you just kind of sip it and you bring it down. It's like literally, like you know, the bottle of uh, like a wine bottle, right? It has that neck to it, that narrow point, so it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't pour out all at once, right? You can pour... No, whenever you, uh, yeah. you go to uh, so, uh, chem- so the, chemistry, you know, when you are in chemistry class, yeah. you use that same, uh, the same bottle yeah, uh, that the, has the flask. Uh, the the flask. flask is like exactly. wide at the bottom and skinny at the top. So it has a neck it. to it. So, right. And then when you actually pour it out, down, it just, it just drops as sip. It doesn't drop as like like water tap <laughs> right and that's why you don't you can drink so many of them because when you start conversating if you ever notice you forget to drink when you when you talk and you are conversating you will take a sip and that sip 
is, is, is you're limited. That's why they stay a long time in Tajweed. You know, whenever you drink Taj, you, you you stand. If you tell me how I know about it, it's because one of my uh, classmates, his parents owned uh, a Tajweed. And, um, you know, for the, he went to Lycée de Romarem. He went to a French school. And at the same time, we made um, a tej in, uh, in our high school based on the recipe uh, uh, of how it's made. And we made it in our uh, chemistry class just to get the, uh, a di- a, different what alcohol. A, what an incredible chemistry class that you had. Uh, I mean, oh I'm God. telling you, we, did, we oh, made, like, we made wine. Sense. We made wow. wine. We made beer. We made uh, araki. It's a French you know, yeah, and we made all kind of uh, different liquors, and it's so funny. I was what? By the way, Kenyans have the best some of at the that time. So yeah. we went. Actually, the whole class went to see how the edge is made in his uh, establishment, and then when we sat down, they were supposed to serve us uh, non-alcohol honey wine. Okay, but my buddy was so tricky, so he. He changed the container with the real thing. So by the time that class was so out of it, <laughs> and then the teacher was looking at us and like, oh, what's going on with this, uh, this guy? Because it looks mm-hmm. like the same, the color is the same, but the content of alcohol is higher. And imagine 16 wow. at that time, you know, you're 16, you know, you take that alcohol, you just out. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're, but we had a blast. The way you yes. sip it also is the same serving. So we had a, a great time, but the teacher kind of noticing we kind of act a little bit different. We're kind of fearless. You know, we're literally <laughs> flying. You know, no we matter. ask him questions. We never asked him in a class. We asked him about how he acts in a class. And sometimes he, we, we don't appreciate the way uh, he explained things. I mean, we were out yeah. there. You know what I mean? We were wide open. And then later on, we found out we drank edge. It was not Buddha's. <laughs> You know, it was the real thing. <laughs> no, I love my, I love my high school. My high school uh, gave me a great length of uh, understanding different things, geography, history, uh, name it. Uh, it's a French school, and at the same time, they give us an updated uh, information that we need. Even our books. You know, if I got the books today or this year, it might not help my younger brother two years down the road. You know, even the one year apart there will be a new edition and they always opened us up on a different uh, updated uh, version of education and this was one of the things that are open when we come to the science classes i wish you know these are being given you know to the rest of africa uh, and uh, and uh, we learn a lot because it's a fun thing okay even though we don't like the way they score us because uh they don't want us, one thing that I realized in, in my, uh, you know, adulthood is that the, our scoring is under 20. It's 20 instead of 100. So whenever uh, they did your transcript, they say, oh, my God, you got, you got 15 out of 20 and you're super number one. Hey, listen, that's how they grade us. So when you want to transfer your transcript and you want to go to an English school, they multiply that by five. So you're a failure. You understand, but the education that we had is very uh, uh, condensed because we don't have multiple choice. Okay, education wise, uh, there's no multiple choice. You just mm-hmm. there's one question, there's one um, uh, math equation, whatever that that may be. You're just gonna have to answer it in writing and vocally, uh, in verbally. You have to express it. So sorry, I just went on my high school thing, but I wish. That that uh, could have been spread when it comes to education. Uh, make it fun, you know. Uh, school should be fun. You want to come back again, you know, for your friends, for your education. Uh, but it, they don't make it easy, you know. They, they we don't have the finance. And one of the topic that I want to uh, add uh, to Israel is when it comes to education, we want to emphasize that the kids learn by having fun. If you are always tricking this, 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 there's a, a, a tension that comes and there's a peer's pressure that you've got to build up within your own classes. So 
talking about the education, uh, Ezra, I think when you come with that education package, I think I can incorporate that with you because yeah, uh, Africa to needs fun. to learn. To Africans yeah. need to learn with fun, be an explorer, understand the subject and fly with it and ask questions. And they ask questions if you're not intimidated. And Africa lacks that. You know, we lack that. The kids are kids. As you grow, even adult, if I show you some visual things and everything else, you can uh, capture. Uh, you, yes, yes. I, I, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Sorry to about that. You, but I, I, I want us, I want when it's easy to, to come in. I saw something uh, as well here. <laughs> Somebody uh, in the comment section saying, <laughs> if you marry seven you. wives, your problem multiply by 7,000. And that's that's coming from Sarah Tezer. That's a lady who even yeah. says this. And uh, the same Mendatezi uh, makes bread. Uh, Mendatezi. <laughs> yeah, before Mendatezi, uh, I, I, uh, I have I have bread to make, so I'm gonna step out and listen to you guys in the background. But I wanna, but I want to hear the answer to the to the Mendatezi's answer. So, like, if you have three wives, does, does that mean you have three thousand problems? Seven thousand or three. 000. No, no, he has three. So oh, yes. he said seven, but he has three. So if he has three. Does he really have three wives? <laughs> three wives now. I can handle it. But if I win a lottery, oh my god, I will have uh, from fifty-five country my favorite tribe, oh my like god. my own African nation. <laughs> 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 yeah, farmer. You are an African farmer, definitely an African farmer. You think in terms hey, of the, a farmer. The is, is, is really talking now, eh? The church is really talking. I swear, now. if I win, what? if I win like five hundred million dollars, I will just move to Africa, and uh, I have a big land. I will build like <laughs> palace. <laughs> And then from uh, any country, I will bring a beautiful, like, uh, uh, Kelly Paul sister yeah. from Masai, from Eritrea one, from Nigeria one, <laughs> from Sudan, from uh, Somalia. Where is South Africa? <laughs> I, I, I want to make my own Don't African nation. What about Bantu wives? What about Bantu wives? <laughs> Yes, no, you told you 54. Uh, you said, uh, 54. 55, 54 wife, that's it. And I will, okay, that uh, one man. Okay, one Nigeria. Day. Wait, Nigeria is going to have a problem, okay? Nigeria is going to have. Are you going to go for Yoruba first? Hausa? <laughs> or Fulani? Uh, no, Ibu? Hausa. Hausa. Oh, Hausa, like Hausa. Come on, only uh, come on. You gotta go for yeah, Europe. That, 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 that's his, his choice. That you know, you said it. That's his choice. <laughs> I think Tanzania and Kenya. I can pick one. Both has uh, they have Maasai. That's it. So if I if I pick Maasai, they have both. I don't need to pick another one. <laughs> okay. What about Shona? What about Shona? You got Shona? You gonna get Shona? I to be honest, I don't know how it is look. I need Zimbabwe. from South Africa Zulu. Zimbabwe. You don't want it closer. You don't want it closer. Those are women. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mundatezi has to answer this. Mundatezi, if you got 500 oh. million, would you increase? <laughs> from, from Gambia, D. Amara. By the way, in Gambia is a tribe called D. Amara. Only D, but uh, Amara, like, uh, I mean, they, um, they don't have any relationship with Amara tribe, but the same name. In Gambia, is a tribe called D. Amara. Wow. I'm surprised how many people have uh, connected. You even to... made his research, yeah? I don't even know about Dear Mara. So I think he, this guy has been uh, spending time researching this topic. I think he's looking for the 500 million. It's not just looking for the 500 million. It's not just that. Dear Mara. There's some work done to this. He did all the uh, uh, background checks. Yeah. You know? All of it. All of it. All of it. Details. <laughs> Sahara oh, Africa, some even they dance like me. Some uh, even Sudan, they dance like me. Some tribe, I don't know the name. Oh, like what about Torex? <laughs> what about Torex? I don't hear the Torex. I, I got uh, some Torex. To be honest, the old tribe you are uh, calling, I, I can't remember. But when I win the lottery, I will find out. Uh, 
where I go. So, <laughs> I'm mentioning this name for you, by the way. I'm mentioning this name for you. You got to uh, money. Because so, so that you understand Africa even at much deeper level, much deeper than the countries. So when you mention, I know, when I, I mention Tuareg, Tuareg yes. is a Sahel. Like you, you're covering from Chad all the way to Senegal. Northern, yeah. like the central oh, okay. Sahara. Desert. And when you look at Bantu, you're looking at from Congo all the way to Cape, uh, the, uh, you know, Cape, Cape Town and the Zululand, Durban, and then yeah. up north. And then, so you have, so it's, it's good to know Africa Ezra. like that. Ezra, now yeah. you're expanding him. You're expanding him. No, so that he doesn't so limit himself to him. No, <laughs> so that he, he has 500 million. Why should he be limited to 54 countries? <laughs> when he can marry... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh <laughs> when he actually marry more than one from South Africa. You know, you like, you know, you know, avoid the closer. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> go for that, Zulu. Least, and then just least, go a little uh... north, go for Shona. And, uh, and then oh, go a little no. bit west and then... <laughs> I don't want, I don't want to pick from one country more than one tribe because that will be more than 55 days one time around. So, you know? <laughs> oh, you have three. You have 365 days. Yes. <laughs> you know, days. I'll tell you, you can one thing. <laughs> it is so funny. <laughs> I saw a comment, right? He said, oh he's, he's creating a Pan African <laughs> uh, empire. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Ghost, ghost, yeah. Hey, ghost is in the wild, eh? Why, ghost? He's doing ghost. ghost. <laughs> you missed a ghost. Oh my lord! I'm like when I read that, I was like, "Yep." You guys, I'm supposed to be making bread. I'm s- sitting here listening <laughs> to. Let's hear Monda uh, Tezi before you leave. You wanted to hear Monda Tezi. Oh yeah, Monda Tezi. Ah, uh, hey guys. All right. Hey. Thank you guys. Have a good night. I'm uh, happy to have this time. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come back for tonight. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold, hold on. on. We gotta listen to, uh, to Monda Tezi. Yeah. Okay. And then. It... <laughs> Hello. Are you Hello, you guys can hear me? Yes, yes sir. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm not sleeping. Actually, I'm walking right now. It's 4 okay. a.m. So my, 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 as Ezra said, my vampire yeah. walks. Are you looking for the fourth wife? Are you looking for the fourth wife? No, 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 man. I don't, I don't have uh, three wives. It's my, my brother Ezra, Pe- Pastor Ezra. <laughs> I don't have any three wives. I don't think, I don't think uh, in this, in this time, those are problems, my brother. Somebody just said here, yeah, fifty-four thousand problems. Or sound. <laughs> <It's> true, <bro. laughs> so I'm really, actually, just enjoying the conversation from the background. I don't really need to, you know. I, I like that people are speaking. I don't really need to speak that much. Just you guys have fun. I'm just yeah. listening. No? So I'm gonna step uh, out, but but I'm gonna step out. But Mondas is like you know you have had some serious topic that you wanted to cover. You wanted to tell us that the topics in your mind you wanted to cover. Feel free. Now I'm gonna step out and leave the room, and I'm gonna leave as much space as possible. Not occupy too much space. So uh, I'm like, and then you can just occupy that space, please. Okay, before you leave Israel, you know, I went to Israel, right? Uh, and uh, stayed there for about a month. And I was, I visited everywhere. And I, and I said, uh, you know what? You know, and they they joke around when it comes to certain things. So I told them, I just want to be like King Solomon. Everybody looked at me, King Solomon? You're talking about Solomon and Shiva? I said, yeah. They, they said, what impressed you about him? You know, what, what is uh, this thing? I said, you know what? He had 1,000 wives. Imagine. So I said, I want to be like him, right? <laughs> Everybody looked at it on the female type, of, the female <laughs> side and stuff like that. I said, no. It's how to handle a woman a thousand times <laughs> for me. <laughs> so I said, you got 1,000 wives and you can handle and run a whole country? That man is a wise man, and that's why they call I him the wise Solomon. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I love trouble. 
And uh, that's what I that's what I said about the about the yes. Uh, believe me, I did travel very very as far as Korea, as far as India, I, I did travel uh, pretty much. And in fa- in fact, wow. you know, uh, guys, I get to know people. Let me bounce out, let, Vicky. Before you go, let me bounce out. And I love you guys. You guys keep holding the Africa, the One Africa government, the people to people relationship, the connection you make, the 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 silly, the serious, and everything in between. It's what brings us together. So, like you know, Ezra, the laughter and the joy. Ezra, Ezra, yeah. Before you go, why do you always go make bread? <laughs> I came up with this one time, and yeah. I said it, and then, and that's all uh, Ezra says. Every time I have to go, I have to, I have to. I tell him like every time I have to go to work, I tell him. I have okay. To go make- okay. 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 <laughs> because I actually thought you actually going to make actual bread. I think you're, oh, I wow. I is he a baker or something? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you're right. You're right all, my baking is, all my actual baking happens in the One Africa platform. <laughs> oh, my wow. sister. Where you from, my sister? Where are you from? I'm sad, South African. South Africa. Yeah. yeah, but I'm not in the country. I'm South African outside oh, but oh. Africa. Oh, so you have a song for her, by the way. Uh, uh, I've, I've I, do you have a song for our sister? If I was sure uh, that I win the lottery, I was just pick her here. I don't want to fight. Oh my god! No, no, no. It's not, hey, you. hey, African woman, you can't just walk in. Huh? You, you, you can't just get that easy right easy way you know you got i know you got to knock, I know. Of, many, you got to knock many doors huh? no it's going to send a lot of smugglers you got to send a lot of smugglers yeah he's going to yeah. send a lot of them <laughs> because this is like uh, pan africanism purpose so she will uh, collaborate you know this is a project you know this is a project <laughs> Do you guys see uh, what what Linton Grant is that what he said? <laughs> he... Guys, guys, I'm gonna go broke and I'm not paying my rent. Yeah, All right, guys. Good, I have to have a good night. I have to. Go I'm gonna right. listen to you guys. Monday, Tuesday, I'm I'm expecting to hear from Bye-bye. you. The only I'm expecting to hear Bye. from you guys. Biggie, keep on uh, the conversation. The okay, so l- l- love you guys. Keep it up and keep the uh, keep the joy spreading. Okay. I love, I love you. you, my brother. You know that. Keep well, you know, Okay. Yeah, make, make good bread. bread. <laughs> okay, yeah, it she. comes in dollars, eh? No girls, just dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah dollars as well, eh? And not where, where, where are you, Ezra? And I'm in San Francisco, California. Oh, America. Oh, okay. 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 I thought you were bounce, in bounce. Sweden or somewhere. No, 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 no. Sweden is probably the last place I want to be. But <laughs> <laughs> too cold for me. Too cold. Yeah. Too cold, cold and too hot. Yeah, time. you run away from the east to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. You are in the yeah. east. You are in the DMV. Yep. I'm in DMV, yeah. But, you know, California is West Coast. I've always loved it. So it's always my favorite area. Mountains, oh, cool it. weather. San Francisco is oh. like at this weather, so so I like yeah, I like really, cool uh, weather. Really nice. Cool yeah. weather is my favorite thing. At this hour, weather is my favorite weather in the world. So you know uh, what they say about California is that you, you go to uh, swimming at the beach in the morning, and at night you can go skiing. I don't know if that's like you can go to skiing, but the swimming the Pacific is too cold to swim in. No, no, Even what I'm saying. You know, you can be at the beach in the morning, and then at night you can go skiing. Yes, that's how the mountains are very how nearby. Yeah. The yeah, mount, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a perfect place for us. Yeah. So anything in between, you can do anything you want. The weather is given. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I understand. I, I was in day, the West Coast. I want to be able to one day, like you know, have my breakfast in Addis, and my dinner in, in Durban, South Africa, and and. Uh, I wake up in Lagos, Nigeria. So that's one day. That's my dream. There you go. That's more beautiful. Go, go, go make that bread then. Go make that bread. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's right. So you can make that dream happen. 
to do that. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, guys. Absolutely. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye, the brain. Bye. Thank you, guys. Uh, oh, the brain. Oh, um, Wanda Tezzi. Yeah, the conversation has ended like that. I don't know. The guys just disappeared on me. Like they just. Disappeared <laughs> <on me. laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like the brain just called them. Say, guys, I've got ways to make money. Let's go. I've got a WhatsApp group. Come and show the brain, me. Yeah. <laughs> oh God! The, the brain. Time. The brain has taken them to another place. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna talk money, Bitcoin, crypto, you know, forex, <laughs> and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, uh, uh, <laughs> but I think Biggie might have received a call when whenever he disconnects. I know he probably got, received a call or something. Hey, Biggie, <laughs> we, we, no, we I, you, you what happened was, yeah, I went to the comment and then I just went back, it just dropped literally. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm gonna hang out with you today. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, got Monk yeah. Dizzy. Uh, anybody that uh, that is on the comment section again now, uh, you know, is trying to uh, make sure that everybody subscribe, like as usual. Uh, and it's good to have all my family back. It, it's been a while, and um, uh, keep up the good job. We need to support more on uh, Mika Mission, and uh, I really, really appreciate everybody that joined. And I joined late. Uh, my apology, you know, a few things that happened because uh, I was supposed to start up with uh, Isra today. today. And uh, Mondatezi was there. Isra was there. I was so happy. That gave me a little bit more time to spend with my friend. And uh, it's another friend that needs prayer. And um, I always keep him on a prayer. Uh, his name is, is Asafa. And he had a stroke. And he's on the recovery. And uh, that's one of my brothers. Mm. So, and, and like, again, uh, to, uh, Biggie, uh, I mm -hmm. saw uh, Marie Antoinette uh, is here laughing with us and stuff. So, it's mm. also in, 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 uh, regardless of the challenges she's facing, uh, she mm -hmm. still uh, manages to laugh and you know and be part of this uh, conversations and stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Marie Antoinette is always my prayer. Uh, Mika always said it. And uh, Ezra, you said it. So we got to pray for our uh, uh, for our uh, brothers and sisters that are sick, and uh, help help them to go through this time with healing. And I know you'll be healed. I know it is forgiving love, uh, Xavier. So uh, I pray for you I always, uh, Maria Antoinette. You know we love you. You know really uh, you are uh, the person that uh, always here. And, uh, you know, whatever the, the, the target that we have in order to better our African brothers and sisters, you're participating and you are there. And we really appreciate that. Hmm. Well, um, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, keep uh, Marie Antoinette in your prayers. And uh, Biggie has a friend as well. Um, let's also pray for, for, for him. Asafa. Yeah, Asafa. Asafa. We call, Asafa. We, yeah, your nickname is uh, Kaku. Oh, okay. So everybody knows Kaku. Wow. Oh. He's a, yeah, well, uh, he's we'll a person that praying. really, really contributed to uh, people's life. Uh, when he was well, he visited the sick. Uh, he visit. He was there on the wedding, on the baptism, and very generous, very uh, uh, helpful. And um, he got stricken by this uh, uh, thing, and he's getting better, which I'm really uh, appreciative of Xavier that is really watching out uh, over him. And so uh, that's a, a good friend. Uh, uh, no, not a good friend. Let's put it that way. He's my brother. He's, actually, he was my younger brother's friend too, and uh, he means a lot for me. He's my, he's really my brother. When I lost my brother, he was my brother. He always been there for me during my hard time, my hardship, and uh, I really appreciate him. So, people, what I give you is I appreciate everybody that's been there for you, and that's how we're gonna create love. That's how we're gonna create peace. 
among each other. If we are energized among ourselves with love, believe me, nothing is impossible. Because Xavier is trying to teach us that. Just simple. Love each other. Peace. We don't want to get involved on different things. Just concentrate on your love and peace. What are you going to bring into Africa? Is love and peace. Over and over. Thank you very much. Not- uh, <clears throat> and uh, I, I just want to uh, also, um, uh, as you are praying for people, as you talk about the prayers and stuff, uh, also, like uh, uh, to also include uh, uh, Dr. Tzedeke, um, I just got a message that uh, we also should just uh, also give uh, put him in our prayers. Um, mm-hmm. So I uh, think he's having some leg problems. So mm-hmm. please, uh, pray for Dr. Tzedeke as well. And um, yeah, I mean, Dr. Tzedeke, Marie Antoinette, uh, um, Kaku, is it, what's the name of your Kaku. friend again? Yeah, Kaku. 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 And yep. uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else, guys? Um, you must just tell us, guys, if, if you, you know somebody who needs uh, prayers, that we can, uh, when we're going to close tonight, we'll pray for all these people. Marie Antoinette, uh, Kaku, uh, Dr. Tedeke, and whoever you feel that you, you want us to pray for, or yourself, maybe you're going for an interview, Maybe you are doing a business and you love uh, us to pray with you in your business or you've got a proposal and um, you will need funding. And you, yeah, we'll pray for you that uh, something uh, God can do for you. And um, yeah, but if there's anything, please, guys, um, if you're not feeling well, you're here, but with us, tell us sometimes. Just come and say, guys, please uh, pray for this, uh, my mom or something like that. And let's pray together. Let's learn to be uh, a, a, a family that loves one another, a family that takes care of each other as well, uh, spiritually and even physically, our presence being together as well and encouraging each other and learning from each other. So, yeah. And uh, I saw Brooke uh, uh, earlier. Uh, Brooke, please join us again. Uh, African Agents of Change, please uh, 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 join the stream again because I know earlier. You had to leave because you were talking all over the place. And I saw that you said you love, you you enjoying the, the show, the freestyle. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, 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 um, please, please join us again, uh, 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 Brooke. And um, it will be really a pleasure and it will be nice hearing from you because uh, I know you always have uh, 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 stuff that you, you can learn from you. Uh, okay, let's do this. Uh, uh, um, Wanda Tezi, you know, you never told us some, something about marriage in, in your country. The marriage uh, in your country. Do you guys pay a uh, dowry there or you just take and marry? <laughs> uh, let me tell you something about... Let me tell you something about this dowry thing, man. You know, you know uh, our African... Uh, sisters here they're always you know oh progressive progressive when it comes to dowry they don't want to compromise that is the mm-hmm. one cal- let me tell you something that is the mm-hmm. one culture our sisters hold on that he, mm-hmm. I, I, you know you know I, when you tell a woman maybe i know maybe outside uh, kenya maybe it's not the same but i can tell you tell a woman in kenya that you're not going to pay dowry is he will look at you like you have offended her you know, even though, even though, <laughs> even though, even though, the what, even though, like, you know, if you look at it, maybe the world of today, as in fact, I'm so happy our sister, the only, is here because she was speaking like Africa, we have progressed beyond the, 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 the practices of the past. So, You know, it's 4 a.m. in Kenya, and, and I'm surprised that there are just cars all over the place. Huh? This is the time I, I like to walk, but I was talking about it, when, mm. when our sister here, she was saying that Africa is progressive, that we do not, we do no longer pay, our, we do no longer practice the past. But how come women like this dowry thing, even though it's practically you're buying a wife? Or what do you guys think? <laughs> 
I think well, they, they, know, they, choose, they choose what they want, eh? What what they yeah. think is important to them, they'll choose. But the ones that they think is not important, they just you know put them aside. Just put them aside. Yeah, the the dowry, you know, you have to understand uh, in the uh, in the culture is that when she gets married and go away from the house, okay, the main thing is that the the family is telling them that she's financially uh, uh, good. You know, she's she's coming in. She's not coming in empty hand. She got finance. Even though her brothers can own lands and everything else, they don't want the other family to come back and claim the land. Okay. The dowry was a very uh, uh, specific when it was given is that we gave you our daughter and as well with money. Okay. So don't look and try to trace back and come in to share the heritage of the family she came from. And she's now part of your family. So the dory has a, a, a very deep meaning uh, when, it, when, when it was at that time. And it still is being practiced as of a sign we still maintain culture. You know what I mean? Because uh, now, we, like you said, you know, we're progressive. But the definition of dory, we have to understand, is like they sending their daughter with money. She didn't come to your house broke, literally. Okay. So that was like a down payment to secure her in the financial aspect of it, that she's going to be depending also on her husband because kids are going to come and everything else. But at the same time, she didn't come to him empty hand. Even if it is a dollar worth, it doesn't matter. She came with something. So that was the story of Dory uh, in, in the past, just to make sure that she didn't come to your house empty hand. So that's why you will, you will see a Kenyan girl, even though it's in the culture, it's like, oh, wait a minute, you know? Uh, the dory I'm bringing and the husband is looking at her and saying, you know, it didn't come with the money, you know what I mean? So it kind of, it, it kind of, I don't know uh, per se where I come from, <laughs> boy or girl owns or they're part of that land they're living, whether she's married or not, she still can come back and claim her land. That nobody will stop her because they're equally treated. Men and, and women are equally treated in uh, in that society when it comes to inheritance and stuff like that. So Dory was a very important uh, message, clear message to the to the husband that uh, they given that Dory, making sure that she does, she's not coming from a being poor. It was some kind of a significance in the culture. Mandatezi. Uh, yeah. Oh. Did I answer? Well, okay. Yeah, yeah you, you, want, you, you know. I think the only was, was struggling with network, maybe because you had a question more specific to her as a lady. Can you repeat that, that question for her? Oh. It's a simple question. Why do women hold on to their, this culture of dowry? Uh, the only do you wanna do you wanna answer that? You're you're the only lady here. Why are ladies holding on to the dowry uh, uh, culture? The other stuff maybe they they, they don't care about it. But when it comes to dowry, they strictly say they want it. <laughs> oh, sorry, can you repeat that? My phone has been playing up, sorry. Is it Wi-Fi? It's been playing up. Can you repeat that, please? I'm going to tell you. Oh, okay, let me. Why are our ladies in Africa holding on to this culture, specifically dowry? And, you know, other mm -hmm. cultures, they're like, oh, no, 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 we don't do those things. But dowry, dowry, that that culture has been held on. And my brother Biggie, you've spoken some some interesting facts. But uh, if we if if we are to be honest with ourselves, you know, if we are to be really honest, 
the origin now like you are, if you just break it down I, I understand you can talk about culture you can talk about uh, family but when you bring money and you get a wife you know that's a, it sounds a lot of you know we can quote it with some very beautiful words about culture about uh, bonding and stuff but you've brought money and you've gotten a wife like if you just break it down to this basic equation there is nothing wrong i personally I, I i will pay that because but and i've spoken this with older people and when we argued they came to admit that hey yeah it's practically buying a wife but why do women hold on to this culture i to be honest i don't think women are holding on to the culture i actually think it's it's um the elders i don't think really women care that much i think it's the family to be honest so i don't see to be honest i i don't know uh I don't know what's the purpose of it but uh, maybe maybe I think maybe it's because um it hmm what was what was it for I don't know why they created the dowry part but um I think it's to thank the the family is is to thank the family or something like that so I don't know in some cultures like maybe the Shona or or like in Zimbabwe they only have a very specific amount so it's a fixed amount it's never like a fluctuation thing amount where families can say oh no uh, you know let me let's calculate that to raise this child for how many years and or oh, I took to the best school and oh my gosh they, they even got um a degree in this and that and that so but in shona it's it's a very like a very small amount very small maybe like a uh, is it 200 rand 200 200 and something rand or is or maybe even lower uh they actually uh, get that one that amount that's more like a fixed amount so i found that one a bit more uh, better and like the other ones where now it's more like business you know it's like oh time to make money and you know so i find that one is is much better so it gets more guys in shona tradition they able to get married easily now so it makes it easier because then obviously uh it's 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 difficult for a lot of guys now it's not easy you know so financially so i find that okay if you want like uh, uh you want to get married then you don't want to get into those like uh, money making schemes you know just because you want to get a girl it's best maybe you go and marry a shona woman in zimbabwe okay okay mnatezi okay yeah 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 in fact you you have raised a very interesting interesting uh, point of perspective when you talked about the shona now yes. but you have acknowledged you have acknowledged that when they start talking about oh look she's educated she's uh, she's maybe very polite mild mannered or something like that they are trying well, when i talk about that you're talking about a, a woman like she's proper yeah i mean right? yeah. In, yeah in that sense it's very bad but before i think when it was created it wasn't because of that it was more of like because we used to bring gifts and you know in those days where uh, ancestors used to be, like bring gifts to the other family it was more like a gift this type of thing like to thank them for their daughter and because obviously the, the the girl was actually leaving their home joining the guy's family so it was more of like a thank you for for your daughter something like that because obviously they no actually uh, wait a minute a dowry is a payment of property or money paid by the bride family to the groom no mhm no no not the wife in, in no 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 it's actually i don't know maybe in ethiopia it's like that but not not in in india yes it's mostly the girls who who paid but not in other african cu- cultures it's actually the the men who actually pay to the girls family Uh, for marriage the, purposes uh, on the, on the men uh, family their responsibility is to contribute for the wedding oh uh, no, no no not not in uh in the other side no it's, it's not like that because i know like even the western culture is 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 similar like that way the girls are more responsible to, like to put together the wedding and all that kind of stuff but then um in other cultures in africa uh dowry 
for me, the way I heard about it, where you know, when when everybody talking about it, it's more like a thank you type of thing, like a, a, a token of appreciation for their their daughter. Since the daughter is leaving the house and joining the other family, the guy's family, so they found that okay, it was more of a gift. And before, it wasn't even m- monetary thing. It would, used to be like uh, kettles and or maybe goats or something like that. It was never like you have to give money. Yeah, kettle was farm. money back in the day. Yeah, kettle oh. was money back in the day. Oh yes, yes. So some some used to be like a farm. It, it won't be like a livestock. It could be like a uh, a whole lot of if you are actually growing veggies and stuff like that. So it was like that, but it was never always. It, it wasn't. It wasn't like now where it's like uh, it's like ridiculous amounts and and all that kind of stuff. So. I, I yeah, and, and because uh, there, there's a part where they uh, uh, actually the door uh, when it comes from the men uh, side is just to make sure you know the uh, it's paid to rat- ratify the pretty much uh, the the marriage from uh, a, a lot of other uh, continent. But again, uh, when it comes to Ethiopia, it's just something that they just want to make sure she's uh, paying, she's well off. It's like a wealth transfer. Or whatever the how much you're gonna give to the groom uh, uh, as payment, so she doesn't come back and claim uh, on the other side, you know, coming back and say, hey, you know, that's my inheritance. Uh, so that's one thing of a form of payment. Uh, so really, and, and again, in, it's in like general, I said, you know, so it's, it's more similar. The Indians is the same. Whereas I actually thought the whole African um, uh, African cultures they actually follow where the guys. The groom is family is the one that comes and 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 pay something like this or a gift. Let me say, uh, I never thought it was the other way around. Um, mm-hmm. But it makes sense if you say they'll give it to the groom to keep it to for to help you know in the family if they want to buy a house or something like that. It, it's, mm-hmm. it's it's better because in our culture normally mm-hmm. they don't even give the money to us, so it goes to the parents, it goes to the uncles and parents. You know, so it's not like. That amount they quoted is coming to their daughter, or in you know, or their son, or in, in their daughter. It's just only going to be going to the parents or the, and the uncles. So, uh, guys, can I just want to uh, uh, respond to somebody uh, here on the comment section? Uh, J J Alice, uh, we've shared the link uh, so many times. Uh, I don't know if you are reading or or you 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 keep on logging out. I'm gonna share the link again. Click on the, the link and you can join the conversation because you've been asking for the link. I've been sharing we've been sharing the link and you've not been joining. So I'm gonna yeah, share the just link. Click it. Uh and then uh yeah. I think uh, even African uh, Afrimara was has been trying to explain to you how it works. Here's the link. This is the link that you click for for you to join us the site. But you can continue, guys. There you go. Well, yeah, yeah. That's I, I think that that's how it, it's meant to be. Like so, it, I think it's right now. It has become a business uh, <laughs> agreement now. I don't know. It's just terrible now. The some people they really demand. Some family they demand like some ridiculous amount. And oh, we educated her. Oh, we paid how much for school and all that kind of stuff. I actually think maybe even South Africa is even better. I think Nigeria is even worse. Um, they have like a whole list. You, the, the whole family, the family will give like a whole list. It's not only money. They, they was, oh my gosh, it's ridiculous now. So I don't know. Some, some of them are not complaining. To be honest, I've never had. Uh, uh, well, I probably did, but I know most Ni- these Nigerian guys. They don't really complain. I think maybe they so used to it. But most of the people are here complaining about it. Uh, South African, South African guys. They're like. Why are we paying? What are we paying for? What are we paying for? So, so they're very, you know, vehemently against it. So. But they pay eventually. They still pay, <laughs> yes, of course. But uh, they, they're they not even interested anymore. In, in I think most of them are not even interested in marriage anymore. I think even some women are also the same. I don't know. I don't know if it comes with uh, modernization where mentality women, they're like, oh, I'm a feminist that I can look after myself, all that kind of stuff. So they tend to not even want to get married nowadays. They, they're not interested. I don't know. 
it's a little bit society is changing so but for you uh, the only um uh, i don't know if you're married or not but um will you want uh, somebody to um uh, you know oh, oh i'm married yeah I, my, everything of mine is coming out okay yes, i'm married yeah so, <laughs> no no uh, actually you well, know if you are not married like, if you are not married <laughs> Uh, how do you take this uh, when you got married? Now you're married. Can you yes. tell us, you know, if there was Dory involved or anything? Of course, it there was. Uh, for me, there was. Um, uh, it, um, yeah, there was. <laughs> there was. <laughs> Have we demanded it or oh it was like set like up? <laughs> no, no, it was a set up by the family. Yes, yes. Uh, it, it's it's um it's like traditional like Tswana because I'm Tswana, so it's like right. you know, like a it's a tradition where uncles and you know and and they talk about it. My mom will call the uncles and 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 my dad and all of them. Then they all meet up and uh, and right. they just discuss all this stuff. And well, I didn't. I never thought of it that time, to be honest. I, I was just like, oh, that's how it's it's done, you know? So right. I've never thought like, oh, is it right or does it make sense or anything like that? And to, and mind you, I already, by that time, I already lived in England already. So right. I've been here, I lived here, then went back home. And so he, I've already lived in the West. And so it was in... So this is where Monatezi is asking... Uh, if he didn't get you any dowry at that time, would he have been upset at your husband? If because it, it was culture? Of course. Yes. <laughs> That's what was the thing he asked him. <laughs> yes, because then cause, cause it, it wasn't going to happen. The marriage wasn't going to happen. So. Wow. You heard it now. You heard it. Like, for, mm. for, I think uh, 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 another thing is. Um, you can't choose for yourself. Even if you say, I don't want it, but your family still has... Exactly, exactly. So I think so, a lot of us, even if we say, well, I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to pay a dowry, but the lady that you're marrying, uh, her family might want it. So Yeah, it's not up to the girl, isn't it? So it's not up to the girl. Right. Really. It's just the, the whole idea of if the guy doesn't do it, basically you're not married. You get what I mean? So if you want to get married, this is the process. So you in your own house, when you have girls, you can decide, you know, between you and the guy, you can say, okay, no, between us, we're not accepting any, any bride price for our children. You can decide. But but for me, coming from a family that believes in it, so it's, it wasn't going to be something of, um, no, it's not happening because it's up to them. But when I become right. a parent, I can say uh, no for my kids. I can say no, you know? Mm. So, yeah, yeah, well, but I don't think. If, but, I mean, uh, as a parent, if your daughter uh, gonna go through the process of the way you got married, uh, what would you do? Would you ask for dowry for your daughter? Um, for me, I, to be honest, I think this part is where. The person who paid dowry is the one who would decide, isn't it? So for me, who who paid dowry for me is the one who's going to decide. Okay, we want this. For me, I really, I'm not, I, I'm not really uh, bothered on on that, to be honest. Uh, but then I think my husband will probably, who he already said yes already. Yes, they will pay dowry. So he's actually uh, for <laughs> <laughs> You, you, so that. You, are so <laughs> you are my daughter. You gotta you gotta pay up, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yes. yes. <laughs> it, to be honest, I, I, I think it's more of a um it feels like oh let me see if he could go the he, he could go up, you know, uh, feather smile, thinking, okay, is this guy gonna be like, Oh no, I don't want to I, I think it's more like a test for the guy. It's more like yeah. can you you know, can you show that you can actually look after it? Show, show, you know, like that. Right. So it's my, I don't know. I think it's like that. For me, every day, I don't think anything about it. I just think, oh, no, it doesn't matter, to be honest. But but if he said it, like, no, they will pay. So I'm like, okay. That's right. No. So <laughs> it Munda Tessi, you see, it's not even me, Munda Tessi. It's actually the guy. So you have to. No, no, no. <laughs> Wait, let me ask. No, Ezra, put that last comment. Uh, that last comment before yeah. that. Which one was it again? 
the something about this one, the Tenzin. Tenzin. Mm. Remember, Biggie Tenzin is 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 our moderator for translations, eh? Absolutely, yeah, and yeah. I, I, I want Tenzin to come on the show. Come on, Tenzin. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you got great comments. I mean, you got great things that you know maybe you might share with us today is Friday night. You know. A party all night. So if you can join us, I'll really appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me, let me, you see that comment? This is where I was heading. And this is on the desk, the only. It, even if your husband doesn't want dowry, will your daughter want dowry? Yeah, she no, answered it. The daughter can decide. This, the daughter can decide. I mean, if it's the parents who decide, it's, I mean, for yeah. me, I wouldn't say, I would, if my parents says no, we don't believe in. I can't go to my parents and say, "Oh, you have to accept it. You have to accept it." No, I can't. I can't say that because it's the elders uh, who decide. It's, it's the eldest thing. You can't get involved uh, as, as a girl. You not get involved in this whole thing. Even the guy doesn't really get involved. It's actually the the guy's family, the parents who are actually getting involved in the whole thing because they're not even gonna discuss this with the guy. They're gonna discuss this with the family of the the groom, isn't it? No, so. No, huh? my point, I'm not saying that she's going to demand dowry, but oh. I, the point, my point is, as Tanzano has, has put it there, do women value themselves according to the dowry they were paid? Do they have, do they see, mm, that, that, that my husband paid uh, uh, cows for me? Yeah, I think, you know what, uh, I think you... Yeah, I think some of them are like that. Yes, some, and I, I think it's not even the the woman who's actually who says that. It's the family amongst the the family, the mothers. They're like, oh, you know how much they pay for my daughter. Oh, you know, like that. It's more like flexing, you know. But then, yes, you're right. There's that type of uh, thing going on where they all flex on for each other. Oh, they paid this much for me. Or maybe the girl can actually be, say stuff like that as well. Say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the guy paid this much and, and she feels very special that, oh, the guy paid that much. But, yes, I think there is that mentality. I mean, I haven't been at home for so long. So, uh, and when you talk about this type of stuff, yes, in those days, in that time when I was at home, when people get married or when I got married, when they want to know, oh, did you, did, did, he, did he pay a lot? Did he pay a lot? So it's kind of like, why does it have to be a discussion, a topic? Like, oh, how much the guy paid? Yeah, but there is that type of um, uh, topics going on around. It's mostly amongst the women. I don't know the guys because I don't know what my, my dad's discussing with other men. So, uh, but the women... I could, you know, I could see when they're with my mom, this is the whole topic. Oh, how much they pay you and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes it's actually a, a secret amongst, you know, in the family. They don't actually even say anything to the other family. But in those days where you bring a livestock, normally people will know how much, how, how many cows were given because you could actually count them. They won't keep them in the house. But then with money, sometimes people don't say. they like, oh, no, we prefer not to say. Mm. Yeah, that was actually my point. That is this is why is this why women always are are holding on to this culture? Is it because they value themselves through the, mm. is it is it a way of saying, look at me, I'm valuable? Yeah, but then you can you I, I think some women uh some some women some women might be like that but i think they took they got it as well from uh from the women the older women when they talk like the mothers and the neighbors when they talk they get that from that from there so i don't think really they would have bothered the most important thing is they, the women they just want to be if they're interested in sitting down and, and being married isn't it so then actually talking about this how much they paid and all that kind of stuff but since women they all sit around and, and talk and gossip and all that kind of stuff i guess this type of topics comes you know is, is, is a big deal so so in the uh one one of the things that uh in my opinion okay uh i think this uh dory business was uh pretty much the boy don't know the girl, probably saw her, and he's interested to get married with her, and they're asking directly to the family. But if they they are known each other and they been they've been grown together, I think the uh, the dory uh, part of it it becomes like a culture. I don't think it becomes a very 
a sticky uh, condition because everybody knows what they can afford. They're not going to ask you to uh, give them a, a diamond uh, full of house. You know, they're always uh, balanced out on the uh, on the economy and how you live, where yeah. you come from, your background. Mm -hmm. So I think we're confusing it with the uh, with the modern uh, wedding. Yes. Uh, and then the tradition uh, keeps carry on. So if you notice in, in in the past there was no diamond ring really. You know, uh, uh, when you get engaged, you engaged on Saturday, you get married on Sunday. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like yes. a whole weekend uh, yes. event. So I think when it comes, it's just the culture to maintain. You know, we always had the dory and everything. So my mother was married. Yeah, she had the dory and the other one. And it's something that goes. But the minute that you mix it with the, uh, with the Western mentality, then the thing change. You know, it becomes yeah. uh, a different yeah. business. And yeah. again, you know, uh, if you know your husband before your marriage and now, you know, in nowadays society, you know, you already know each other. And then you're probably going to say, even to the modern, modern, uh, society in Ethiopia, okay, if uh, uh, the girl has parents and she'll say, okay, you know, he, he probably gave an engagement ring or whatever because he's mixing with the Western world because the engagement and the wedding is the same ring. It's not a diamond ring. It's a circle ring. We got fancy, you know, we add a diamond and everything else to it. But the original one is just a, a ring, a simple ring. And it happens on the day of your wedding. There's no, uh, now your, my fiancé stay around and stuff like that. No, you're getting it like on Saturday. Sun Sunday is becomes your, uh, your big wedding day. So it's, uh, now I think it's a mix-up of um, maintaining the culture. Maybe it doesn't have that much of a finance if you know each other. Or if you're going to go and uh, ask for a bride, this modern society the girl in Ethiopia will say oh make sure you send the elders for my hand even though he's a boyfriend fiance or whatever that they define to go forward with the marriage she will ask you know uh, did he prepare the elders so they can go and ask uh, you know for my hand you know and she will ask even now in a modern society she will ask you know if you send the elders to send the elders before the, the wedding because it's part of the culture. But it's nothing to say, oh, okay, you got to pay this much. Uh, it, it's just they will make a form of dowry or whatever that he's going to come up with or, or whatever she can come up with. And it, it get normalized. I think we're mixing the old culture with the new modern modernization and still within the modern era that we still want to maintain the culture. Yeah. It's one of those lines. Yeah, I think I think we need to choose. To be honest, I think there has to be a choice because I don't think now it should really apply. Where, where, because at that time things were different, and uh, the all this when they, it was introduced is because the girls they really they didn't even know this guy, the, the people they were actually going to get married to. They've never been with them and all that kind of stuff. It was people who knew each other was family first and all that kind of stuff so i think now even now if you see the way the, the weddings now they're all massive and, and 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 elaborate and you change to how many attires and all that kind of stuff so it's different from how it was and we still want to bring certain parts of that of the money part or, or, the, or, the, or, or the the what is it the monetary part of it be it livestock or whatever we want to bring that part but we don't want to bring the other part where you don't have to know the guy you actually even if you you like each other from a distance and your family they agree that okay you like that guy you'll we, we'll get married but at least you haven't really got to know each other that much you get what i mean so the family are the right. ones getting to, but whereas now we want everything we want the modern part we want also the 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 good part of the old of the tradition but we don't want the right. part that doesn't been like oh no i don't want to i don't want the guy i don't know and you know so <laughs> which whereas those things they were all they were all coming together they were it was part and parcel of each other but now we kind of like pick pick and choose and okay which one and get rid of and take this one and bring it here it doesn't apply now in the modern world to be honest it doesn't apply right 
but he's still gonna have to do the uh, gift and showering, like you said, in, on even on the comment. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. The, it, it, that's African culture. There has to be gifts. There will have to right. be gifts. That, that, this, right. this is the African culture. But then I, I don't think the way it's done now, it is, it is, it is actually right. It is, it is not right. right. Whereas now it's just business to be in. This is the serious business going on in. And oh, oh, see me, see me. I'm, I've actually got this much. And oh, look at me. Oh, that that girl. Oh, can you believe next door girl was getting got married what, with little change. And and you know you got married with you know it, it, it that's not important those type of stuff. Whereas before yes yes they would bring cows and they would know oh this girl married from a rich family look the family brought how many cows is they would still talk about stuff like that so but then it is the girl they didn't even know the guy and okay it, it applies but now where you find like okay most of these girls probably they've been with how many guys before and you know where those girls the before girls those all type of girls they were they never even knew this type of guys. Even if they knew the guy, they probably wasn't, were even virgins at that time. So, whereas Correct. now it's a totally different story and we still mm. want the whole process. Enchilada. Well. You want the yes. whole enchilada. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. So for, uh, for there now, was a I guy, think, there was a, uh, there, uh, I don't know, uh, usually you cannot tell uh, if it is a guy or not. But uh, uh, Kuku Sergu was from uh, Forkino Ablas, uh, Armenia. Uh, I don't know how to... Uh, oh, Ablas, uh, Armenia. Kuku jo joined us. Uh, Kuku, welcome. We there you know go. It's a, a, a guy. So nowadays we, we should not say, Hi, ah, gentlemen. Ah, right. Ah. <laughs> just have to say your name. Kuku, welcome. Ah, Kuku just Kuku went away. Yeah, yeah, dropped. Kuku, come back, please. And uh, Jay Addis also want to talk. And uh, I tried to, uh, I cannot come, once I'm uh, on this live and I'm on the phone, so I couldn't comment on the uh, uh, comment section, but uh, we'd really love you to, uh, to have uh, this conversation with us. Uh, please join us again. We sent out the link uh, uh, again. again. Hello. 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 Wow, a lady. Ooh. Cuckoo. Cuckoo. Is someone? Is someone yet? Hi. Salam. No. Hi. Salam. No. Is it an hello? I'm Bialen. Tanish. Hola. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Muy bueno. Muy bueno. Muy bueno. Oh, fala protección. Camera. I'm Bialen. Okay. It's okay. Me. She's trying to adjust the camera. Oops. So you, uh, uh, so you, you speak uh, Spanish too? And somebody uh, responded. No, oh, it's me. Uh, just just a bit of Portuguese there and there. It's, 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 I thought she's. I thought she was speaking Portuguese. It sounds a little bit. Okay. Spanish. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Spanish too, but, uh, because I, uh, Armenia. When she said Armenia, so that 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 was my question. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. I thought she. I think she's Ethiopian. Guess. Yeah, she's Ethiopian. Uh, so okay. she will start speaking uh, in uh, Amarinya too. Okay. All right. Okay. Hello. 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 Okay, Kuku. Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. Hello. Uh, Salam, no, everything is good. Uh, muy bien. <laughs> uh, so you speak Amarinya or uh, Spanish? I speak Spanish and Amarinya and Arabic. In Arabic. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, we, we got more. So we need some translator. So I'm going to give you a translation. Okay, okay. So one uh, one 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 uh, American. In Anna, okay. Now, oh, I think uh, Spain, uh, Barcelona. Barcelona. I, I was in uh, the CJs. CJs yeah. in Amarinya. <laughs> Aramaka? Yeah, it's about 30 kilometers uh, uh, from Barcelona. Wow. Yeah, I used to wow. uh, I used to live there uh, for a while during wow. the uh, Olymp du during the Olympics, 1992. Oh. So that was a long time ago. 
Wow. So I know that part. Uh, yeah, I know that part of Barca. Uh, town. Yeah, Barça. Yeah, Barça. Oh, there you go. Uh, okay, good day. እንትረስቲንግ <laughs> 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 Oh, and not any uh, first of all uh Holman and the Gabal, she, you know she listened to us uh, always on the background but she never had the intention to join so she mm-hmm. just got really uh into it yeah. and she joined us today and we welcome you you're welcome anytime thank you thank okay? you okay anytime you. because uh, our, our, like you see a lot of people comes in they join they comment and we have great respect for people that comment Thank and you. support us so uh, this this one africa movement is all about love and peace we don't get too much details into a lot of politics and this one that mm-hmm. one we're not we we, we ra- rather stay non biased support our uh, government whatever the elect is uh, government is doing is elected and at the same time we want to uh, really promote the youth with love and peace and respect mm-hmm. to promote mm-hmm. a healthy africa mm-hmm. uh na gamba shad let's go andres tna yeah 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 i understand so, <laughs> that's good that's good that's good so <laughs> I understand. okay so um anyway that uh, that's uh, uh, me personally I welcome you i love you I just you my sister i love and you I always, my you brother know, uh, በመጀመሪያ የገባቱኝ ያ አፍሪካውን ልጅ አይቼ ነው የገባቱ በጣም ነው ወደው በጣም ወደው ሚካ በኢየሱስ በኢየሁስ እንዴት እንደሞት ነው 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 ጂሰስ ሺ ሎቭስ ሚካ በኢየሁስ ሂ ኢዝ ዘ ቤስት 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 አዎ ሚካ ጋር አይ ሂር ዳት ሂ ኢዝ ዘ ቤስት I love him all the time he's uh, public in, in Ethiopia and something uh, in Jera I don't see when is right. he if he in So you watch and everything Oh my god oh my god oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Oh my god I love I love him he's a smile he's a smile like 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 it here can smile when that tells you did you get that when that tells you yeah he's a smile like it here can smile he's so so, so i i don't know to see i don't know um, uh, you know uh, uh, she uh uh it appear ga bagze uh no uh, this now my second house is this my mm. house bolo sil sayo gze beka am ethiopian sil yeah alekas kin beka alekas kin minayinat minayinat ye ethiopia fikr ne yallo ke lij indu indu ne nekaw ne yalku beka you know uh, she got so emotional when he arrived in ethiopia and when he said i'm ethiopian he made her cry yeah. Ayo, but oh. i'm not but i'm program yeah, but i'm not katatelo but i'm not katatelo program on and do and i'm not telo pin into na like but i'm not program mu katatelo na ndeza sil sayo gize alekas kun beka no is my second house my house sil gize አለቀስኩኝ ብታለቀስኩኝ ይሄ ልጅ ምንድነው ምንድነው የነከው ይሄ ልጅ ምን ሆኖ ነው ነው ያልኩት በቃ እንደው ምን አለ ኢትዮጵያ በነበርኩ ኖሮ እንደው ባገኘው ነው ያልኩት ግን እግዚአብሔር ይመስለኝ ከናንተ ጋር ከናንተ ጋር አገኘዋለሁ በእውነት ሁሉ ግዜ ነው ሁሉ ግዜ ዩቲዩብን በጣም ነው መከታተለው በጣም የሚያስተላልፋቸው ነገር ይሰሙሉ ሁሉ ግዜ ነው መከታተለው አጠገብ 
the only. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It's now <laughs> What happened? What did I do? Hello. 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 Hello, sister. How are you? I'm fine. Good. How is Spain? Hey, good. Spain is good. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. Do you miss Ethiopia? Are you, are you missing home? Yeah. Last year I was in Ethiopia. Ah, oh. you me me me. I have I, I haven't been to Ethiopia, but I have been. I've used Ethiopian airline before, so I haven't I haven't been to Ethiopia. But I would love to be there. I want to yeah. I want to come over. Like how Mika is there, I want to go there as well. Okay, uh, where, where might... from you? Uh, I'm oh, South, South African. Okay. 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 Where is it? South Africa, but I'm in England. Hi. Ooh, South Africa. I yes. like South Africa. Yes. I want, I I want to go. To you you want to come over? Yes, you can come over. Yeah. You should come when I'm there. But I'm, I'm in England now. When I'm there, you can come. When I'm in South Africa, you can come. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. I, I, I just want to play this video. Uh, I, okay. I, I know what you were saying that she... She enjoyed uh, hearing Mika uh, talking about. And uh, then me, 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 come here. I look at Nanta. Oh, my second, 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 my Hey, so guys, I'm right here in Ethiopia already, and next to me is Jenny here. Jenny, she has been working really hard yeah, to make sure that I get here. here. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I appreciate her. Um, I don't know if, if I made you mad sometimes, but <laughs> it's, it's not easy to work with me. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I know. I know what you were making me mad. Finally. <laughs> Man, it's good to be here. Just yesterday, I didn't know that I'm going to be here today, you know? And that's why I, I cancelled my plan. Oh, <laughs> she cancelled her plan, guys. She had another plan. And so when I was telling her that I'm coming today, she was like, you know what? I'm not going to be there. But then later on, she was like, I'm going to be there. I cancelled my plan. Yeah, Come on, man. For you. That's Ethiopian love right there. I'm not saying that Oh, man. I was meant to be here. Like I was meant to be in Ethiopia. I was meant to be Ethiopia. The weather is amazing. It's like, look at this weather. <laughs> ah! Man, it's good to be back home. Yeah. Now we are we're leaving. All right. I appreciate it. I'm asking now. <laughs>
gonna be my first meal in India. I order chips. Chips and what? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, it's chips. a very famous food. My very first meal in Ethiopia, guys. Ethiopia. <laughs> Oh, there is another food. Oh, another. Yeah. Mm. So I'm going to get out of the Mmm. It's my first time doing this thing. Perfect? Perfect, yeah. Okay. Ah, that's amazing. Mmm. <laughs> It's a little sour. Yeah. Sour, right? Yeah, it's because of the injera. Please, you need to eat. You need to eat. Okay, let me see you try the tips. Mm. You know why I love this? I love this tips because. They didn't add anything. It doesn't have tomato. That's good. It's spicy. And it has some veggies here. I feel the taste of the corn. Yeah. Is it is it beef? Yes. Wow. Um, yeah, you need to eat it. Guys, uh, please uh, uh, go watch the videos uh, already uploaded on on YouTube, and uh, you can go watch some of the videos. For those who've been busy during the week, who will not uh, have time to even watch, so please uh, go do that. Go watch some of the videos, um, you know. And again, just to thank, uh, um, obviously, a, a lot of people that have been helping us, Jenny there in in, in Ethiopia. Uh, helping uh, uh, and making sure that uh, His Excellency is settled, uh, picking him up from the airport. So that means a lot, uh, uh, and uh, we really appreciate and uh, the hospitality from all the people who are um, helping in the land of uh, the motherland. So please, please, family, continue supporting us, continue uh, uh, guiding us as well, putting suggestions for us. So yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you very much for all your support thank you for for those who are playing their role on the ground making sure that uh, we are communicating and meeting with other people uh there in ethiopia thank you very much jenny everyone um arts tv ethiopian airlines we we thank everybody that has played a role uh in making sure that this stream was this trip was a success and all the guys that also um uh, uh, contributed to the gofundme Thank you very much uh, uh, for all your support. It really means a lot. And uh, to see this uh, dream realized and uh, making sure that uh, we can really uh, uh, connect and, and build bridges with, with different countries and stuff and different people. And we can all learn uh, from each other's cultures. I see Big is back. And Wanda Tezi, do you have anything to add? Uh, about Ethiopia or something that you need to that you love to find out or like us to to cover uh, going forward maybe yeah unfortunately I dropped <laughs> yeah. I, I, had a, I had a little fire going uh, Kuru uh, you know I, I just want to say I'm sorry that uh, I dropped on them I had a little fire alarm going on in the house but at the same time I dropped my phone but I'm back again. Mm. Still got to uh, find uh, my little alarms that are going beeping like crazy. I don't know what happened to it. Mm. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, so, uh, so I miss Kuru then, uh, you know? Yeah, you know what, from you... Kuru. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'll talk to him uh, today. Um, 
I'll give him a call or something or and see if he's uh, available. It's been a while yeah, yeah. as well. I know he's an uncle now. He's, he's uh, He has his hands full because uh, he has to run around and uh, help out. But right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I see uh, Tenzin is saying, we found the beeping culprit. <laughs> Tanzan got to join. Tanzan got to join sometime. I really uh, want to hear from Tanzan. She she told us uh, that uh, she for now she just wants to listen, but uh, someday she will join. But uh, yep. it's still challenging you, Tanzan, to to join us. I know it's a lady. She confessed. Right. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> she surely <laughs> did. Well, she just disappeared on us. When we're playing the right. video, so Kugu, please uh, come back. Uh, Big is back as well. So yeah, um, she was uh, saying some, uh, something very interesting about the uh, Mika, and um, the way she felt. You know, when you said I'm Ethiopian, that really broke everything. Uh, you know, it showed being African. You are from the continent, whatever the nation that you're in or visit, you are that country. So uh, it, it's just uh, something that she said uh, she cried, uh, you know, when she heard that all of his passion. She followed him in the past and um, she really enjoyed all his shows. And she said she wishes she was there. Uh, and uh, that's what the last uh, part that she talked. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe she'll come back. Um, uh, I, I hope also Tenzin will join because he just asked how how do I join, and uh, I've just shared uh, the link with her. Um, Wanda Tezzi. Hello. Yay. What's up? Are you back from your work? <laughs> still working with them. Still working. Still working. It's been a very good work. Hmm. A little bit noisy, but uh, I guess in Kenya guys wake up very early. They didn't know that. Hmm. <laughs> Somebody, Tenzel was thinking you 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 are asleep. Nah, 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 nah. Today, today I wanted to go for a walk, and I went for a walk. Guys, guys are exercising. It's also, it's also since we 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 are, we are the praying for our brothers and sisters. Uh, we should also consider exercising and keeping up, keeping fit, mm. so that to maintain our own health. Because mm. you know, you know, Africans. Yeah. I know Africans. Especially us men, you know, I don't know, I don't know why African ladies they will they, they love the pot belly man, the, the big pot belly man, you know. Money, my always... friend. <laughs> <laughs> six pack. They say you you'll never find a billionaire with a six pack, you know. <laughs> so this is a sign, you know. This is a sign. <laughs> it's a it's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not a it's not a lie. It's it's a lie. They, they said those six, six pack is, is, is the sign of being broke. Eh? They say what kind of <laughs> while men are working, making money, he's in the gym doing this. The whole the gym. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> you have too much free time. If you are, if you are, if you are having a six pack, you have too much free time. <laughs> oh my god i actually oh. i actually heard them say stuff like that you know it's true i actually heard them say stuff like that <laughs> say your, your six pack won't feed us your six pack won't feed us <laughs> <laughs> so oh just, my lord sure sometimes you know that you 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 remain fit, but uh, not not overweight. But you, you must have that that small thing that says, "Oh yeah, that's at you least eat well. Yeah, that, that man eats well, you know. 
it doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Actually, uh, we had a topic. We had a topic of uh, how we want uh, our African brothers and sisters should be able to eat uh, uh, properly the the nutrient uh, food and keep that youth healthy. And um, like you brought up, one of the things is uh, uh, exercise. We need to exercise on any age, any level, you know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I have my own weaknesses. You know, I used to love biking and all that. And for me, winter comes and especially this year, I didn't do a lot more biking. But definitely we need to exercise and promote mm-hmm. the healthy way of living. Uh, definitely yes. uh, it helps us uh, all as an Africans uh, uh, to be healthy. You know, uh, it's, it's one of the number one. Uh, the other thing, what you eat, you know, especially, especially in diaspora, we, we got a lot of processed Ooh. food, you know what I mean? Terrible. A lot bad, of processed food. Yeah, a lot of processed food. So uh, watch out on that. You know, one of the major things that a killer for us is diabetic, blood pressure. You know, these are the things. And then you have cancer, you know. This is one one of the plagues now that's playing mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. throughout the world and specifically the uh, African community. You know what I mean? Mm. So definitely promote uh, health. You know, uh, anything that that works for you, you know, people that that might have uh, arthritis and stuff. We got we got our own herbs uh, that that always been uh, effective. Like if you got arthritis and stuff like that, you can use uh, t- turmeric. You know, turmeric is a very good source oh, yes, of uh, yes. anti-inflammatory. So things like that we can promote. That uh, you know, and everybody will conquer with it, uh, and have their own personal experiences on uh, certain certain things that you take. You know, not just vitamins. You know, vitamins is a supplement that we we have, but you know, uh, in the continent, they might not have that uh, vitamin, but they might get a fruit. You know, and you get a lot of uh, ac- access to those vitamins through fruits, and which fruit is uh, very important and uh, healthy uh, for your for your body. So I think we're going to have to get uh, somebody in the health department and uh, a nutritionist, which we have a lot of nutritionists great doctors, uh, you know, really good professors that really can guide us through, you know, healthy way of uh, living. It doesn't matter if you live in poverty. It doesn't matter in anything, in any which way, you know, make sure that you, you understand uh, there's such thing uh, uh, that, uh, that can help you uh, promote your health. Like exercise, you know, uh, you walk, you know, simple walk, like Mondatezi is doing right now. Four o'clock in the morning, he's walking. Mm. You tell me to walk tonight. Uh, I'm. I got snow. Yeah, it's snowing <laughs> so, there. Yeah, this snow. Sorry. Yeah, this snow. Wow. Nice stuff. Now wow. we got a wind that's picking up. Oh, I yeah. The, the, the whole uh, snowing, yeah. the whole northeast. The whole oh, northeast uh, uh, is, is affected now. So it's, it's, it's like it's not snowing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and this was kind of a surprise for for us because it was not cold enough for the snow, but it dropped oh. suddenly, and then we just got enough uh, uh, that temperature just made it snow, and then it got warmed up, so it turned it turned out to be a, a rain. So when you go on the street now, it's it's pretty much cleared up. Everything else is uh, snow on the grass. So we're lucky in the DMV area, like DMV is a DC, Maryland, Virginia. So everybody can understand. It's not Department of Motor Vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. When we oh. talk about DC, you know, DC, I mean, DMV is the Washington mm. area, Washington, DC area. Mm. Yeah, the, you know, I miss it good because she had a lot to say. And uh, uh, I'm glad, you know, she's a part of this family. She's following up with us and we need our uh, uh, brothers and sisters to participate in here because this 2022, we are in a mission and to get a better Africa, make sure that everybody understand what way we're going, what's better for our youth, what can we help in Africa. And we got a hundred days uh, challenge right now. And it's coming through one of the hundred days. Mika's in, uh, in Ethiopia 
and he will, he's bringing a wealth of information for us. Uh, all his communication is uh, on YouTube, and um, people look at the video. For me, I didn't talk about uh, Mika earlier, but uh, Mika is electrified. I mean, he just really electrified, and you can see his passion, his, his understanding, how happy he is, uh, uh, what he sees, mm. people that he meets. You know, I mean, it cannot be any greater uh, feeling because any of us uh, being that in, in that mission, uh, the responsibility and the accountability and being brutally honest, it shows on Mika. Mika is going left and right. And uh, he, he only left, what, four days ago? You know, yeah. So it sounded like he was there for a month. Look at mm -hmm. the, uh, the the even the Amarinya. You know the language he's picking up. You know he's picking up the words every day. Every day he's is coming up with some uh, new words. So it shows mm -hmm. you know his uh, participation and involvement and engaging himself. Uh, you know very commendable. His Excellency he, he gave us mm -hmm. the platform and he, now he's there. And he's given us more information, and uh, this is great. I mean, I cannot ask any better. You know, uh, how many, how many uh, uh, YouTubers will have a, just a, to have for this uh, a beautiful mission of One Africa, and have all the support around him, and uh, bring the best out of people. Example, look at Kuru. You know, she was following him on different things, but now she sees his movement. She sees that he's in Ethiopia. I mean, you know, she was emotional. I mean, for me, she's right. You know, at one point when he said, I'm Ethiopian, and he's in Ethiopia, it was just a bang. You know, it's just, uh, you know, very moving, you know, because he wants to be Ethiopian. He's in Ethiopia. That's it. It's, it's showing you that he, he said he's African, but he's Ethiopian now. And mm -hmm. each of us, you know, from South Africa, you know, specifically for me, I'm, I'm Ghanaian, I'm Ethiopian, I'm Eritrean, I'm South African, I'm an African. So my continent, and nobody can take that away from me. That's the power that we have to use. It's our continent. We should be proud of our Ghanaian. We should be proud of our Nigeria, Tanzanian, Kenyan, Sudan, Somalia, Congo, Botswana. We are that. Can you imagine how much wealth we have? If an Ethiopian also claim Nigerian, he's got the right because he's African. And that's why we move Africa as for Africans. So any part that you live in Africa, you're welcome. You should be welcomed. We don't, we not, we don't have to have any restriction for it. So in order to make that happen, it's up to us to work into that direction. So already our mind is borderless. There's no border. And that's how we're going to be moving. If one hurts, we got to jump in and help. And that's part of it. It's part of our movement. Look at us here on this platform. Thanks to Mika, we get to know each other. And we will know each other Furthermore, as the missions start coming, and somebody's going to take that torch and move with it, we probably will have about 10, 15, 20, 54 Mikas all over the African continent. And that's when change comes. So we got to be, we got a lot of work. We got to be together. We got to put all our love, our prayers for one another to protect each other. And you're an African, when you raise that arm on another African, think triple times. I used to say twice because everybody says triple, fourth time. Think about it before you strike. It can be with gun. It can be with machetes. It can be with stick. But think about it. Who are you hitting? Somebody revolt, protest. He's got the right to protest. Don't go and fire things on him. Don't make him into the uh, violence. Because, you know, the first thing we're African, we look for stones in return. And that aggravate things. So I would say the authorities, let the people that protest 
peacefully, let them protest about it. We have to be open because all this mass that's coming out, they want their voice to be heard. And we all have that right. Be safe when you do that. And make sure the safety of others. Because the minute that tear gas is shot, <laughs> you're going to be running over somebody and you're going to hurt the weak one. So again, you know, I'm talking a lot of things that's been happening uh, throughout the world when it comes to demonstration and how brutally being abused. So protect yourself and protect your family. Protect your being African. Protect that and you will have a fast-moving Africa toward the direction of love and peace. And Mika is doing it. Exactly. And he's not alone. Mika, you're not alone. That's my message mm. for him. Mm. Indeed, indeed, indeed. He's uh, not alone. And... Uh, there's many, uh, as you saw, Biggie, uh, uh, when he arrived there, there's a lot of people that are reaching out to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, people, I mean, calling him, they want to meet up with him and stuff. So that's, that's something great that we are seeing, that there's a lot of humility and a lot of um, uh, the spirit of saving others uh, amongst the people, regardless mm -hmm. of where you come from. And uh, it is really uh, uh, something that we are learning and we should learn once uh, uh, the opportunity comes where we need to also host uh, 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 others in, in our homes or in our uh, countries. So this is just a great example of uh, what Jenny's doing there and uh, a lot of people that are involved uh, in hosting Mika and uh, really, really appreciate it so much. And... Um, I see Cuckoo is back. Cuckoo. Yeah, Cuckoo. <laughs> what a name. Yep. Hello, Cuckoo. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah thank you for coming back because uh, I dropped uh, and I couldn't uh, further translate. And I don't, uh, you probably spoke a lot. So uh, go ahead. I just want to hear you back. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. Thank you so much. Thank you so I much. Want, I want all Africans, brothers and sisters, yeah, to come back. And, you know, absolutely. We're one. Yeah. And we move as one. And that's the whole collaboration. We get to know each other. And then the talk. Yeah. And then now. You know, <laughs> yeah. 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 One love. And the talk. Oh, you know, uh, movement too. My talk, to catch in the mustard, myself, in the no mustard level. Movie, eh? Me encanta. All right. The end of course, the way. Anta vechana ni. Ah, beginning yuko FM ni. Tama di shema tichu. Okay, okay. Okay. Drop out again. Lela sa masle na. No, it's Biggie. Uh, okay, free. Betam, betam, the Silenian, betam, a name demo, because you are low bet water. Bizusa watch Zia Takanda Parsalai, betam Tunishan. Yang Nugus Pits of Sony Adlano. Has Mr. Nan. And now Tasavas Panangadio. Sentanacho? Uh, is Barcelona, Yadlano, Savatan, Hassamant? I was shaking. And Dom Salama is a few ton on Betay, but I'm sick and let out the sonuto. You know, uh, uh, when we had the demonstration uh, on no more, uh, no more movement, ah, no uh, more. they were like 15. <laughs> Uh, 15. Only 15 shows because they're 27 oh, that in Barcelona. That's right. <laughs> and <laughs> and she, she lives in the King Palace, so uh, yeah. they work there. Uh, 
بارسا has been a name of the Zeno. I left Barca in 92, almost 93. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? When I was there, Okay. Uh, wow. Oh my god. Nobody. Nobody did. <laughs> I, 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 I went through the whole Barcelona uh, trying to find something, but uh, I was not lucky at that time. Wow. But I made a lot of Barça people and uh, very beautiful people, by the way. Yeah. Uh, very down to earth. Yeah. Uh, it, it has a small uh, small communities uh, that small, I really enjoyed. Very yeah. very small like a family yeah. family. Um, yeah, and I encourage you, whenever there's a movement and and uh, specifically when it comes to Ethiopians issue, all that, 15 yeah. is good enough. The, the, 15 is uh, little, but there's no many. more is uh, 20. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, you got to reach out for the rest of African uh, community saying, hey, you know, we're going to go out for no more uh, movement, all uh -huh. Africans will respond. If you ask them, they will mm -hmm. come. And you won't believe what it can uh, move uh, when you start explaining why you're out. And you got a lot of African brothers that will come out. Uh, we asked for Sudanese to come out. Sudanese showed up with no more movement. Eritrean was there. Yeah. They, so, they came so, out. Also, also Somali. Somali. Yeah, Somali. Somali also. Somali, they came Somali out. yeah. So, so, so uh, any movement that's going to come, you still have uh, other communities that you can put yeah. together because this yeah. is all African concern. Yeah. All African concern. All African. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mondetezi, you have any question for Kuku? I'm I'm and through like a chat like Marek Chalish. Aziga? Oh, chat under. Ah, the last one they would have been just looking. Ah, it's okay. If I'm Lino. So you, you don't have to worry. I 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 don't have I think uh, uh, Mika. No, 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 no. No, no. Any end is you turn the video on the other one. Indeed, the more do, but Xavier and Namade you know, she said my English is not so good, but uh, still understand. So anyway, she followed Mika when he when he showed the uh, in Korea. He was showing the Ethiopian. But I'm not of a letter in the Sigaba YouTube lessons in the Sigaba. But I'm the cuckoo calco yak and the machemini. Oh, he knows Kuku because she comments because she always comments on his show. So she said she wants one video, uh, uh, a live chat with him. Uh, well, you know, he's gonna come uh, come on uh, on uh, sometime. I'm going to do that today. Huh? No, in the end. That thing is gonna be very difficult. No, I mean we're gonna request. That you will have a, a chat with you. I'll we'll request that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll tell Cuckoo want to talk to one on one. So <laughs> we'll we'll pass the mes the message, you know. <laughs> mm. And he knows you. He, she said uh, he knows her because she always comments on his videos and he responds back to her. So uh, mm. let, uh, we'll tell Mika. Mika's uh, yeah. Mika. Mika will see that. Mika will see this uh, live show. And he will revise it. Oh yeah, yeah, he's, he's gonna see it. Yeah, he's gonna see that. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you because uh, he follows the program. I will never make the video. I will never make the video. I know, but uh, we we don't know because right now is uh, sleep. Because what time is it in uh, uh, in Ethiopia? 
It's six o'clock right now. Almost so, six o'clock, yeah. Yeah, five forty-seven. So he's he's out now, but he's gonna see this video, and so uh, we'll 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 let him know. Anybody has a question for uh, Cuckoo? Wait, wait, yeah. Nagarun na tagaun na. Ante ni ala ko English. Ah, ane American ni yalo. America, okay. Okay. Selkin is the last come to know. Somebody is having some tea. Yeah, remember that is when to make some coffee. Or is the only maybe making tea or coffee? Mm -hmm. Right. No, I was I was tidying up because I was doing uh, I was making some cups with clay, so I'm just tidying up now. I'm not having any oh, drink. Okay. Yeah. So, so you make your own clay? Yes, I make um, dinnerware like uh, cups and plates with clay. Yes, I make them by hand. Really? Yeah. You gotta share that. Oh. Hmm. Yes. Come and share that, Tony. You're an artist. Hmm. Yes, yes. Um, wow, you. you should share that uh, that knowledge, and especially I will, I will uh, you know. That's the plan. Oh, hmm. thank you, really, because uh, you know Africa has its own heritage working with clay, so uh, uh, this yeah. kind of uh, arts, you know, will help a lot of youth, you know, to. Uh, to see what you do and motivate a lot of them, because oh, uh, nice. uh, yeah, and these these uh, skills are dwindling. You know, mm. they become uh, 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 rare now. You know, uh, they still practice it, but we still want to make sure it's always alive, because yes, we I have our own. Mostly, I notice that mostly people who are still who are more into it at home. Right. It, it, I'm noticing that a lot of Ghanaians are still doing it, but I feel like uh, the skill amongst a lot of our people is not really mm -hmm. practiced that much when it comes to pottery. Uh, but then, mm -hmm. um, and mostly it's, it's Europeans who are doing it a lot now. So, and some of them, they, I like Morocco, they're still, they're still very much into it. Um, but I noticed wow. that. Wow. Uh, Mm -hmm. Down the Saharan, they're a little bit, it's a bit slower so when it comes to uh, uh, lower Sahara. A lot, of, right. a lot of people there, they're not really doing it as much as before. And besides, I think because uh, technology has grown now, so they're still burning it through, you know, like outdoor, like setting of fire and putting them, stacking them on the fire and all that kind of stuff. So. I like their method because they used to do it without machines. So they would do nice, beautiful poetry without mm -hmm. even using like the wheel. They would use their hands like to put it together right. to make like a massive buses. Yeah, there's so much um, skill when it comes to poetry back home. Uh, in South Africa, I think majority are doing poetry in South Africa. It's not even mm. our people really. It's not black people. I noticed that right. the majority of those in South Africa um, are Europeans and they, use, they, they normally use our traditional paintings on their, on their work and it sells a lot. And whereas us, we're not really uh, taking part in that. And it's our traditions uh, they're using, like the, 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 the paintings, the design, and they're using on top of the ceramics. So I think they and, and, and they're, to... using our, they're using our own uh, spoil. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. They use our designs and right. they use our designs and everything. And but you, they, they give it like a very ethnical name. Like they will, mm. use, like they will give it like a name you would think is a is a black person who makes them. They right. realize that the owner is actually a white person is using our designs, everything, and is making money. But we're not really partaking in it. It's uh, like China. You know, China takes a design. And replicated, you know, yes. uh, especially yes. the uh, Ethiopian cross, you know, uh, oh. the one that uh, there is silver, whatever, the, whatever that we use, uh, people yes. make some in Ethiopia, and now Chinese got hold of the uh, the mold 
And they just replicated it and invaded all our souvenir stores. And some of them you look at it, it says made in China. And that's that's our heritage, you know? So that's uh, bad. Yeah, it is. That's very, uh, bad. That's very bad. Copycat, you know. And so we gotta make sure. I think Ethiopians need to to because with Ethiopia I feel like the population is a, there's a lot of population. So there's there should be one person who can actually do something like that and have factories to do their own stuff where it's authentically Correct. Ethiopian, you know? Because right. that's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm seeing with pottery and stuff. I'm also seeing the same problem. Like, why right. is it saturated by people who are not even us, but they're using our textiles, our designs, mm-hmm. and make make monetizing their work through our work, through our our cultural stuff. They don't even. They're so good in hiding their identity as well. Right, right. That that that's the key: hiding their identity. And they're taking it away from from the uh, from the Africans because that was their livelihood. Now you got the, all these people replicating, and uh, they have the money so they can use so many people to uh, to do it and uh, hiding themselves behind. It's sad. We, we lose a lot of the. Uh, that's what you call transfer of technology. <laughs> you know? Yes. 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 <laughs> they obtained it illegally, you know, but. Um, Again, uh, that so uh, is another home. topic. Yeah, it's a like lot. It's like one of those bas- It's one of those baskets they make. You know, like those baskets. Now they sell them everywhere in Europe and in America. And you find them at home. Women are sitting there weaving those baskets, and and you you ask yourself, are they getting the actual amount that is that is due to them? Because they're sitting there mm. weaving all these baskets because they go in, in Africa and get them there. They buy them, a lot of them from there. And they give mm-hmm. them peanuts and they sell them in Europe because it's on trend now to have mm-hmm. those, those weaved baskets. And, right. and you, look, you look at them and you think, but this is from home. But you ask yourself, really, are the people who are making them at home, are they making enough from this? And the person, when they, come, when they get to Europe and America, they're selling them with like a high price because they're in demand. But because they right. don't mind traveling back and getting there, but you realize that it's not even a Tanzanian, it's not even a, 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 a Kenyan or who's actually selling them in Europe. We find that it's actually a Euro- European who go and stock mm-hmm. them there and bring them to to Europe. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I see a lot of those uh, things, especially in Africa. We do a lot of woodwork, and of I see those things dwindling. You know, I don't know who's making them now, but they. They're not really there anymore. It's sad. I you mean, know, it's, you know uh, the art is, uh, uh, again, you know, when you have this foreign invasion on uh, your arts and everything else, and they mass produce it, then um, you lose that authenticity. of, uh, And yeah. there's no growth. There's no growth into the art. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it hurts. Uh, it hurts a lot. When it comes to the uh, uh, continent uh, cultural uh, arts, and that uh, I think is the uh, it's up to us to identify and a promote a healthy uh, uh, business for our young that are interested because the young is also part of the art uh, uh, artistry. You know, it's, it's part of the fiber. Uh, African art is very rich, very rich, and we don't want it to be molded on, into uh, c- the creativity side should be staying within the uh, African. But again, once they get hold of the industry, they'll make it their own. And it's like some arts, you know, it's not, or the way they put the fibers or the way they, the fabrics, mm. they're not the mm. same. The, the way you, uh, you weave it, the way you do it, it start changing, which is not really authentic African. Yeah. So they, these are the things they, that we got to, protect you know of course leave, of course leave I, the art hope, from I just the hope people. more africans i feel like i really wish like a lot of blacks who are in in this diaspora i mean they, they should they should actually try to go back and tap into this market that we're losing mm-hmm. so I, I i really think they should they should rethink the whole thing because now we yeah. other races are the ones who are benefiting from all this. They they are not lazy, you know. They actually see potential. They they 
they get on into flights and go and collect and come this side as well. And you realize it's not even one of us who are doing it. Right. And uh, it's one of uh, one of the things that, uh, uh, on you know, part of the economy that you're talking about, uh, part of the uh, social uh, social uh, fiber, as it is, is something to promote the Af mm -hmm. African artists. You know, we have a lot of artists, great artists that are not known, but people kind of steal their, their ideas and their actual arts and uh, replicate it, make it think that somebody else did uh, except the artist itself. So we're going to have to promote this healthy environment of the arts. Um, it's like in Ethiopia, there's a, there's a, a priest that teaches how to write uh, in, uh, in, in, in a letter. And it's, uh, it's a, the old uh, style, you know, uh, it's all by hand. And you have to really... Uh, do it from scratch. You go out there, get the uh, skin, dry it, process it, and then you write on it. So this is a, a still, it's, I only saw one show about him, but it should be promoted because it's always part of the way the old Bible is written, you know, on a oh, leather yes. uh, uh, scrolls, on the scrolls. So mm -hmm. this guy, teaches them how to write in a scroll, which is a dying, uh, a dying uh, a skill. And we mm -hmm. still need those people because they, they still can think of uh, uh, writings, a uh, portion of the Bible, and you don't need to have the whole thing, but they give you a scroll that you're always going to have it in front of you. It's the art, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. they're dwindling. So we're going to have to encourage the youth, you know, to really not lose the the culture and the uh, art of Africa, because once it's gone, it's gone. That's true. Yeah. 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 yeah we need to protect, and I think mm. it's, it's, the, it's the job of the those who are out there. It's the job of us. It's our. It's us really who we need to protect. Because people who are at home who have never left even the continent, you might find they don't see all this stuff, isn't it? We're the ones who are yeah. doing all these things. Right. And, uh, and this is part of our responsibility, uh, those who are in diaspora, to explain them or to uh, let them know how important that is to preserve that, mm -hmm. to keep, keep on doing your art. Because when it dies, somebody else has already got the old replica. They're going to replicate it like it, it is from us which is not truly ours. So that's the healthy promotion. Uh, again, you know, education uh, is part of it. You know, uh, even though we got certain controversy of what type of education you get, but at the same time, you have to look into authentic uh, cultural, like arts, writings. There's a lot of things inside that need to be um, explored and inherit the youth to grow with them. So you, you open the art schools and stuff like that, that can motivate them. Uh, it's the tools that they uh, require and the, uh, the mind that really works through the arts and the hearts that goes with it. And uh, mm -hmm. when you start promoting that, they're going to say, oh, you know, after all, it's not a dying, you know, uh, art. It's something that we need to, uh, aggressively uh, uh, promote it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like when you go and visit uh, uh, any of the nations, there's always a souvenirs that catches your eye, you know, mm -hmm. and you cannot take them all, but you will always have different things that you can pick from different regions that you visited. And those arts are supposed to be representing that part where you picked it up, mm. you know, and you're always going to be something that you collect. So by promoting tourism and by promoting uh, how the art can go hand to hand, and some people will come just to buy your art. Mm. Literally, they will come. These are the buyers and the retailers, and you show a very authentic uh, art 
these are the people that we can invite, you know, if they're looking at different uh, part of uh, the uh, African continent and pick up those arts. Mm -hmm. We expose them and at the same time, we promote them for the youth. So if I get a, one wooden giraffe in my house, it's precious for me, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I get a little antelope. Is precious for me. The mask of Africa is precious for me. There's so many arts and clays. Like uh, I have uh, the coffee pot that we make coffee with, uh, mm. you know, and it's, it's uniquely designed. It's, 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 it's home for me. You know what I mean? Mm. So if we, just us as African, we share our art and we purchase that art authentically from the person that made it African made it, we will help a lot more Africans. So we pay them in dollars and we value their time. Yes. We're the one that can mm -hmm. promote that. We're the one sure. that's going to say, hey, you know, instead of one bit, you're getting one dollar. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen to the youth? They're going to say, oh, you know, my art is expensive out there. It can be cheap within the country, no problem. They're still promoting it within the country currency. But at the same time, also, you can export it mm -hmm. and have a better uh, life. So that will help, you know, coming out from poverty. Now you, you can feed yourself and you're getting your, your living your standard is, is changing. You become an artist and, and you bring others to follow, you know, because uh, our culture got to keep going. Our art got to keep going. So that's the fabric we need to uh, to uh, instill and promote them in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. You buy one art in dollar for that kid that really made that youth that made it. What's going to happen? It's a reward. That reward will make him make more, and in fact, bring more kids that have the artistic uh, skills into what he's doing. Mm. So that's how we can promote, you know, uh, it's not a handout. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's true. It's not. They're doing oh, a business. Is. Now we teach them business. So we teach them a lot of things behind it. And uh, again, you know, unfortunately, Ethiopia is out of the Agoa, but let's say if I promote certain things in, uh, in Ethiopia, anything that comes from there is supposed to be uh, tax-free. And there's a lot of other countries that are in Agua, so we can take advantage of that coming for uh, in America. If you don't tell yeah. about yourself, you know, how would the people would know about you? If you don't introduce them, if you don't make a little art show, how would they know who you are? Mm. So the diaspora has a really uh, a responsibility to put 5% of their knowledge into the continent. People that are in business, people that are uh, doctors, you know, we got brain doctors, you know, brain surgeons, great in the world. Mm. That can remotely, remotely access to other brain surgeons that, that they try to have a surgery and help them. That's true, that's true. Specific uh, in engineering, you got so many things. In uh, in art, like I said, there's plenty of things that can be done. And uh, usually, the arts also facilitate to bring new schools, will facilitate uh, to promote different parts out of a clay, make a living, and you're living in a dollar and a pound. Guess what happened? Watch what happened, mm. actually, <laughs> because you're promoting a healthy promotion. Health and art. Yes. I'm not there to push and shove with governments. I'm there to really help the youth acquire mm. the skills, acquire the right tools in order to self-sustain himself and help others to be self-sustainable. Mm. So there won't be no handout. And that... It goes on every faculty that you have, from medicine, engineering, mechanical, aerospace, satellites. Mm 
name it. We can do that. Mm. It's just we need to really focus. And, you know, it doesn't take that much. It takes 5% of your knowledge. Mm, 5%. Is that true? Because you got 100 engineers, you divide that by 5%, you know how much uh, you need. Mm. They all complement each other. So your 5%, 5%, that helps to make the wheel go around. So that's how we got to think. We got to think said, from a small thing, this. you know. The don't, don't. All of us did this diaspora, all of us. We need to. Mm -hmm. We need to and, do uh, that. Yeah, and uh, uh, now that uh, we have this uh, triangle that's coming out, that help us to instill those projects. Oh, yes, yes. yes. So it will be well funneled where the money is going to go where we're going to be promoting, who's going to be financing it, all that. Because really, finance is very important to make this wheel to turn. And I was telling uh, even uh, Ridge, you know, we have to make sure that we put money into it because we want it to be a solid platform and to help everybody else. Yeah. And Ridge worked very hard for it. And I see the work and you saw it, right? The triangle. Did, yeah. Yes. It's amazing. It's amazing. And it's made by our own people. Exactly. And it's going to stay within our people. Mm. It doesn't need no politics, religion. It doesn't it takes nothing. It's just telling you as it is and how to help one another. Mm. That's it. Very simple. Instead of uh, going, hey, hey, you, I need this much money. My country is poor. Now I'm going to get this. No, we're not poor. You got to take that mentality. Yeah. We're not poor. Yeah. It's just we don't have, we don't have the know-how on to how to move out from that poverty. It's a skill that we need to acquire when you're in, in Africa and in the continent. There are, but it needs guidance. Where are you going to get that knowledge? Mm -hmm. If you don't explain them, how would they know? If you don't tell them, how would they know? So it's our responsibility as diasporas and those Africans that are in Africa and they're knowledgeable, it's time to share. You have to share your knowledge. Let's get our people skilled, yes. educated. Let them concentrate so they can get rid of this on and off, on and off, coup d'etats, this, that. Just let them have a peaceful life. And the peaceful life, really, is by praying, working, and delivering. Mm, 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 exactly. You rip what you saw, right? Yes. That's it. So if we're going to make them see the right things, and we see the right things into their heart, love, peace, you know, that's a good seed. It is a good seed. I instill my love on every African. It's a good seed. It grows. We get there. If I if I put peace a seed, it will grow. If I put hatred, it will grow too. Mm -hmm. That's what I call weed. You take the weed out. True, true. Oh, oh, Thank you yeah. for that. Well, yeah, Israel, you're back. We didn't talk what? about food. We didn't talk about South Africa, man. <laughs> Munda Tezi is going to say that. <laughs> yeah, Munda Tezi, it's all your fault, man. You didn't talk about South Africa, nor food. No, 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 no. You can... There's still time. In fact, uh, it's now... Uh, Welcome to the morning hour of the midnight uh, or of the weekend special, where we we'll talk about special. where we talk about uh, a bit of South Africa, so that Ezra does not sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, Yay. I have to do the three before you go on. I have to go now. Sorry. Really oh yeah, yeah, thank you so much. I have to wake for, up really. Thank you for the uh, late night show. No, don't, yes, please join yeah, us I again. And at I least uh, Fridays, you know, uh, we're going to try one 
One of the things, I don't know uh, that 24 hours we're talking about, but um, uh, let's see. Uh, I think Friday night is a good uh, our late night shows. So we can talk about anything and everything. Always yes. talk about love. We... Always <laughs> talk about peace. One yeah. Africa. And meeting so. from from all the 54 African countries, yes. Mm -hmm. Everything. Everything. Marriage, everything. Marriage. We, 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 we laid out a lot about the marriage. <laughs> yes. We're going to get more comments. You know, definitely we'll have a lot of comments here, even after we hang up. <laughs> we'll have a lot of comments on that. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Expected. <laughs> All right. So we'll, when, is another, uh, when is another one live stream? Is it? Do you have any this you can or is it every Friday until Mika comes uh, back? Go back to Tanzania. Or... Uh, yes. No, we we're still gonna have recaps like that, and at the same time, we'll go ahead, Israel. Actually, uh, he mentioned a few things uh, with you mm. for so, the shows. Uh, we, we we will have some some uh, live streams. It's just. Uh, we might not have them in the uh, normal times, uh, but for now, uh, especially weekends and stuff, we will have them around the same time. Those midnight, okay. midnight, midnight uh, shows will not stop. It's just we've been uploading a lot of videos. Hands sometimes we don't want uh, any uh, what's this conflict, uh, any conflict. Actually, that yeah, any conflicts and stuff. So. We just wanted mm -hmm. to put them in a in a sequence in such a way that it doesn't clash with the uh, uh, the live streams. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but we will we will have uh, uh, some uh, in the week. Uh, we might not have them like every day, um, but we might be getting a lot of uh, 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 um, the live streams whereby Mika just updates the guys or speaks about a topic. Uh, there's no panel, uh, those type of setups. So just like this week. We've seen him coming live, but it wasn't like a panel is calling for people's opinions and all that. I, actually, we're going to invite him as a guest, right? Is that? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're going we're gonna to invite him. Yeah, I mean, we're going to invite Mika as a guest, and there will be questions from the audience and as well from the panel. So he's going to explain us exactly what he goes through. I think it would be a great show because yeah, be uh, we, it's not something that he uploaded one way, but at the same time, we will have the interface uh, with our community, with this community, and uh, it will be a great show. Yeah. So, so we're looking to and it, we'll, we'll let you know. Yeah. All right, then I'll be anywhere. I'll get the right. notification. You're still on the uh, WhatsApp, uh, right? People are joining on WhatsApp. You know, we, we would put the messages and all, all that out. And also on the YouTube, uh, we'll, we'll set up a reminder and all that. So keep on checking uh, for the uh, for the other audience that are commenting. Please uh, check on your Swahili Nation, put a notification, anything that's been uploaded will be, will be notified. And uh, you keep following. Uh, so let's support uh, Mika on his mission. Let him... He's successful anyway, but let him have a very success into getting everybody to embrace our idea of one Africa with one love and peace. And uh, he needs all the helps from us. So let's support him. Uh, please comment, you know, uh, on the comment section. And um, yeah. we'll review that and make sure that everybody's got as much as possible. We try to uh, answer everybody's questions or anything that's come up. Uh, we'll discuss it with Mika. So keep it up. All right, everyone. Good Thank job, you. everybody. Nice. Those lovely. who staying around. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see you next time. Uh, for a Q and A uh, session with Mika live uh, in, in in Ethiopia, and you guys can come in and um, ask questions and find out things and uh, comment and add your suggestions as well. Yes, I can't wait to see Ezra in Ethiopia. And Ezra. And Ezra. Oh. In Ethiopia. I can't wait for that vlog. Oh. 
He yeah, just dropped you know, the bomb on both of you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I'm feeling very after working today, I feel very healthy. I think I can even just walk to Ethiopia, man. I've just walked like, <laughs> You're right across the street, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Yeah. I'm feeling yeah, Munda Tezi. Yeah. Munda Tezi across the street. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. It's just the border is like over there, yeah. man. It's just you can just I'm on saying. the horizon. Is it right? <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> You're already by the border. Wow. It's right there. You don't waste time. You don't waste time. No. We'll let we'll let Mika know now. We got Munda Tezi yeah. coming in. <laughs> in fact, he's watch. I can just start in the beginning of the weekend special. By the, by the time we, we finish this special, I'll be like knocking on Mika's hotel room, like, hey, Mika, open the door, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you will have, you, you, you have, you, you have a heart attack, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's like, good. <laughs> I walked all night to get to you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I started at 4 a.m. <laughs> oh my god! I know, gonna, I know he's, gonna, he's gonna listen to this. I know he's gonna listen to this. <laughs> All right, everyone. I would leave you and love you. Bye, bye. We love you too. All right. Bye. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Uh, morning, yeah. right? Oh, no. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. morning. Yeah, you're already in the morning. Yeah. I right. forgot. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Bye-bye. You do the same. Bye bye, gentlemen. Um, I, I see Tenzin is, has been trying to join, but mm. uh, I, I think she's struggling with network. He or she is struggling with network. Can you hear us, uh, Tenzin? I think she said she joined, but yeah, no, like send she, she's a, on the send screen. a link again. She she is on the stream uh, already, but then I see it keeps browsing, uh, 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 buffering. I think there's a uh, maybe a problem with the network wherever he is or wherever she is. Right. And, uh, is. Oh, yeah. she. It's a she, man. Uh, yeah. What's wrong with you? You forgot already. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be misgendering people like that, bro. <laughs> regendering. I love that word. Regendering. <laughs> <laughs> Regendering. <laughs> oh, Tanzan will Tanzan will have a lot to say. Right? <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. Tanzan, are, right. are you listening? Yeah, no. Uh, why don't you hang? Uh, why don't you hang up and try that again? Try the stream again, Tanzan. She says, too bad you can't hear me. Right. Uh, maybe she needs to uh, hang up and uh, call, uh, I mean, re uh, reconnect again. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Uh, you know, Pai was saying you were asleep. <laughs> Did you see that? Well, uh, that's why I, I, earlier I responded and, and laughed. At right. Comment. No? <laughs> so, and uh, immediately you, immediately you never, I said it yeah you, you can Munda never drink this and, and not go to the uh, you know to the, right. the bad now and then so <laughs> I have to take oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to stretch and I'm on my second uh, I'm actually right now I'm in, my, I'm, up, I'm in my coffee I'm taking my morning coffee mm -hmm. so you know you know right now since it's in the morning guys and uh, I can now, and uh, some of us, we are sleepy. It's a very good time to suggest a topic that uh, that is very close to my heart. <laughs> nah. <laughs> 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 yeah, since everybody is all, since everybody is drowsy, this is the good time to talk about this topic when our minds are not uh, are not uh, too critical. Correct. Let's let's talk about. African wine. You know, my, my brother, African farmer, he was lit tonight, man. I really enjoyed his presence. I, he should have been, you know, he should have been staying with us uh, the whole, the whole, the whole night. But uh, what, what I found interesting is that uh, he was 
he was he was talking about a specific Ethiopian wine or something. Yes. Oh, was, yes. Yeah. The honey wine. Yes. Honey, honey wine. wine. Honey wine. Honey wine is mead, right? What's that? Is it honey wine? Isn't it called mead? Tej. We call it tej. T e j. Tej. 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 Okay. I didn't know Ethiopia had its specific wine because I know, guys. You know, let me tell you something. When it comes to wine in Africa, it's so diverse. I have, it's actually a very interesting topic. Like, just if, if you look at it the way, you, you'll find a lot of interesting things because I didn't even know there was honey wine in Ethiopia. I know there is banana wine in Rwanda. There right. Is, uh, I don't, I don't, well, Ezra told us about the South African one. That, which one is it? The traditional wine in South Africa. Yeah, well, it's, it's the grape, man. It's uh, the... Uh, most of them, it's 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 it's, it's uh, done from uh, grapes. Uh, if if they had to do other things, uh, something that made, yeah, it's it's grapes, it's grapes, it's grapes. Uh, yeah, it's grapes. Uh, I think the, the the second thing that you you may find close to grapes that is uh, maybe done for for different uh, drinks. Uh, it's probably apples, apple ciders and stuff. So yeah. Oh, Tanzania. Yeah, Tanzania is here. Oh. Hello. Welcome. Tell us to unmute. Unmute. Mm, it's unmuted. Oh, yeah. unmute uh, Tanzania. Can you hear us now? I think she's on mute. Can you see it, Ezra? No, currently it oh. says that uh, she's unmuted. I think the problem is her network, uh, where she is. Oh, yeah. But my, my, the only has, has a comment here. It's called Komboti. What's that? Is that a, a specific oh. title? Komboti. Um, Komboti is, is, a, is beer made out of uh, sorghum. It's sorghum beer. So, oh. Yeah, it's What's sorghum the name beer. of it? Komboti. Komboti? Kom then that means your Komboti for us is Tala. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. I know that Sugam beer is, is popular uh, amongst many African countries. Right. Um, yeah, it's it's in Komboti. There's um, uh, also uh, uh, Amarula uh, uh, as well. There's uh, the Amarula uh, beer. Which mm. comes from the Amarula uh, uh, fruit tree. Um, it's it's easy to make. Um, once it ferments and stuff, start fermenting, then it, it starts being alcoholic. They close it. They put all the the what do you call this? The the Amarula fruit mm -hmm. uh, inside a, either a bowl uh, or whatever. Then they close right. it. Keep it for a couple of days, then it starts fermenting and. Um, yeah, sometimes you, you get areas where there's a lot of Amarula trees. You get people sometimes selling them on the street, on the roads and stuff. Okay. So they'll sell the juice. It, it, it comes in as a, as a juice. When it's still fresh, it's a juice. You can drink it. Very nice and sweet. Mm. But when it starts fermenting, then it becomes alcoholic. Then, yeah, um, it's, 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 uh, it's one of those uh, not commercially uh, done, but it's just one of those local... You get them if the area has a lot of uh, 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 Amarula plantations, then you'll have uh, uh, that you'll have that uh, beer maybe in that area. But it's not everywhere in the country. It's just specific places where where they have a lot of trees. So, so what's the alcohol uh, content? Yeah, I, I I don't really know the alcohol content, but yeah, it's it's one of those uh, 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 big if you. It'll make you sleep. It's it's one of those beers, you know, those home homemade beers. Once right, that's what I'm talking. Uh, uh, this is what we call it, unfiltered. Yeah, unfiltered. So unfiltered. It will drop you, eh? It will drop yeah. you. <laughs> you you rush into it. <laughs> we will find you under a tree sleeping like this, you know. It's for, it's for old men. <laughs> <laughs> Broad daylight. 
One PM, you're sleeping under a tree. <laughs> That's how it is. Just yes. Yeah, yeah, for us, you know, what you know, out of the stella, you know, uh, the same thing that they, uh, you can filter it. And they call it filter stella. That means when they filter all the uh, ingredients on top. If not, they just send. Uh, they sell it uh, in a small kiosk. You know, stella bit. You know, like tajbit. Bait means house, you know, bait. Uh, and you have talabit. And uh, usually that talabit, they have a stick, right? To show you that it's a talabit, they put a stick and the uh, a cup on it. So you know that's talabit. So it's basically the cheap, uh, cheap beer, you know what I mean? And when you drink it, you know, sometimes, you know, since it's not, I mean, you can request the filter side, Okay, it gets more expensive, right? But uh, the natural way, you're always gonna s- spit the the grain right on top of it. When you sip it, you have to watch for the grain so you won't swallow it just <laughs> because it gets fermented again. I guess you, you gotta spit the grains out. So this is unfiltered. That's mm-hmm. tella. And then what happened is people uh, start exploring the tella. They they start adding uh, baileys, you know. Uh, Kalwas, you know, any other liquors, and they stop mixing those, and now you got a, you know, a higher, uh, what do you call, uh, alcohol content. You know what I mean? And especially when you ferment it with those uh, actual uh, liquors, uh, it, it it gives it a boost. So you drink some of those, you know, you're not gonna sleep. You're gonna be flying. <laughs> so I I see it's like a tala. Hmm. Another thing is 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 the remember uh, most of most alcohol they use yeast in in, in their alcohol, so yes. uh, unlike you uh, also you know like with homemade stuff you find that it's an old lady in 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 more of our traditions uh, it's done yeah by, even by in Ethiopia people. it's an old lady yeah. <laughs> old lady is an old lady you know who's yeah. doing this so. Measurements you never know, so you might think, "Yeah, hey, uh, this is how I'll just take it light," and you'll never know how how much yeast was also put in there, because yeast is just mm. to, to speed up the process of right. uh, fermentation. So right. unlike the initial way, where it takes long and many days, so they put yeast so that it, it quickens the the fermentation, and yeah, people can drink within a, a short space of time. Mm. So yeah, but you know, uh, you know uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, on this uh, fermentation, you got to be very careful because um, I have a an experience in my house. Uh, this lady came in and to make some tent, right? Mm-hmm. And um, she's uh, this lady. Uh, it's like my uh, my other mom, right? <laughs> and uh, she said, "I'm gonna make some tent, right?" We said, "Oh, okay. What do you need?" She she said, "I need a." A fifty-five uh, gallon barrel, and with a seal on it to seal it, right? I said okay. So I looked for it. I brought it home. <laughs> and then she started making it, right? The first, the first ten days, you know, you gotta, you know, work with it. You gotta steer it. So the the uh, honey is well mixed with the water with all other ingredients in it. No problem. One night, you know, I she always seal it. One night, when that thing exploded, <laughs> I thought that somebody shot a cannon in the house. <laughs> you know, it was so loud in the middle of the night. This thing just keep foaming out like crazy. And we, I didn't do it purposely, but I put it where there's a drainage. You know what I mean? But the whole wall and everything literally exploded. That's how <laughs> fermented it was. <laughs> and right in the middle of the night, maybe by like three thirty, four o'clock, and I call the uh, call. I say, "Mom, this thing exploded." It's all right. It happens once in a while. I'm like, "What? You didn't tell me that?" <laughs> because I never fermented fifty-five gallon of uh, edge. So still. We were able to get about uh, a good 35 gallon because the rest of it just exploded. It started coming out. But it was the best edge. 
It was made out of pure, pure honey. And I'll send, you know, I'll find the ingredients and I'll post it. Those of you who wants to experiment and making your own tej and your own tala, and I'll I'll post it so you can start experimenting uh, uh, these two two famous drinks in Ethiopia. Yeah, man. You know, I keep saying, guys, this, this is an unexplored industry. I don't know why people just like if all this. Look at all these uh, different types of uh, varieties of African wine. If somebody just decided to like take it like a serious business and do it and bottle it and market it just the way any other wine is marketed, it, it, I don't. Know, I think it'll be it'll be a very great. Venture to me personally, and also just before that, we were talking about the art, right? Like, the only I was talking about and uh, the art of uh, I think also Biggie, you were talking about the art, the market, right. the, the, the American market, and the European market. I was like, no, man, I wanted to say, no, we should always look at African, make art for Africa. Africa. Yeah, what I said about the uh, on the West is for diaspora to help, you understand. We can intermarket within ourselves. We're rich. We're rich within yeah, our own that's, continent. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, we need to, because these guys are selling us their art. We should really be proud of what we make. Like, if, because especially, I'm telling you, this African wine thing, I'm sure there are people like me who, like, well, I want to try out all the African uh, wine. See, just, it'll, it'll be just through, you see how those, we have wine testing for all sorts of European wine. Why not have a wine testing for all sorts of African wine? Like, just, like, things like that. I don't know. We should really, because we have a lot of, we have a rich culture. That's what I think. Our culture is very rich. Our, our, product, our products are, are also very rich. Like, yeah. like, you will never find banana wine anywhere apart from you know, Rwanda. Uh -huh. like, like banana you won't wine? Find, uh, no, no, yeah, no. We got to tell me that again. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, know, they make, so you can you can ferment they, they make, it. Yeah. yeah, they make banana wine. I've 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 actually heard of mango wine. I've heard of banana wine. I don't know. In Kenya, there's a hey, palm palm wine is dangerous. I and mean, that thing is uh, you don't. <laughs> oh, is that the uh, grain? It's like grain uh, alcohol. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah palm wine uh, is not. Yeah. Palm wine, palm wine, you don't take too much of it. You take you, they give you in uh, bottle bottle cups. It's very it's very strong. It ferments well, strongly. Okay, let, let me tell you one thing about Ethiopians. Uh, in the Ethiopia we got katikala. Katikala is a white uh, a drink. Okay, it's, it's clear like water, right? But that thing is so fermented. Uh, again, when I told you in high school we experimented a lot of uh uh, different uh, fermentation. This thing, you cannot even measure it. You know, it's uh, you know the alcohol measurement. It's over two hundred eighty. So there's no there's no measurement to it. You can put that same alcohol, the katikala, in your car, right? You can drive it for a good five ten miles. Oh. That's how combustion you can get. The only thing is everybody say, oh my God, you messed up your car. I said, no, the only thing you're going to do is you change the oil. But he made it 10 miles to the nearest gas station. So you change the oil and the car is still good to go. But it smokes, of course, you know. <laughs> 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 but he made it, you know what I mean? That mm -hmm. That's the kind of <laughs> alcohol content, we're talking alcohol content, the problem that you said, man, I don't know how much of the alcohol content in it, you know what I mean? <clears throat> this one, the katikala, usually we use it like medicine sometimes, you know, when you got some serious uh, stomach issues and stuff like that, you don't know what's inside, you just drink a little katikala, man, and, and, and that thing will wash it out. Whatever you got in your stomach, there won't be no virus. <laughs> 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 yeah, they use it as a medicine too.
there's different things that they use, uh, you know, especially for stomach aches and stuff like that. You eat some meat. You know, meat stays in your stomach for about two, three days. You know what I mean? And you, you get in, uncomfortable and you got some issues. You drink one katikala, that whole thing is out. Mm. Like you said, you know, promoting it. Yes. Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can hear you. Tell <laughs> Zed. Welcome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Finally, the voice to the name. Not okay. really the name. What's your name, though? What's your name? name? Sorry? Huh? Your name? Atieno. Huh? Okay. Arsena? Atieno. Atieno. Oh, yes. welcome, Atieno, to the show. Tanzan. Wow, 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 wow. This, this, this is another honor. Somebody that we try to bring in, bring in, bring in. <laughs> and I hope uh, uh, Red Sea Youth is going to do the same. But I'm I'm yeah. so happy to have you. Really, really happy. I, I know somebody, everybody want to hear who Tanzan is. <laughs> We're so excited. Finally works. Tanzan. I, I know. You know it's Terrible. You don't like having heart disease. The way my phone works, um, it's a long explanation. <laughs> Tenzin, where are you calling from? California. You're yeah, from Cali. Next yes. time you call me, I'll merge you in. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in uh, the MVDC. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I've, I've had a I'll, I'll give you my number if you got any problem, technic uh, technical, whatever, telecom, all that. You call me. I'll make sure you're in. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yes. If it is Fios, I have my Verizon connections. Okay. Yeah. Who's your cable uh, provider? Terrible. So, um, Who's your cable provider? Sorry? Who's your cable pr provider? Uh, Verizon Spectrum, but I don't want to advertise for them because I am. No, 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 that. it's all right. I mean, you know, they stay in the United Nation, United States, but uh, no advertisement. But if, if you got a <laughs> terrible, if you got terrible connection, it's gonna be bad. <laughs> no commercial about that. <laughs> you know, it's just I got connections. You know what I mean? Yes. I got so, connection. Uh, I'm listening to the talk. What was it about? I was hearing a lot of talk of wine, probably of food as well. Yes. Oh, you, you're right on the subject. <laughs> and, and, and you, you, uh, 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 Tenzin, you are in a in the what the the wine state of America, right? California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, but the I'm not biggest producing uh, region in the states for wine and and uh, grapes and stuff, fruits and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Data to me, I I I am I'm, I'm a wine anti connoisseur. I just like it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Muntatezi. Muntatezi. <laughs> no, but you know, African wine is sweet. It's the it's the it's the other wine because I've I've heard that the banana wine is quite sweet actually. It's very. That is what I've heard. I'm still yet to try it. But what does uh, our sister here think about the African wine scenery? Are you talking about the traditional, like um, the hot stuff in the village or the regular, like uh, Kenya brewery stuff? No, I'm talking about the village. Hey, 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 that one, <laughs> don't, don't play around with it. <laughs> <laughs> that one takes levels. You know, you start with a little beer, light beer, maybe you go to liquor, then, you know, once you're broke and desperate and, you know, daring, then go for it. But, um... Ah, man. It should be the opposite way, but... <laughs> Uh, uh, Tanzan, are you from Kenya or, 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 or Tanzania? Kenya. Otieno, Otieno is, a, is a Kenyan surname. Yes. I know yes. Of yes. Kenya. You know the but way that... um, Swahili Nation has his favorite Ethiopia? For me, if there's a dream country, for me, it's Tanzania. It's like the, the 
anti-tribal utopia of Africa. Like, I can't believe that there's a place where people can just live, you know, without that whole, where are you from, where are you from, like a hostile thing. And it's just a curiosity. So for me, um, every country has something great that it represents. And for me, Tanzania is, you know, the unity of Tanzania and Zanzibar. And it says, yeah, you know, once in a while we can put a that actually form a union. So, um, so it's not impossible. And, you know, yeah. that's so yeah <laughs> the, the awesome thing about uh, tanzania is that uh, even the national anthem is about africa they're oh. about africa before the nation wow yes the the national anthem it prays africa mm. god bless that, africa. yeah it it, uh, it, 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 it it was amazing uh, listening to the national anthem, and when they first put their word out, it was about Africa, not Tanzania. They say Tanzania later mm -hmm. in the national anthem. So definitely, uh, uh, Tanzania will be number one picked. They put Africa first. Yeah, and uh, and uh, that that really uh, uh, makes them unique. In in the in the fabric uh, of uh, the nation, you know what I mean. Yeah. And look yeah. at they're so free. Okay, I'll tell you this much: they're so free. Look at Mika when he arrived in Ethiopia. You can feel the sensation. Uh, and one thing that really tripped me is that you see Mika get into the hotel. And you see him on the air jumping on the bed. We all do that. It's an <laughs> African thing. You see a nice bed. We just fly and flop our stuff in there. That's that's it. You know, they, 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 uh, uh, Tanzania is really an example uh, within the African uh, Union, to tell you honestly, because the national anthem says itself. So. It says it. It's a national anthem. They didn't say Tanzania, Tanzania, Tanzania. They talked about Africa first. You're all right. Yeah, I'll take that. Produce, you know, um, you know, we might have great leaders in other African countries, but they're not given that that chance and that environment, you know. And it can be done, especially the political cleansing. You know, it starts from you know the bottom all the way to the top. And you know, if those. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I always say that. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Tanzan. <laughs> continue, continue, continue. I'm not going to stop you anymore. No, no, no. I didn't want to go on a, you know, a long one. But uh, for me, it's just, it's, we have so many examples. And for me, Tanzania is an example of how to keep the peace, you know, amid all our differences. So there is something about them. I would love to go there once, so, you know, that's my pilgrimage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. And guess what? You're a Tanzanian too. I am. See? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm Tanzanian, you know. <laughs> I, as long that continent is together, I am African. Unless they, again, divide something and say, well, you know, you're not... <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, and if I die, I want to die as African. Done. Yeah, it's easy to find things to divide us, you know. It's better when we find things that tonight. And no, because... no, no. What I'm saying is if they they have tectronic movement and they separate and divide Africa in the future, it's still Africa. The water is still African. Indeed. That's it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Really, you, you're concurring with what I say is from the bottom up. If I I put every time, you know, put the youth first, and the youth is your power. Yes. Yeah. The youth is the power for for the future Africa, and that's yeah. what I want to make to grow. I would, I would just like to say, you know, thank you you know, to Swahili Nation, Ezra, Mike, and everybody for having such a platform. You know, mm. so everybody just doing things on their own individualistically and so on. You know, we forget why we were here. You know, we were 
not to be alone, but to be with other people and to have conversations and talking about so, so we, we appreciate everything, everybody, um, everything that everybody has done. So. Thank you so much, uh, Tanzan. Really, 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 uh, thank you so much. You know, it means a lot to people that listen to us in our conversation. We get to get to know each other. And we Africans, we are born with love. We're born with that. We just need a peaceful platform where we can express ourselves. And uh, His Excellency Mika made it to happen. And it's up to us to take it to the next level yeah. by help of one another. You're absolutely right. Yeah. You know, there's nothing I can change of what you said. Absolutely right. This is how we grow. Yeah. And we grow together. I'm a kind of senior, but still, I'm growing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still growing. I'm still growing. I'm telling you. And, uh, you know, yeah, I also like to add, uh, and I'm so happy that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, more Kenyans are also joining Swahili Nation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I'll also, like, maybe request you to come next time when we're talking about uh, music, cultural music, when it, when, I think what uh, Pastor Ezra is, I said it's going to be next week. We're going to be talking about African cultural music, and uh, and I know and I know you are aware of maybe the Hangla. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, going on that. You know, I see yeah. that. It's a one. I have a confession to make. I know more. A little more about like uh, the Lingala part of music than the Ohangla part of it. You know, I don't know about you guys, but we grew up listening to a lot of Congolese music. So, yeah. Wow. Oh, you know, that's uh, also that's also a good uh, that's also a good uh, contribution. There's <laughs> a, like, like I said, Africa has a lot of rich culture, like a lot of like I don't even know why we're not. We're not really embracing our culture and really just pushing it, like, like you know, because uh, like now when we talk about uh, Congolese music, then there is also the Ohangla, then there is the Teopen, which I'm from listening here, Tiri Afro, like great mm -hmm. guy. Then there is the uh, Magesa Bekele, Magesa Bekele. I hope I pronounced yeah. it all right. When you guys are talking about the Umkombo, I'm like, I know that one. It's the song with the one Chaka Chaka. <laughs> And they're yeah, singing about the song, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we got the we we, we got great singers, uh, great Pan Africanist uh, singers, um, and uh, these are the things that we want to hear, the positive thing. Like you know, we listen we listen to reggae music, specifically when it comes to Bob Marley, never dies because. It, it calls for unity and love and peace, and that's why it never it never dies. Always, you're always gonna listen to Bob Marley. You know what I mean? And uh, at the same time, we have uh, uh, our own Bob Marleys uh, in, in in Africa, but if we don't promote them, if we don't put them up there, uh, they, they they get heard very uh, in a small area. You know what I mean? They become limited, but they have a lot of them that voice out about Pan Africanism. Yeah. Indeed. Now that you say music, now I just got, I just went blank. You know, uh, Khalif is there, Keita, and uh, what's his name? Uh, I'm trying to think uh, these great singers in, in Africa uh, that promote uh, Pan Africanism. Well, I don't yeah. know what they were thinking about, you were just listening, but I know that the one of the greatest lions of Africa when it comes to music was a great Franco Luambo Machiavelli Africa. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Oh my god, thank you. 
And now yeah. I can rest a little bit, you know. Let's start with him. <laughs> yep. There we go. There you go. Uh, you also have uh, in Senegal, in, uh, in the, on the west side, also you got the uh, uh, Alpha Blondie uh, within the reggae. When you said, you know, we have our, our Rasta few reggae people, it's like we have our Alpha Blondie from, was it Senegal or Cote d'Ivoire? Mm, Senegal, I think it was Senegal, right? I think so. And then, you know, we, we have La Dube in South Africa. And uh, yeah, so we, we have Olamide. Olamide, Olamide. Yeah, he's the one now who took over after, you know, the first generation of Lingala, mm -hmm. um, of, of uh, who was it? Cranko and uh, Makiadi. No. And with the ladies, you know, there was Yondo sister, there was, ta oh, and then with the men, there was also Tabule, and then the second generation, Kanda Bongoman, Olomidi, and then the third generation now, you know, you have Extra Musica and Wenge Musica and the rest of them. And then now I think the latest iteration was the Lumumba. But yeah, oh, we yeah. had. <laughs> we got a DJ on the show. <laughs> yeah, we got you a DJ me. in the show. <laughs> She needs, you need to be awesome. the guest in the in the in the next in that stream of uh, music culture. Yeah? In our, our next, uh, uh, on on one of the next Friday, we're gonna have music, <laughs> music from all <laughs> over. <laughs> oh well, my God! We did we listen to music from all over. You know the country would listen to Cameroon. You know you yep. can't some Fan Thomas. You know all those people we would listen to, and we we, we love the music. We didn't know what mm. they were saying. This is why, you know, I'm such a, uh, you know, a, a, a big deal on, on on translations because at that time you're just enjoying the music, especially you know from French West Africa, uh, French mm. Africa. You're just enjoying yep. the music, and later on, you know, actually some people actually went and translated it on the internet, and it was just you know, amazing knowing the meaning behind the songs and 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 all that. So you know, there's ah. different to enjoying music and. Yeah, it's, it's, exactly. it, this is what we lack, you know, we lack, you know, I always said that we lack in translation. You know, you listen to the music if you're within the local, you know, if you're Ethiopian, you stay Ethiopian and listen to it. Yes, you listen to the, what he says. Some people within Ethiopia don't understand what he's uh, talking about. And if you have people that can write and translate right there, it's another growth to introduce to a different dialect, different languages. So next time we listen to it, you say, oh, I, it's like uh, the Indian movie all over Africa. You ever notice that? Oh, there's so many Ar now, even in local languages now, not just in English. They even have them in the country. Right. 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 And they're local. Within your own, your own uh, uh, circle, there are different languages and uh, people that, that really can promote writing just writing and translating those words there's so beautiful words behind them like teddy afro mm -hmm. he uh, every time that he sings it's related in the time mm -hmm. and it, the time is all african time it's just a uh, incredible writing and he writes his own uh, songs. He's the one that uh, uh, does all the, the the work to it, and it shows from the passion. You know, when uh, Kanenisa won the uh, the race on uh, running, mm -hmm. he did it overnight. Overnight, he wrote a song and blast the whole the whole uh, internet. It was not about profit making money. It was just a moment. So people celebrated that moment. So he he comes in in time, and there are a lot of African uh, singers that comes in the time of need, and that's the one that you promote. Uh, and I'm pretty sure now about the, all the West Africa that we have the Ecowas uh, situation. I'm pretty sure there are so many uh, singers and writers that coming out with different songs, reflecting the situation on the ground in their music. But we still dance for the music, but without understanding the meaning. Yeah, and you know they're the, all meaningful. Mm -hmm. They're all meaningful, and a lot of uh, and uh, don't uh, correct me if I'm wrong. All African singers, they sing 
on the situations, on the time they're living. And they talk about the past, the forward, the future. Right there is a wealth of information where you can unite you. So art, music, forget our natural resource, but those are most powerful and poignant where you start rethinking your being African. Wow. You know, you, you got me on another level. <laughs> well, we're going to have a, a topic uh, for this since uh, the team was looking for suggestions and stuff. Uh, 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 music. I think um, the next one, if, if we get a slot to, to, tonight, uh, we, 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 we'll, we'll take it to music. We'll, we'll talk about music. Friday night, next week. We're going to yeah, put on uh, next week, yeah. Friday night, our late sessions. No, late sessions. <laughs> we'll have it again on, 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 on Friday. Or if we do get a, a slot tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, if we do get a slot tomorrow. Today, I mean, today is Saturday. So tomorrow is Saturday. Today, tonight, if we do get a slot, then yeah, maybe we'll, 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 um, we'll go into music. And uh, uh, Tanzan, I ask for your uh, uh, the private chat. Just just check on the private chat there. Eh? Oh, okay. Message. Yeah. Okay. And finally, before we go, um, mm -hmm. I wanted to say, you know, when it comes to music, um, that music is not just about it. Oh, come back, Tanzan. Tanzan, if you can Maggie. hear us. Yeah, she was talking about Hello, words. hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, who? Good back. morning. Uh, <laughs> <What is this>? <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Oh, <laughs> we finally got, we got the, 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 the big fish. <laughs> We got Tanzan in the house. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yes, and then you guys know, talking about wine. And, and, and then we, you got wine. Wine. Yeah. I want to tell you, you, you are the topic person. You, you know, you bring in topics, like serious topics. That's what I said from the Things beginning. Care we about. get to know each other. We, we get to know each other. <laughs> and we're introducing African wealth. Yeah. Hey, Tanzan. Tanzan? Yes, yes, I'm here. I accidentally yes. hit the wrong button and put everything down. No. I hear you. Especially uh, when you go and uh, check the private chat and go back, you got to close just that. If you go back, it, it hangs up. <laughs> That's exactly what happened, right, Tanzan? <laughs> I think I hit the jackpot right there. <laughs> okay, I, I think I'm back. Yes, you were saying something. Uh, Professor Israel uh, came back just for you. Okay, sorry about that. I, I am electronically clumsy, so um, yeah. Don't it's worry. Fine. It's fine, it's fine. Hey, Tanzan, you are in the house. Oh, finally, finally, <laughs> one down, one to go, one yeah, down, right. one to go. That's right. We got you, and then next is the Red Sea. Yeah, the Red Sea that, Youth is the next the, one. The Red Sea Youth. Yeah, and I remain anonymous for as long as I could, so um, I don't know who's going to be blamed for dragging me in, but yeah. <laughs> no, you're from the first. It's just Red Sea. He's in and out. You know that. You, you see him on the comment too. What happened? Sorry. No red. So sea. we got two people. You and and red sea. Okay, that's good. So now we are finally one to go, right? One to go. Yeah. One, more to, one go. to go. Okay. We have like so two loyal people. Two loyal. Uh, uh, you know, 
patrons of uh, the channel and the movement. Mm -hmm. uh, so so uh, we've always been so desperate to have both of you to come online and to come to hear your voice. And we, we, you, we finally got our satisfaction at least halfway. <laughs> yeah, all Africans, all Africans on the panel want to hear Tanzan. <laughs> no, I couldn't just jump in like that. Among such, you know, superior heads, people are here talking serious stuff. So, hey, 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 what? What? Hey, Tanzan. You know how to flatter us. You know how to flatter us. Like, hey, let me speak like West African. You know how to flatter us. Oh. Eh? You flatter us. Oh. Eh? Excellency. Don't forget the eh. Commander in chiefs and so on and so forth. Eh? Hey, who am I? <laughs> oh, we, we give you the DJ. You know, when we started, we, we were giving them. We stopped giving them. Tanzan. Yes. Tanzan, hey. you, you so, coming with a wealth of information on music, so you know we're going to put you on the uh, art and uh, music. Okay, I'll take that. Because we need you. Hey, hey, really you, didn't, you guys didn't mention Malian. Hey, you didn't mention Mali. Mali, Mali, Mali. Hey, Mali, Mali without music. Hey, African music and Mali. Come on, guys. You got to mention Mali. Malian, Malians. Oh, they, 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 Marius, uh, like, like, uh, Salif is one for me. Keita, yes. Yeah, Keita is incredible. Uh, Rokia, I think that's the name, Rokia. Is that what you say? Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Those are like, those are like, those like, they take you like a thousand years back. You can't talk about, you know, Awila Longoma and you don't know anything about, you know, Franco. You can't talk about, you know, these new young people without knowing, you know, the Diamond Platinum, but you don't know who David Kabak hey, 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 is. Hey, DJ, <laughs> DJ. Oh my God. Oh my God. We got a name for you. Yeah. DJ Tanzan. Uh, yeah. That's what I said, DJ Tanzan. D she knows a lot yeah, of the yeah, African music, and not only the the music, yeah. but she knows the people that really put this for us to to understand. Yep, Tanzan, you were saying yeah. something before you dropped. It was very important. Oh yes, I was saying about the role of music in resistance and protest. You know, the, the image that comes to mind for me is, you know, the South Africans, even up to now, whenever you see, you know, the Julius Malema and his people, what are they doing? They are singing, they are dancing. They are singing. They are singing. Yeah, exactly. Sorry? Yeah, no, no I'm just saying the same thing you say. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't uh, get that. Uh, no, you were saying oh. what you were saying. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'll continue and then I'll, I'll, I'll get into it. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah. even uh, the, the, the Africans who came out here as slaves, the first thing, one of the things that they outlawed was the use of drums. And they still got around to that as a way of passing messages and, you know, communicating with each other. So there's power in music, you know, in music all around the continent. You, sometimes when people don't have a voice, music is the only way that, you know, gives them a voice. You know, when we can't express ourselves, you know, out or, you know, to the people out there, you know, music is the only thing that brings us together. I was saying how we didn't understand the word of the Zairians, but just the fact that we enjoyed the music and we liked the culture, that was just enough to give us, you know, that connection. We didn't need to know what the other person was saying, but we just loved them, nevertheless. So when they came out here, you know, we said, oh, we grew up, you know, listening to your music. And they said, oh, you know, and sometimes language is the way to communicate, but sometimes there's communication that transcends words, and that for me is music. So um, uh, the, the music is such a powerful aspect of who we are, and that's why they always try to, you know, bombard us with, with you know, all these bad images and try to make us ashamed of our music, but that's who we are. That's where we get our spirit of fighting and resistance and unity and community. 
So sorry, but I was just saying that music is not just entertaining. It is a source of power that we can always, you know, dip into and use it for strength. Mm -hmm. Right. Never, 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 never feel sorry. Never, uh, never feel. Uh, unfortunately, guys, sorry, sorry to cut everyone off. Uh, because of the stream, it's already very long, and um, yeah, we're gonna have to clear some space and stuff. And uh, since this is a topic altogether that we we're gonna have, uh, either next week or tonight, depending on whenever we get the space. Um, but yeah, I'm going to just um, uh, let us go into prayer. Uh, we will continue this topic. I know it's a, it's a broad topic and a big topic. And uh, we would love to have Tenzen again coming here since she's more knowledgeable about music. And um, and uh, give us more info about music. Probably she's, she's in music. She's a music teacher or a historian or a professor of music. I don't know. But uh, um, obviously, you'll tell us Tenzin uh, in the coming stream, and uh, you can give us more insight, and then we can all share and stuff. But for now, I'm just gonna ask that we we pray. Uh, uh, for the so far, we've got four requests. People who've asked that we pray for them: uh, Marie Antoinette, uh, Kaku, if I'm not mistaken, our biggest friend or family. Um, who else? There's Marie Antoinette, Kaku. Uh, there's somebody else. Who, who am I uh, leaving behind now? There's somebody Sedeke. else. Sedeke. Sedeke. Yeah, Sedeke, yes. Yeah. Sedeke. So, guys, um, we're just going to ask us that we pray for these three people. They are our family. So, we need to uh, be there for them when they need us most. So I'm just gonna pray quickly and then uh, I'm gonna say shalom for tonight. In a long stream, six hours. We tried, but we we practicing already for 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 the 24 hours that's still coming. So yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for our friends and sisters that are going through a lot. We ask Father that you be with them, that you help them. We pray for healing over their body. We speak perfection. We speak new strength. We speak uh, 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 a speedy recovery. And we speak proper health and perfect health in Jesus' mighty name. And as we go in different places, Father, be with us until we meet again in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you amen. so much. Amen, okay. amen, amen, family. So, um, yeah, guys, stay tuned uh, uh, for the live streams. Uh, Mick, uh, His Excellency will be uh, dropping a lot of videos. There's a lot of videos. There's a, a video that's coming. Uh, watch out for it around 12 uh, midday. Uh, it's, the, it's the East African time, obviously, Ethiopian time. Uh, there'll be a video that it is going to be dropping uh, from uh, Mika. Watch out for that. And a lot of more videos are uh, in the course of the day and coming days. So, yeah. But for us tonight, um, me, Biggie, Mwanda Tezi, uh, Prof. Ezra, and uh, our lovely sister Tenzen, who joined us for the first time. Uh, it's going to be Shalom. And the only. And then the only was also. And the only. Oh, I forgot about the, the only. only. We went out, but yeah, the only thank you for, for being here for us tonight. And the African farmer, now African uh, singer. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yep. And uh, Josie, teacher Josie, thank you. And, and Josie. Deborah as well. Deborah's there yeah. as well, so thank and you. And then also they're from uh, Barcelona. We have somebody from Barcelona. Oh, oh yeah. Cuckoo. 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 Thank you, Cuckoo. Cuckoo. Thank you, Cuckoo. Kuku, kuku means yeah. chicken in, in, in Swahili. Yeah, even in my language. It's, <laughs> it's the same in America. Yeah, <laughs> it is indeed. Uh, guys, we're going to say... Uh, Kukulu, Anakam, Kukulu. <laughs> Kukulu. <laughs> I, know she's, I know she's there. <laughs> I know she's there. Okay, but anyway... Baby. Uh, one thing, one thing, one thing that I would add in our uh, prayer, 
May Mika be safe. Mika enjoy. Mika comes in a beautiful way tomorrow. He's got a lot to say. Xavier bless you. Xavier bless you, Mika. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you, guys. Yeah. All right. Good night, everybody. What Good a morning, pleasure everybody. is it to be associated with a family like you. Yep. Thank you very much, uh, uh, everyone. Absolutely. Okay. We're family okay. and we're growing. Bye. All right. Bye. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And good evening for any part. Good night. <laughs> good night. Thank you, everyone. Um, hope you subscribe. Hope you've turned on the notification icon and, and hope you uh, like this uh, stream and you've shared. So for those who have not subscribed, please subscribe to our channel. If you have subscribed, please don't forget to like uh, the stream. And uh, from us, Swahili Nation, One Africa Movement, until we meet again, 